Audiobook Title Evolution Start ASA Raft, 001-234, by I Am Link Part 02. This work belongs to author I Am Link, Source Royal Road and Scribble Hub. Avro gripped her fists and closed her eyes tightly. She was using her powers. Terry gradually felt some heat in his body, and his whole body ability quickly raised, both his muscle strength and the nerves' responsiveness. I think I can beat two people with one now, Terry said excitedly. At this point, he suddenly felt his right leg, the one inconvenienced, getting hotter and hotter. Avril, my leg, you, what are you doing? Avril said with closed eyes, Terry, I'm trying to heal your leg. Try to relax? The time lasted for ten seconds, and soon Avril was a little stretched. She dropped her arms helplessly, looked at Terry, and shook her head. It was too short. It didn't work. My powers are useless. However, Terry's eyes widened as he touched his leg and said in shock, Avril, no, I do feel better than before. Avril jerked her head up, and her eyes widened, really? For real? Terry was excited too, Avril, your powers are useful. I think you can cure my leg with a few more tries. I can feel it. Avril's expression was less frustrated at this point. This experiment had given her confidence in herself. Over the next few days, Avril worked specifically on Terry's leg, and the feeling in Terry's leg became more and more active. Ten days later, Terry's leg had fully recovered. Arson and Armin hugged Terry excitedly. Dad, it's great. Your leg was healed. Terry was also thrilled. He never expected his leg to go back to normal. And now this result made him ecstatic. Avril, thank you so much. Avril smiled. Terry, we're family. I'm glad I could help you. Rain watched the scene from a distance and opened Avril's information panel. Avril's level hadn't changed, but Terry's combat power had gone from 1.5 to 2. Of course, it wasn't just a matter of combat power. Terry was the most experienced crew member on the ship. His agility and his activities meant far more to Rain than the extra 0.5 combat power, except that Avril's level hasn't been raised. Rain was also a little shaken. He wasn't sure if his suspicions were right. But Avril was practicing harder and harder after this. Two months later, this was almost the coldest time of the year. Arson's fighting skills had been upgraded to level 2 but Avril was still at level 1. Rain had been considering whether to speak to Avril about perhaps changing to another method of leveling up. At that very moment, Avril rushed to Rain excitedly, jumping off the rock in one go. Captain, I feel like I have leveled up. Avril ran to the bow, her voice trembling a little with excitement. Upgraded? Rain couldn't believe his ears. Even he was giving up, and Avril had upgraded? How difficulty? 62. The slave trade. Rain opened Avril's information panel. Name Avril. Mutation type. Inheritance evolution. Detailed classification. Support. Mutation stage. First stage. Mutation level. 2 out of 10. Mutation ability. The target human can accelerate and decrease cellular activity and intracellular reaction speed within a certain period. At current rank, the target human can alter cellular activity by 20%. Combat power. 1 real time. A real upgrade. Rain's eyes widened. His suspicions were correct. Avril was different from Arson in improving their abilities. She can increase her mutation level by using her abilities constantly. Although Avril's upgrade did not increase combat power, that was not the point. The point was her solid supporting ability. If she'd worked with Arson or a more powerful mutant later, then the benefits Avril brought were immeasurable. Also, the fact that she healed Terry's leg shows that she has some healing ability which speaks volumes about the potential of Avril's abilities. Indeed a treasured girl, Rain got his money's worth with this investment. They had spent three months on the island before Rain and others knew it, and Terry said the trading market would reopen in half a month. Rain panicked a little when he thought about the materials he would need for his next level. 5,000 units of wood, 10,000 kilograms of metal ingots, 2,000 kilograms of stone, and 1,000 kilograms of textile fiber. The materials needed to evolve to the next level are a bit more. If converted into pearls, it would require 14,000 pearls. That's 20 times more than the current price of this ship. Rain wonders how long it would take to earn enough if they just take transport missions. Rain told the group about the problem. Tell me, are there any other ways to make a killing? The crew members were frowning. Armin thought about it and said, Captain, 14,000 pearls isn't a small amount anymore. It's hard to make that many pearls in no man's land. Terry echoed, yeah if no man's land were good for the money, it wouldn't be called no man's land. Captain, why wouldn't we go to human class waters? Avril shook her head and said, we're not bad in no man's land now, but
but when we get to human class waters, we won't have any advantages. Avril came from the human class sea and knew it well after all. There are indeed many opportunities in the human class sea. The prices for transporting are higher there. Some freighters can make hundreds of pearls in one trip, and there are crew markets, slave markets, and large trading markets. But it's also a place where forces are entrenched. There are countless forces based on the various islands and shipping routes, and the money-making business is almost all held by them. There is impossible to compete with them in our current state without any backing. Besides, the human class sea is much more dangerous than here. There are often naval battles going on there, plus sea monsters, beasts, and so on. I think we shouldn't go to the human class sea for the time being. Rain asked Avril, are the human class waters that chaotic? Doesn't the navy care at all? Captain, the navy is just a more powerful force. They protect the ships around them because the merchant employed them. If you put that aside, they are no different than bounty groups or even pirate groups. Armin nodded, I have read many accounts of famous naval battles, in the Battle of the Blue Sea, the Battle of Hurricane Center, the Battle of Peter Island, and so on. The Navy has made its position clear long. They have long since ceased to be the policemen who keep the peace at sea, the law of the jungle in this world, and so is the Navy. The Navy has always used hypocritical oaths to attract good mutants to join, but... And Shobe also said he disliked the Navy acts. Rain let out a small sigh. This Azure era was more chaotic than he had imagined. After a moment of silence, Rain suddenly thought of a problem. To become stronger, apart from the evolution of the ship, the crew was also an important part. And now that his ship was big enough, he needed new crew members. Curious, he asked. Oh yes, you guys said there were crew and slave markets in the human class seas. What's that? Avril replied, the crew market is where seamen are hired. And among these seamen are veterans and novices. Some are left. In short, there are all kinds of people, even mutants. The slave market, well, it's simple. That's where the crews of the defeated ships and their families go to. And you can buy them just for a price. Holy shit. That's barbaric. Rain, a modern man, was astonished that there would be such a commodity as slaves 300 years later on earth. There were slaves, so he won't even have to think about how chaotic the human class waters were. Rain decided not to go to the human class waters for now. So there's no way to find seafarers in no man's land? Rain asked. Armin thought for a moment and said, Captain, there is. There is a port 2,000 nautical miles from here called Port Angel. The waters around Port Angel were swift, so many ships chose to go around and stop there for supplies. Many ships transporting enslaved people also stopped there and let them off and rest. With no middlemen to make the difference, the price of slaves there is 20 to 30 percent cheaper than in the slave market. So many buyers will even go there to pick up slaves. Avra looked at Armin strangely. Armin, you're good. How do you know about this? I didn't even know there is such a port. Armin smiled shyly, Sister Avril, I don't have any other hobbies except reading books, so I know some information like that. Rain couldn't help but be amazed. His crew was real treasures. Armin didn't become a mutant and wasn't as experienced as her dad, but she was very knowledgeable. He would have been stuck in the crew question without Armin for a long time. Armin, good job. I've decided to give you an extra chicken leg for lunch, Rain said excitedly. We have 400 pearls left now, right? Is that enough to buy slaves? Captain, the price of hiring a crew and buying a slave is different, which mainly depends on their ability. Some slaves can be bought for a few pearls, while some, like those powerful mutants, are priced so high that there is no upper limit, more expensive than even the Poseidon fruit. It was mentioned in the great logbook of the voyage that the navy sent three naval brigades to escort a powerful mutant prisoner once. That's about 200 battleships and it was escorted by an admiral. Holy shit, more than 200 ships just escorted a person, and with an admiral. The crowd couldn't help but be shocked. What kind of terrifying existence is that kind of person? And who defeated the guy? Forget it. That's too far. Let's find the cheap. Rain got the meeting back on topic. Think about it. Are there any loopholes we can exploit to at least get our money's worth? Armin mused over it, and suddenly her eyes lit up. Oh, Captain, aren't you and Avril both able to sense the mutant? If so, maybe we can take advantage of it. 63. Slave Market It was already mid-March, and it would take a long time to travel 2,000 nautical miles. After stocking up on food and water, Terry looked back at the island and asked, Captain, how to deal with those rocks? Don't you need them for your boat building? Forget it. It's too weight to carry. No one wants these stones anyway. We'll talk about it when we get a chance to come back. Good, Captain. Let's go. The wind is out of the east. 
I'll hoist the main. Arson, you hoist the foresail. Armin, tilt the backstay 15 degrees. A month later, Rain and the others already felt that they were getting closer to Port Angel, as there were gradually more and more ships around them. Wow, what a big transport ship. It's almost as big as a G-class main ship, with frigates escorting it. Arson leaned over the railing, looking at the fleet of ships not far away. Sister Avril, we're going to keep getting stronger from now on too, aren't we? Avril laughed, you bet. Many boats around looked over to Rain. Rain was small but had a delicate hull, with metal reinforcements on board and a long metal ramming horn that stood out. Moreover, the people at the helm were a beauty, and there were only four crew members on board, but three were women, which made the eyes of men around can't help but sweep over this side. The port prohibited naval warfare. Everyone is here to make a fortune. So they also just looked curiously and whistled towards this side from time to time. Rain didn't take kindly to these ships, but he wasn't above rushing over to fight them. His main objective on this trip was to increase his crew. Port Angel is a large island with a number of trees. The trees were forbidden to be cut down to protect the buildings on the island from the sea breeze. There are a few simple buildings on the island. All of them were roughly built of stone and wood. Not even like a house, but canopies to keep out the wind and rain. They are quite large though. From a distance, Rain could see a number of people walking around in some of the canopies. There were seafarers and poorly dressed men with shackles on their feet, one after the other. There was a haven in the belly of the island, and dozens of ships docked at that moment. System, is there a way for me to get off the boat with them? Rain muttered. It would be best if he could come along for the ride. Rain shook his head helplessly. He now missed the AI that liked to dislike him. He has no interaction with this current system at all. Fine, fine, I'll find it myself. Rain opened the item creation list. There were 37 items that Rain could make, and he had looked at almost all of them when he was bored some time ago, but hadn't been able to find any special items. Was there no way to get off this ship? Rain's mind was spinning. No, I can control the folding oars myself, which feels like I'm controlling my arms, the wooden spikes, and the fire crossbows. My perspective can appear with any location on the ship, means that. As long as something is on the boat, my perspective can be attached to it. With that in mind, Rain had an idea. Avril, go to the crew compartment to get a screw cap then get off. Avril went and found a screw cap and jumped ashore. Rain tried to shift his view, and suddenly his view shifted to Avril's hand from the ship. It works. I'm a fucking genius. Rain was hyped. Terry said from the boat, Arsene Armin, you guys go with Avril. White and I will stay and keep eyes on the boat. The boat needed to be watched. Rain can detect the mutant by system and Avril can sense the mutant with her ability. Arson would guarantee their safety, and Armin provided information support, so Terry and the others were left here. Avril and others head for the market. It's quite a crowded place. Many ships have to rest here after a long and bumpy journey, and the slaves have to be brought down to rest and get some air so they can stay alive and sell for a good price. There are special patrols here wearing uniforms and carrying way swords and even guns on their belts as they wander leisurely through the crowds. Most of the people here still follow the rules. After all, this port is an important location. It wouldn't leave them any good to be blacklisted. As slaves were cheap here, many people would come here to buy first-hand goods, which give Port Angel the market it has today. There are eight trading booths over here, and those ships transporting slaves will bring them to the booths in order. While the slaves are resting, if anyone takes a fancy to them, they can go straight and buy them. Armin described, After all, no one can guarantee that the slaves will be delivered safely to human-class waters, so they are willing to trade them out here without reducing their income. Rain could interpret this behavior as the absence of intermediaries making the difference, amounting to a deal straight from the manufacturer. Those slavers did not shout out, as if they were just letting the slaves rest here for a moment, and they were not concerned about getting a deal. It was the buyers who were more active, constantly moving from booth to booth, with others coming up to ask for prices from time to time. Avril, you're clutching me so tightly, I can't see anything, Rain complained. Avril was in a bind. It's also too strange to walk with a screw in the hand. The screw cap was awkward to carry around, and if she didn't clench it tightly, what would happen if she lost it? After some thought, a bright idea occurred to Avril. She pulled a red string from her shirt and hung it around her neck. Captain, what about it? Avril whispered. Looking down, yes I can. I can see everything. Rain's voice was a little nervous. Oh, that's good. Avril was finally relieved. Rain followed Avril and approached the first trading platform. On the platform, three rows of ragged, 
haggard-looking people sat on the floor in handcuffs and shackles, wolfing down the dried food in their hands. There were men, women, and children who seemed uninterested in everything around them, looking numb. They have accepted their fate. Cough, cough. Time to get down to business. Rain, switched on his system. System, detect. 64. Black Hell Commercial Firm. The first booth, no mutant. A fat crewman looked at the dirty fellows and casually threw out a piece of moldy bread. Immediately a few slaves crawled over and scrambled for it. A few of the crewmen had a look contemptuous faces, and laughed, hog shit. Slowly, we'd lose out if you choked to death. Rain looked at the slaves, were these the defeated crew? It turned out that those crew members would end up so miserable after losing the war. Captain, I didn't sense any mutant, Avril said in a low voice with her head bowed. Rain let out a small sigh, per people. Unfortunately, there was nothing he could do about it. And next, at booth two, they spotted a biological mutant. Accompanied by arson, Avril walked up to a couple of crew members, pointed to a middle-aged man, and asked, how much is he? The bearded crewman gulped as he rubbed his large stomach and looked Avril and Arson up and down. They didn't dare to do anything as people were patrolling the area. Beauty, you have a good eye. He's a mutant. We're a captain. Avril said coldly, just quote the price. This. The seaman held out five fingers, five hundred. Avril had a brow furrowed. They didn't have enough money. What? Too expensive? Well, if you two beauties would like to come to my boat for the night to have a good time with me, I can give you a discount. Fuck off, Avril growled, you make me sick. Arson, let's go. The crewman didn't get mad, instead, he stared at Avril's ass and licked his tongue. Hey, you're leaving now? Why don't we talk some more? TSK, 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 those are two hot girls. It makes me hot to look at them. Avril calmed down after squeezing out of the crowd. Because of her anger just now, this deal was gone, Captain, I. It's okay, you did right. Next time you meet someone like that, just do it like that. Rain said, this one is too expensive and not very capable. Go to the next and see. Rain did not think it was their day. They went around eight booths in a row, and there were some mutants among them. But Rain wasn't very satisfied with any of them. For one thing, none of them had a high mutation level. For another, they were too different from Arson by judging from their attributes. Could it be that Arson was too strong? That's possible. Otherwise that the love man would not have paid attention to her. Although these mutants are not powerful, the price is high 400 to 500 pearls. It was not a steal if they bought them. Captain, why don't we wait here for a few more days? We don't have much to do now anyway. Armin said spring is the peak season for the slave market. There should be quite a few ships that will dock here. Eh, uh, okay, wait a little longer. On their first day, the group had little to show for it. And they had to pay one pearl for a night in Port Angel. The group settled in Port Angel. After seven days, so much cost of accommodation that Rain was beginning to feel heartbreaking for his pearls. But it was here that Rain saw what a slave market was all about. Every day, ships were docking here to sell slaves and a large number of purchasers to buy. Women were the most popular commodity. Rain saw many families were separated and slaves were taught with a whip. To be honest, Rain couldn't stand to see any of this. He was not a good man. But after witnessing these transactions time and again, Rain came to appreciate the cruelty of the Azure era tangibly. Here, the only way to protect you care about is to get stronger, and keep getting stronger. On the eighth day, a large fleet of ships arrived at Angel Haven. In this fleet, there were three transport ships, two G-class warships, and eighteen frigates. The size of this flotilla was even more exaggerated than Shobe's naval squadron. Each of the three transport ships had slaves of at least two hundred. As soon as they docked, those crews lowered their landing planks and from their cabins, came down a large number of slaves. Wow, it's the Black Hell commercial firm. Someone on the surrounding ships exclaimed, My God, so many slaves, where did they get them from? I heard that Black Hell had taken down an island in the human class C. These slaves are just a small part. The point is the resources plundered, they made a killing this time. That must be several thousand slaves, but it's just some mosquito meat in the eyes of the Black commercial firm. But that's still meat. Hurry up and check it out. Maybe we can pick a few good slaves. When Avril and the others got the news, they joined in the purchase. A huge number of slaves took up eight booths, and as if that wasn't enough, many of them were placed underneath the booths. Four or five well-dressed men stood proudly to the side, led by a man of about 1.8 meters in height, with a rounded figure and a face full of flesh, wearing a captain's hat. Behind him were several stout men with an inward gaze. 
Captain, those men are strong. I'm afraid they are not inferior to the Chopper and Serena, Avril whispered. We just buy slaves normally anyway. Hurry up and see if there are any big deals. At that moment, the fat man walked up to the nearest booth number four. His men brought over a megaphone, and he said in an arrogant tone to the full house, the old rules, booths one to two are all mutant. Buy them if you need them. I wouldn't want to bring these tired people. The people on number three to eight, I, Blake, guarantee that they are fit and experienced. The rest, you pick yourselves. After saying that, the fat man threw the megaphone to his men and went straight off the stage. With so many slaves and such good quality, those buyers who wanted to buy slaves would naturally not let such an opportunity go, and the crowd stirred up as soon as the fat man's words fell. Below the stage, someone moved a sofa and the fat man sat on it, leisurely smoking a cigar while watching the crazy buyers swarm in. Hump, a bunch of bumpkins. Booth one and two are all mutant. Rain cannot believe that so many mutants had all become slaves. How terrifying was the power of the Black Hell Merchant. Captain, do we go and have a look? If we don't, the good ones will be picked up by others. Avril looked anxiously at the one and two booths, which were already crowded with a large number of buyers negotiating with the crew. Rain mused over it. May there were hidden mutants that people didn't distinguish. However, their bodies must be stronger than the others and there might be bought first. At this point, not a minute could be wasted. Rain immediately said, No, let's start at number 8 to look forward. Hurry up, it's up to make or break a great deal. Rain composed himself and quickly turned on the system. System, hurry up. God bless I'll have reliable crew members. 65. Found it. Through his exposure to a number of mutants over the past few days, Rain has found that Avril's sensory abilities complement his very well. Rain could detect who were mutants, and as soon as they became part of his crew, he could access information about them. But for mutants who were not part of his crew, Rain could not tell how strong or weak they were. On the other hand, Avril had no access to detailed data, but she could get a general sense of their strength. Shob, Chopper, Serena, including the strong men behind the big fat Blake, she could vaguely sense how strong they were. The booths were like a supermarket with discounts, especially booth 1 and 2, which were surrounded by a huge crowd of people. Whether they buy or not, many people were curious about these mutants. Taking advantage of this, Avril and the others hurried to make for booth 8. There weren't too many buyers in front of booth 8. A few people were picking out the slaves they liked. And there were a large number of slaves at least a few hundred on and off the stage. Rain quickly began scanning. Avril, nothing here. Go to the number 7. Obviously, Avril had not been more efficient than Rain, heard Rain out, gave up her search, and hurried to go to the booth number 7. Number 6, number 5, number 4. No way, no slip through the net. I can't believe that they could have picked so clean. Rain was also a little panicked. If he couldn't find any more this time, he might just buy ordinary slaves. On booth 3, two or three hundred strong slaves sat numbly on the ground, eating buns and drinking water. Most of them didn't care about all the stares of the people around them. Their fate was already sealed anyway. In an inconspicuous corner, two thin men sat upright. These two must be brothers, or even twins, aged 18 or 19, with ragged clothes and dirty faces. Their heads bowed, but a pair of eyes kept nervously looking at the buyers around them. One bear, two bear, any more buns? Behind them, the head of a little boy poked out. When the two young men heard the voice, they looked nervous, fancy. What are you doing out here? Go back now. The boy retracted his head in resignation. But not long afterward, the one bear in front of him took half a steamed bun from the others and handed it over. Fancy, here you are, one bear said in a low voice as he kept an eye on the crew and buyers around him. The boy hurriedly grabbed the steamed bun and took a big bite. It turned out a boy was hiding behind these people. His face was dirtier than the others and a mop of dirty hair covered his eyes. It was at this point that the brothers noticed a few people headed for them. Everyone around the brothers couldn't help but get nervous and got closer to them in unison. Avril had brows frowned uncomfortably as she stood in front of her target. Both Avril and Rain had detected the situation. There were three mutants here, but the fact that they only saw two of them, and the two were as thin as bamboo sticks. Captain, are you sure they are mutants? Do they bamboo worm mutants? And Avril sensed that these two men's powers seemed to be quite weak. At this point, a crew member approached and looked greedily at Avril, Arson, and Armin, who hadn't had a woman at sea for a long time, and who even would have felt beautiful at the sight of a sow, let alone Avril and the others. Three beauties, what's wrong? Are you guys short of money? Not go to the stage to pick but instead stand here to choose these inferior products? 
If so, you can exchange them for something else. Don't worry, I will treat you girls well. Avro wasn't angry this time. The crewman said that the slaves were inferior. So that meant that they hadn't realized that the two men in front of them were mutants. Avro sneered, I think you should save your breath. I'm just here to buy a few hard laborers, as long as they're cheap. How much for these two? The crewman had an obscene mouth, but the boss was sitting right under booth four. So he, a small crewman, didn't dare to mess around after all. When it came to money, the boss was just and stern. You want to buy them? Twenty pearls for this kind of goods. Twenty pearls for such a thin one? Arson said. The crewman sneered he had a bad attitude after his design failed. What's wrong with being thin? The point is that he's young. He can work as soon as he's fed, and he can work from his teens to his forties. Do you want a bargain for that price? Don't talk nonsense. We don't haggle at the Black Hell Mercantile. Don't you know the rules? Arson came over and asked in a low voice, Sister Avril, are you sure you're not mistaken? Are you sure it's those two? You bet. The captain and I are sure, except that we found three and now there is one less. The one that's missing, either the captain nor I can sense accurately, so I don't know if our senses are wrong, Avril Novel said. Armin had no part in the discussion, she was now standing in front of one bear and two bear, both of whom had been tense and straight back since a while ago quite unlike the other slaves who were sitting weakly, and the expressions of the people around them looked a little unnatural. She frowned, then came around to one side and poked her head behind them. As Armin stretched her neck, a bunch of slaves was more nervous. The hem of one bear and two bears tattered clothes trailed on the floor, looking like bulging. Armin frowned and tried to step between the two of them, but the two men wiggled hard and just wouldn't let her. Eh? What are you guys hiding? Armin looked at the two teenagers critically. The brothers wanted to kick this woman in the face right now. Why was this woman so curious? No one else would pay attention here. She was the only one who wanted to check. But it was not wise to do it here. Those were four strongmen behind Blake. And every one of them was not good to mess with. They may expose Fancy's identity instead. Then, everyone would work for nothing. Avril had already decided. And she said to the crewman, I'll have these two. More than that. Suddenly Armin said from a short distance away, We'll take three the two thin guys and the kid behind them. Kid? The crewman looked over in surprise to find a small boy in front of Armin. You want a child? What do you want with a kid? Speaking of which, it seemed he hadn't noticed that there was a child here, not knowing which way it had come from. Avril instantly understood that Armin had found a third target. She sneered back. None of your business. Can't we keep it as a pet? How much is it? The seaman thought for a moment and said, We do business fairly at the Black Hell Merchant. This kid, ten pearls. But I need to find out which ship the child came from. I don't think I have this child on my ship. At this point, Avril's mind raced. The slaves seemed to be covering for the kid, and the kid had strange abilities to hide himself that even the captain could barely find him. The kid's abilities must be strong. They had a hard time finding the three mutants, so they must be grabbed the chance. Maybe it was an oversight for these crew members not to register them. If let them check them out and found they were mutants, Rain wouldn't get a great deal. It had to be done now, Avril said hurriedly, ten pearls for a little kid, that's too much, forget it, I don't want it, no need to check, I'll just take these two. The crewman had a brow locked and didn't say a word. For a moment, Rain and the others all began to get nervous. 66, stay or leave. The seaman had a serious look and narrowed his eyes headed for Avril. Looking at the man's quick eyes that seemed to penetrate everything, Avril was a bit panicked. She stammered and said w what? Are you selling or not? What are you doing so close? Finally, the other side spoke. That child's seven pearls to you, the money directly to me. Happiness came a bit suddenly. Avril has not yet reacted. Why? The crew member whispered in a low voice. The child is not registered and the boss cannot be found. So I can sell it to you cheap. As long as you keep your mouth closed, good for me also. After that, the man also winked at Avril with a you know look. Avril figured it out in one fell swoop. She had to say that this crew member has a quite quick brain. Oh, so that's it. Avril held back her laughter and patted the guy's shoulder. I'm not a fool. What's the point of going around talking? In case you guys insist that I offer ten pearls, won't I lose three pearls for nothing? Just between you and me. The crewman nodded with a smile, stepped back, and said loudly, Okay, deal. Avril immediately took out forty-seven pearls, forty of which she handed over to the crew member generously and slipped seven pearls to him secretly. Seeing the three women leave with the three slaves, the crewman touched his pockets and sneered, big boobs but no brain. 
The kid is only worth two pearls. I netted five pearls. It's my day. Arson pulled the three slaves and followed Avril quickly away from the coast and onto the boat. Get in the boat. Arson pushed the three slaves. The three guys looked reluctant, but Arson had the strength to push them up straightly. Terry, set sail for Morgan Trading Market. Let's get out of here, Avril said. Terry did not know why Avril was so anxious to leave, but now was not the time to ask. He immediately set sail. After eight days in Port of Angels, they finally left. Along the way, three slaves were tied to the main mast. These three people surveyed for a long time to figure out the ship's situation. Such a large ship actually had only four crew members, of which only one man and the other three were all women. And now those few people seem to be very busy, no one cares about them. A dog was sitting beside them to stare at the moment. By the way, there was a seagull parked on the mast, always gazing into the distance. And that guy just took a bird shit that almost hit them. One bear, there aren't many of them. We have a chance, two bear whispered. Yeah, but when you do it later, be careful of that woman, she should be a mutant. Fancy, later you find a place to hide. Weed seized the ship. Three people were plotting big plans. However, in front of them, White who cocked his head and spat out his tongue was really at odds with the tense atmosphere. This idiot dog. Why I feel that it understands our speech, said Two Bear. One bear looked at White, this, forget it, leave it alone. All this way, rain was sailing at full speed until out 300 nautical miles. The people were relieved to see that no one was coming after them. Armin took the opportunity to explain the situation to Terry, and Terry then understood. They hadn't gotten to know the three new crew members. Since no one was after them, just left it to the captain to drive for now. The four people gathered around. One bear and two bear became nervous, their hands tied to the main mast clenched into fists, just waiting for a suitable opportunity to break free of the shackles. Oh, sorry to keep you guys tied up here. Avril tapped her head. There is an urgent situation. We had to do that. I'll open the shackles for you first. Avril took out the key and squatted down to open Fancy's shackles and handcuffs first, then one bears and two bears. The three were all looking at each other in dismay and at a loss for words. Hungry? We have nothing to eat here except some dried fish. Armin took out some food and water for them. Fancy's mouth watered to see the food. One bear and two bear took the food blankly, a little overwhelmed for a moment. They would not eat the food, just see what they were up to first. Avril squatted down and said with a smile, Here's the thing, we bought you though, but you can decide for yourselves if you want to stay or not. Huh? The three looked at Avril in surprise at the same time. Avril continued, If you are willing to join us and become a member of this ship, you must follow the captain's command and must serve this ship heart and soul. In fact, we all do. Aren't you the captain? Fancy asked in curiosity. Well, if you guys decide to stay, you might have a chance to find out. Avril smiled and looked at the three, of course, if you do not, you guys can get off when we arrive at Morgan Trading Market. Of course, you guys should pay the money bought you three in the future. One bear looked at Avril with suspicion, would you be so kind? If we go, won't you work for nothing? The captain would prefer his crew to be reliable enough. Avril said with a straight face, we only have a small ship, but we all consider this ship as our home. Well, you also don't think about robbing the ship or resistance. I can tell you for sure, you guys have not been able to rob the ship. As for resistance, there is absolutely no need. Stay or go, we will not force, said Avril standing up. There is no poison in the food, eat it if you are hungry. Put it back if you do not feel safe, do not waste food. Back to the bow, Avril said quietly, Captain, did I make your point clear? Not bad, Rain replied. The ship continued to travel toward Morgan Trading Market. One bear, do you think we still seize the ship? Fancy eyed the dried fish and gulped. Why do I feel as if they are quite good? One bear, they said we could be one of them? Didn't they say that they would use us as hard labor? Two bear leaned against the mast and looked up at the sky. If it's true, maybe we can stay here. Honestly, do we have anywhere else to go? We've lost our home. One bear lowered his head, looked at the dried fish in his hands, and fell into deep thought. 67. New crew. Not long after, one bear bit on the dried fish. I try to see if there is poison first. Eh? Unexpect tastes so good? Fancy and the two bear watched as the one bear finished a large piece of dried fish. After waiting for half an hour, they saw that the big bear was still alive and kicking. Since that, the two wiped out the dried fish in hurry. Two hundred nautical miles later, Morgan Trading Market appeared. Rain docked there to see if they could transport some goods by the way. Everyone was busy, and no one cared about them. The three tried to get off the boat, and indeed no one cared. After a stroll around the market, 
except for some people looking at them with strange eyes due to their shabby clothes. No one cared. The three stood on the wooden bridge and stared blankly at Avril. Avril stood on the boat and looked at the three kids. We're leaving. Have you guys decided? With us to go, or stay here. At this point, there is no need to say anything else. Avril has honored her promise, to go or stay by their own decision. The three looked at each other. Fancy, what do you think? The little boy lowered his head and whispered, Brother One Bear, I, I want to go with them. Yes, One Bear, they are good guys. I can feel their hearts are screwed together. They are so sincere with us. I don't think we should hide anything anymore. Two Bear also said. One Bear mused over it. Under the current situation, he seemed to have no more choice. He shouted to Avril, We'll go with you. Our group of more than 5,000 people lived on some nameless island in the human level sea where the resources were not exactly abundant, but it was enough to fill the bellies of us here. We thought we had found a place where we could live in clover until the fleet of the Black Hell merchants came to our homeland. Our warriors fought to the death, but a few mutants on the other side were too strong. Just four of them repelled our main force, said Two Bear with a sad look. The One Bear said, in fact, we also have a few strongmen but they are always out to do missions to earn more money for living supplies. The Black Hell merchants caught the chance to seize our home. And then, we became their prisoners. Our people will be trafficked to various seas. Many of them, perhaps, will die on someone else's ship. Fancy suddenly grabbed Avril's sleeve, Sister, can you buy my clan? Looking at Fancy eager and poor eyes, Avril was also heartbroken. Although Avril took pity on them, at this time, she could only say, Fancy, it's not that we're not willing to help you. But as you can see, we just have one small boat and shallow pockets. We can't buy that many people. And, if we go back now, I'm afraid they will find you three. Then maybe you guys will be detained, let alone save others. One bear hurriedly said, we can't go back. Avril, two bear and I are all right. But Fancy must be fine. She is the hope of all our clan. She? Everyone's hope? Fancy is a girl? Avril looked at Fancy in surprise. Maybe it was because this guy had been dirty so she hadn't noticed. One bear replied, yes, she is the daughter of our patriarch. She has a lot of potentials. In fact, we are all mutants. I and two bear are land-type mutants. And fancy, we can't be sure of her abilities. We only know that one of her abilities is to make people unable to detect us through instruments. It's this that makes us blend into the general slaves. Avril had sensed the difference in fancy before. She could neither distinguish fancy's strength level nor feel any pressure. This news was surprising enough. No matter what, one bear and the others have told their most important secret. At this very moment, the main mast spoke. That's right, it was the main mast. So, now you are my crew? The three were startled and looked at the mast behind them in horror. Jay just now, who was talking? It was me, your captain. Rain said helplessly. Why make a fuss? Is it weird? Holy shit. Strange crazy. Is it a bamboo mutant? Two bear was horrified beyond belief. He had not heard of this kind of mutant. Fuck you bamboo mutant. You guys are the bamboo mutant. I'm the captain of this ship. Rain disliked back without any ceremony. Avril hurriedly explained, Don't be afraid, he is our captain. In fact, he is this ship. I know it's a little hard to understand, but, as you can see, we're all used to it. It took a while for the three to calm down. Well, captain, our home is gone, and we intend to stay. Only, we only have one request. If we encounter a strong person from our clan, we hope you would let us go to take revenge. Although One Bear was trembling with fear, his attitude was firm. In return, as long as we are on the ship, we will work wholeheartedly and conscientiously and follow the captain's command. Okay, so quickly agreed? One Bear was a bit incredulous. You guys are not the only ones who want revenge, and I usually won't stop it. Rain replied, however, you also said that you will listen well to my command on the ship. I will not care about anything when you leave my ship. But on the ship... I hope that each of my crew members is trustworthy. Captain, we have told our biggest secrets. You can trust us completely. One bear affirm, besides, I bet my bottom pearls we won't encounter another ship like this except for you guys. Good. Avril, go get them some decent clothes and assign rooms, said Rain. Rain already couldn't wait to check the new crew information. Name, one bear. Mutation type, biotype mutant ion. Detailed classification, land type mutant, King Kong giant bear. Mutation stage, first stage. Mutation level, level 7 out of 10. Mutation ability, transformation. Variant description. The ability of land type mutant is improved on the land and reduced in the sea after transformation. Its characteristics are the opposite of the sea type mutant. In the untransformed state, 
the target human's current attributes are equivalent to 7 adult male combat power. After transformation, attributes increased by 5% asterisk mutation level on the land and weakened by 10% asterisk mutation level in the sea. Skill, primary collapse slam, land type mutant unique, attack power, 20, proficiency 10 twentieths. Skill description, active type skill, violently stomping on the ground, causing vibrations, and relying on strong reaction force to launch violent attacks. When stomping on a ship, it can destroy the ship's deck. Battle power, 14 real time. Turn into a giant King Kong bear? No, Arson has also transformed in the water, but her body doesn't turn into a sea monster. Just her body takes on some of the characteristics of a sea monster, so it's likely that the one bear does the same. It looked like that one bear turning into a bear will not happen. This is not the point. And the skill, it's similar to Arson's fighting skill, which also provides a two-point attack every level, but it seems like this is an explosive type of skill. For a gamer of Reign's caliber, it was easy to distinguish the difference between the two. Arson's fighting skill was more like an additional attribute. While the skill of one bear is more like a skill that cannot increase combat power in real time, it can play a more explosive role in combat. It was still a level 10 skill. This was a great deal. Rain immediately couldn't wait to open the two bear information panel. The two bears attributes were exactly the same as the one bears. These two brothers seemed to be quite strong. But that said, their ability would reduce 70% in the sea. The debuff received in the ocean was twice as much as the buff received on land. Arson was the same as both, but Arson's mutation side effects seem to be much smaller in adverse circumstances. Sea battle has always been Rain's weak point, and now it all of a sudden became their strong point with the one bear and two bear. It's value for money. Rain was hyped, right? And this little girl, let me see what in the world she is. 68. Take the initiative. Name fancy. Mutant type. Cannot check in current level. Detailed classification, cannot check in current level. Mutation stage, cannot check in current level. Mutation level, cannot check in current level. Mutation ability 1, fade, fade the Keplerian spectrum of itself and all mutated units within 50 square meters around it, even if the spectrometer also can't find out its properties. Combat power, 0.3, real time. What the hell? This series of cannot check in current level make Rain speechless. He as the captain actually cannot check Fancy's status. The only skill that shows, seems to be of little use. The little minion only has 0.3 combat power that equivalent to 3 little booty. Rain was helpless. Well, no matter what, at least Fancy is a mutant. Although Rain can't view it now, it means that Fancy's ability is stronger, just like he can't know Arson's propagation mother. Rain had 9 crew now. The ship gradually became lively. After a few days of contact, Rain became more familiar with One Bear, Two Bear, and Fancy. And three of them were not so afraid of him. Fancy changed back to women's clothing on Avril's advice. And after Fancy changed back into female clothes, the face value ranking of this ship changed. This 12-year-old girl with exquisite features, fair and tender skin, and big watery eyes became the ship muse. And the two brothers, the two of them won't grow fat no matter how much they eat. Rain doubts whether they are that strong. In the Azure era, Everyone is a driver no need to train. After joining the team, One Bear and Two Bear started to get busy. With the help of One Bear and Two Bear, Terry's job was much easier. Three days later, the ship arrived at the Rockies market. To Rain's surprise, he met the mysterious cloaked merchant again, Aoi. But Rain did not take it to heart. Terry, One Bear, Two Bear, and Arson were responsible for unloading the cargo. It was late in the day. So the group docked at the corner and made a trip to the trading market to buy some food for dinner. The moon reflected in the sea, the sea swaying gently. Seven people, a dog, and a bird sat around the bow deck. Captain, are we still taking transport missions in the Morgan trading market next? Avril asked, how about we change to another? It's the same anyway. I was thinking about that too. With Shobe gone, the Navy probably won't take special care of us. And I'm afraid Phoenix will cause us trouble. Rain was in two minds about it. To speak Phoenix, the crowd felt a kind of pressure. Their 40 meter long G class main ship was a behemoth to them. Well guys, I still know a bit about Bounty Corps. A bit cautious one bear participated in this discussion for the first time. From what I know, the Bounty Corps is quite at home in finding targets. They have been doing this for a living. They even can find the erratic pirate group and the sea monster. Finding us is money for jam. Even if we go to another trading market, I'm afraid that they will soon find us. Rain also had a lot of pressure, especially after seeing the misery of the slaves, 
he did not want his crew to be taken away. However, now they had to face the Subji bounty group that far exceeded their strength. After thinking for a long time, Rain finally said I've decided. Now that we know they're going to trouble us. If we're still pretending to be fine, that's just fooling ourselves. Ain't that how the rules of this world work? The winner is the king. We can't avoid it anyway. In that case, why would we have to be passive and beaten? Why wouldn't we take the initiative? Being able to make such a decision showed that Rain had begun to gradually adapt to this era. Hearing the captain say this, everyone put down the food in their hands and listened to Rain intently. I know that you all fear Phoenix in your hearts, and I don't want to fight them now. But now we have to fight, or we'll just have to wait to be destroyed by them. I just ask you guys, are you willing to follow me? Several people looked at each other. Finally, all eyes fell on Avril. Avril took a deep breath, Captain, this is our home. You are our captain. We support you no matter what you decide. One bear also said, Captain, we would only be eliminated if we don't resist. We are part of the ship, and we have long been committed. So don't worry, we absolutely follow the command. Good, now then, let's make our goal clear. This time we will take the initiative. We will defeat Phoenix and plunder their resources, Rain said in a deep voice. Captain, Two Bear and I used to follow the bounty group, so we know some of their search methods. One Bear lowered his voice and said, Oh? That's great, tell me about it. One of their secret skills to search for targets is, said One Bear looking at the guy who was standing at the bow of the ship and gazing at the sky. Little booty? Little booty as if it did not hear others talking about it. It just looked into the distance. The sky is where I belong. Sort of half right. Two Bear said, there are seagulls and also eagles. They can find the target quickly and return. Track a few times and you'll find your target. So that's it. Rain dawned on him. No wonder he saw many captains with an eagle standing on their shoulders. It's impossible to feed many eagles for the punishment bounty group. They will keep many seagulls to help them search for their targets. Arson said curiously, One Bear. Although we knew this information, how will it help us? One Bear said, If we find a seagull or an eagle following us all the time, then we have to be careful. We are probably being watched. I see, then we need to pay more attention. Rain listened to the discussion of the crew but had no words. He kept his eyes on the one standing above his head. Speaking of which, although the little booty has been living in his own world, it has followed them for so long. A calm guy every time. Moreover, it is surprising that he was able to complete the task perfectly in such a complicated environment the last time fighting the deep sea octopus emperor. This guy was worthy of the Navy Lieutenant Ray's seagull that had strong mental qualities. If this is the case, little booty, I do think you can take on this important task. The little booty kept looking into the distance. It only had sky in its eyes. 69. Hunter and Prey. In the human class sea, a fleet of a dozen ships was sailing towards no man's land. A grim phoenix clad in a red fur coat on the spacious deck of the G-Class Punishment main ship. A huge black feathered eagle stood on his shoulders. Panther, have you found them yet? A tall and thin man behind him bowed his head with a voice hoarse. Not yet, I've expanded the search to 1,000 nautical miles around Morgan Trading Market. Hurry up, I want to get them. Now, Phoenix looked at the ships on either side of the main ship. Now his fleet looked much less than last year. He turned his head and had his eyes narrowed fiercely. That son of bitch destroyed nine of my ships. Remember, after we get them, I will torture that captain to death. The other women, I allow you guys to treat them well. Cutting the men into pieces should keep the black emperor fed for a few days. Phoenix picked up a piece of dried fish into the mouth of the black eagle on his shoulder. And the ship, tear it apart inch by inch. I wanna see what's so special about it. Aye captain. Seven days later. A flock of seagulls flew back from all directions and landed on the side panels of the ship. Panther hurried over to them. The gulls stood there one by one with their heads spinning around, and they swooped over as they saw a crew member bring a small fish. When the panther was feeling disappointed, he suddenly saw gulls standing there alone, facing the sea with a far-seeing gaze. Even among the many seagulls, it was impossible to hide the specialness of this one, whose melancholy eyes, the slightly disordered bird hair on the back of the beak and the slightly fatter figure than the other gulls all made it look so different. Eh? Something? The panther picked up a few small fish from the ground and walked over to grab the gull. Goo goo goo. The panther was amazed that there was a situation. He had the corners of his mouth split and laughed in a hoarse voice. He <laughs> he, it looks like we found it. Rain was still docked at the Rockies trading market at this point, but they didn't take on any new transport assignments. Avril bought back a large number of materials. 
They purchased 200 kilograms of copper, 100 kilograms of iron ingots, and 120 units of wood. After loading these materials onto the ship, they headed for the uninhabited sea. System. Increased the hull armor reinforcement to two. The new crew looked at those copper quickly attached to the bow and stern of the ship and the hull in shock, their faces pale with fear. Holy shit, it's really a ghost ship. Rain didn't have time to care about them now. Open the weapon system. Ramming horn, reinforcement two attack power, 3530, quantity one. Reinforced hull, reinforcement two, defense, 1520. After the second reinforcement, the length of the ramming horn was increased by another meter and the hardness was further improved. The hull was reinforced with more metal and appeared stronger. There is some wood left from before, plus the ones I bought this time. System. Make 200 crossbow arrows and 10 wooden spikes. Those woods quickly finished cutting automatically, and the arrows were inlaid with metal arrows. Terry, divide these arrows and put them in the crossbow's room. As you wish. One bear picked up an arrow to look and said, Captain, can you give me and two bear one of these arrows? I think it's made strong and the right length. We can use it as a weapon. Rain froze for a moment. Yeah, none of his crew had weapons. Last time Arson used a wooden oar to repel the enemy. Terry, hold on. Hand out one to each person. Everyone received one, which was the arrow for the large crossbow. But it's just a slightly shorter lance in the hands of these people. Rain made seven more arrows and had Terry carry all 200 of them to the ship's interior barn. Together with the five of the large crossbow. Each large crossbow arrow holder is stocked with 55 arrows. Rain calculated, in addition, the bottom of the ship's wooden spikes also prepared 10. Although it is not easy to reload, I can let Arson go down to do that when necessary. In this way, Rain has splashed out all the pearls on hand on this reinforcement. Now they had bet their bottom pearl. A little nervous fancy leaned to the side alone that had not said a word as she watched one bear and the others move the arrows to the bottom cabin of the ship. Fancy, what's wrong? Avril walked over. Oh, nothing, I. I just. Avril, I'm a little scared. Fancy still voiced her concern. I'm afraid we'll get caught again. Avril had always been looking after this little girl. She had lost her loved ones, and Fancy was even worse than her that she had lost her entire pack. This experience should be more or less the same. They would both be on the road to revenge. Avril squatted down to touch Fancy's soft hair. Fancy, this world is like this. If you are not strong enough, you will never be able to control your destiny or protect the people you like. Right now the Punishment Bounty Corps must be on their way to hunt us down. They take us as prey. Even if we run, it's useless. So we must resist. Don't worry. When the danger comes, just hide in the cabin. We will protect you. Fancy raised her head to look at Avril gratefully. Sister Avril, thank you. Avril nodded heavily. On the other side, Armin who was at the bow of the ship looked at the sky from time to time. Captain, the little booty hasn't appeared yet. Now Rain was not too sure. I don't know. Shob's bird always makes me feel a little unreliable. I always seem to have a sense that guy has been roasted now. Captain, a captain of Lieutenant Shob's caliber, he would have kept hawks. But he didn't seem to have any birds except the little booty. So I don't think the little booty could be that simple. Armin said. I hope so. Rain's side was ready. Now just wait for the little booty. Five days later, the Phoenix fleet, the captain's room. At this moment, all the ship captains were gathered here. According to the scouting results, they appeared in seven directions before. Only what I don't understand is how they could possibly sail so far in one day. A captain marked seven locations on the chart with a red pen. Moreover, from the positions reported by the seagulls, I'm a bit confused about the direction they sailed. Several people looked at the chart. Under normal circumstances, the results of several probes will be connected to a line. Plus the probing time. They can infer the direction and speed of the ship's voyage. But now there was no pattern among several points on the chart, the order of appearance, and orientation. A captain said the speed of the ship is no problem. The message back from the men at Port Angel indicated that they have changed ship. They now sail a three-masted carrick sloop. But the positions are confusing me. At this time, a 300 pounds and 2 meters tall huge fat man swept a glance at the chart with a cold snort. A dozen meters carrick sailing ship only. We now have 14 ships, 3 for a detachment, and the main ship alone led a Viking warship. A total of 5 detachments will be blocked these routes. Once we find them, the other fleet quickly encircles. Lord Pig Emperor is really smart. The captains of the ships have agreed. All be careful when hunting. From behind the obese man, a slender woman came out in a graceful who was wearing a kimono, 
revealing her snow-white and slender legs when she walked. However, none of these men who had been hungry and thirsty for a long time dared to take a look. Remember Captain Phoenix said he would entertain these bastards well. The woman smiled nightmare like a flower. Yes, Miss Sakura. 70. The power of large crossbow. Rain had been sailing fast over the sea for a few days, and had spotted gulls flying overhead more than once. There were very few wild seagulls in this era. Rain and the others were almost certain that they had been spotted. The only hope now was that Little Booty could complete the task of interfering with the other side's intelligence. But the lonely figure of Little Booty had not been seen in the past few days, which made Rain worry if it had become a roasted seagull. Captain, I see three ships are approaching. One bear's voice came from above. At the same time, the system also sounded prompt. Ding, enemy ships were found approaching, the number is three. The ships are medium-sized three-masted Portuguese light gunboats, a medium-sized Greek three-row or warship, and a small to medium-sized Carthaginian warship. Rain had seen all kinds of ships before that knew a little about these three types of ships. The light gunboat is equipped with artillery sailing ships. The Greek three-row or warships are not equipped with artillery, or only a small number of weapons on deck. But they have great speed with the help of sails and dozens of sailors, it can also be equipped with ramming horns to get good power. And after a close encounter, the crew can quickly get on board to fight. Carthage warship is considered a moderate warship, rain can hang up to beat it in performance. But now the problem was that they were not in a single fight, two big guys behind it. Long-range firepower, a melee, plus an auxiliary. Rain could not help but sigh it's indeed a good team. Rain dare not think nonsense with the big battle imminent. He hurriedly locked these three ships. Attention everyone, fortunately, we only have to face three enemy ships this time. But I believe that the other ships should be not far away. We must fight a quick battle. The expressions of all the crew members tensed up. Any time we fight will make or break our fate. Okay everyone ready? The crew took a deep breath and looked at each other. Captain, we're ready. Good, let's turn around and go full speed. Let's go fuck them. Terry immediately adjusted the direction of the spinnaker, while Rain adjusted the ships heading toward the southeast at full speed. On the Portuguese warship, Captain Hyman picked up his monocular to look at it. Well, they're coming our way? All hands prepare for battle. Jerry, you guys charge first. Captain Jerry of the three-row oars warships received the order and immediately moved. All sailors immediately entered the cabin and sat in their positions. Three long rows of oars began to swing rhythmically under the commander's call. And with the help of the sails, their ship's speed quickly increased and even began to overtake the light gunship. Rain and the three-row oars warships were heading toward each other extremely fast, and both ships were equipped with large ramming horns as if they'd perished together. Captain, Avril and the others were all holding their breath and staring nervously at the enemy ships that were rapidly approaching. Hold on, hold on, it's not time yet. Rain stared dead ahead and said in a deep voice. He and the Greek warship were going in opposite directions, and the Greek warship and their main ship were going in the same direction and the distance between them was only 500 meters. When Rain and the Greek warship were only 200 meters apart, Rain suddenly shouted, Hold on, said Rain turned violently that the whole ship almost turned over. No one saw the bottom of the sea that Rain's right or was desperately sliding. Fuck. Turn left, left, come on. With great difficulty, the ship was finally stabilized. The Greek warship was in high spirits ready to have a Mars collision, who knew that the other side who had been also aggressive actually wimped out. The two boats brushed against each other. You bunch of trash. Don't hide if you have the guts, weren't you arrogant? Why did you was today? Jerry stood at the bow of the boat and cursed loudly. However, no one on Rain's side paid attention to him. At that moment, Rain's speed increased again with the help of the two oars at the bottom. Jerry frowned at the enemy ship that sped past then turned around and woke up with a jolt. Their target was not themselves, but their main ship, the Portuguese light gunship. God damn it. Jerry no longer had the mind to continue to provoke, the other party's thinking was too clear that they simply will not be disturbed by him. This kind of tactic for the rain that was quite at home in the game was an instinctive reaction. Who should be killed first in a group battle? Obviously, the shooter. Otherwise, they fought with the Greek warship melee to let the gunship stand there to shoot them, and then the solid boat cannot hold on. Hyman also found out Rain's intention, but he had long been prepared that the gunners in the fire cabin were ready. He had a 25-meter long gunship that simply did not wimp out. Looking for me first? Fine, let's play with you. Gunner aim. In the bottom compartment of the gunship, 30 gun doors were opened. 
The black and thick barrels were sticking out from inside the gun doors and were ready to fire. As soon as Rain caught sight of those barrels, he knew these guns are the same as the Chike Iron Anchor Pirates artillery he picked up. Yes, Chike was a G-class pirate group, so the punishment bounty group equipment should be similar to theirs. This artillery is mainly to shell smash through the deck as a means of attack. The range is slightly parabolic with limited accuracy and power. Very good. Rain's mind moved, and two rectangular windows slowly opened on the side of the ship. Terry, one bear? Terry and one bear in the bottom cabin witnessed the gun doors opening through the windows. They also saw the enemy ship not far away. Terry took a deep breath. Captain, we're all set. Good, atomic bomb, blast it up. All right, large crossbow, fire. Rain fired when the two were 400 meters apart. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. The two large crossbows fired a total of 10 huge arrows in succession. Under the system's precise calculation, the 10 thick arrows directly knocked the fire cabin of the Portuguese warship into disintegration. This was not over yet. Terry and one bear finished filling with the fastest speed. The second round of bombardment came again before Hyman could figure out what was going on. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. The extremely fast iron-encrusted arrows were full of destructive power. The enemy ship had been in pieces received another round of heavy attacks on its waist. This time it was completely destroyed. Several gunners who could not escape in time were direct carried along by the thick arrows, piercing the wooden beams and dying a tragic death on the spot. Hyman stared at the enemy ship that was smaller than his own and said blankly, F fuck, why is this ship so heavily armed? 71. The power of two bear. If two rounds of attacks were not enough, then three rounds. Here came the third round of burst fire. Rain's crossbow was extremely fast and accurate with almost no gap between the five arrows. The 25 meter long Portuguese light gunboat could only stand there and be beaten into a hornet nest by rain. Their fire cabin along with half of the hull had been directly destroyed by rain before the light gunship could fire. Play with me. Rain didn't slow down at all and was about to pierce the light gunship with its ramming horn. At the same time, the Carthage battleship quickly moved and tried to protect the main ship. Rain grunted while quickly opening the window on the other side of the ship. Whoosh 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 whoosh. A total of ten arrows almost cloth into a net and directly blasted the ship to the wood ships flying. The Carthage warship was in a mess, the mast collapsed and the crew was killed or injured not knowing how many. After easily finishing off the Carthage warship, Rain rammed headlong into the enemy main ship's devastated hull and the huge hull was directly cracked by Rain's. Four meter long ramming horn. Terry and Two Bear immediately adjusted the stern sails while Rain shut down the stern thrusters and started the bow thrusters the ship quickly fell back. The Portuguese light gunship broke from the middle and a large amount of seawater poured in and started to sink. At this time, a large number of crew members tried to jump onto Rain's hull at all costs. Two Bear and Arson stood on the bow and wielded their lance to shoot down the crew members who tried to jump on board. At this point, the battle has entered the white hot stage, and Rain had spotted a large number of enemies approaching the bottom of the sea. Arson bottom. Rain immediately informed Arson. Two Bear turned to Arson and said, "You go." I can hold it on here. Arson nodded and jumped into the water with a fish leap. The bottom of the sea began another fierce battle this time. Arson into the water after transforming. She nimbly swims in enemies that tried to get close to the bottom of the ship. And the lance in her hand fierce thrust at the enemy. At the same time, Rain's harpoon under the boat also fired. Harpoons covered Arson while preventing the enemy from approaching. Poof poof. Six muffled sounds that harpoon pierced the bodies of six people. The sea flooded with a burst of red seawater all of a sudden. Rain paddled quickly at the same time to keep the ship back to avoid more enemy crew jumping at his hulls. Finally, they gradually broke away from the light gunship and pulled away for a while. Fuck, get out of my way! With a violent shout, Hyman quickly assisted along the rapidly tilting hull and leaped high into the air that he was going to seize this last chance to get on board. The two bear also shouted, Fuck off! A lance slashed through. But the tip was grabbed by Hyman and he got on board. The two bear were in front of Hyman and they were about to have a close fight. Rain knew Hyman got on board, but there was nothing he could do. The situation at the bottom was slightly better, but the three row or warship was coming over here. The three row or warship was more explosive than the light gunboats, and there was a large crew of powerful oarsmen on it. Rain fired a volley of arrows, and half of the sailors in the bilges raised their long oars and waved them about indiscriminately. This tactic was somewhat odd but surprisingly effective. Although some of the arrows still pierced part of the ship's side panels, 
they were much less powerful than before. Seeing that the enemy ship was rushing over, Rain quickly adjusted the direction of the ship and sprinted toward the enemy ship. Punk, come on. If you dare, don't be a coward this time. Jerry had his eyes bared while waving his waist knife and pointed straight at Rain. Brothers, Phoenix would peel off our skin if we lose this time. So everyone charge. Crash them. The two ships were 50 meters apart, 40 meters. At that moment, Rain fired a wooden spike. A crew member suddenly emerged from the water and shouted to Jerry, Jerry, watch out. A loud boom before the words fell. The bow of the three-row or warship suddenly deflected violently. The ship occurred violent lurch followed by a hole pierced by a thick wooden thorn in the bottom of the cabin. It must be said that the sturdiness of the three-row or's warship was beyond Rain's expectation that the wooden spike did not completely destroy it. As the wooden spike was stuffed into the bottom of the ship, there was no leakage of water instead. It's more durable than Biao's ship, Rain snorted coldly. But it's enough. Taking advantage of a moment of confusion on the three-row or warship, Rain turned the rudder left to face the enemy ship with his own flank. If one round is not enough, I'll do two rounds. If two rounds are not enough, I'll do three rounds. The second round of crossbow arrows. The third round of crossbow arrows. A total of twenty stout arrows were fired out swiftly and furiously. At first, the crew could block the arrows and weaken the attack. But this was the time when chaos appeared on their ship, especially the sailors at the bottom of the ship who was scared. At this moment, continuous fierce arrows rained came that they could barely block a few of them, and then the other arrows mercilessly pierced the belly of the ship. One more wave! Rain ordered again, the last wave of attack. More than half of those crew members have been killed or injured. By now, their eyes were already filled with despair when they saw another round of attacks coming. A dumbfounded and bewildered Jerry looked at Arrow's sword towards himself. Why would be so strong? With a poof the arrow directly penetrated his chest, taking his entire body flying dozens of meters and landing on the distant sea. In less than five minutes, the nearby sea was stained red with blood, and all three ships flying the flag of the Punishment Bounty Corps sank. The crew at the bottom of the sea at this time had already not dared to approach the bottom of rain. The harpoon's aim was deadly, and the woman with speed fast also made people fear. With the woman and six harpoons cooperating with each other, the bottom of the ship was as strong as iron. As long as they close, not dead but also seriously injured. Hyman looked at his sinking warship, three-row or warship, Carthaginian warship, and the fleeing crew around him all made his heart burn with rage. He turned his head and looked fiercely at Tuber. You're good, I really underestimated you guys. Destroying my ship, very well. I'll make you shit to pay for it. Strengthen. After saying that, the muscles on Hyman's body swelled rapidly and his height soared from the original 1 meter 75 to 1 meter 9 that his arms were comparable to. His thighs and the clothes on his body were torn that revealing a bodybuilder-like figure. The Tuber coldly snorted. Play strength in front of me? Sorry, you've got the wrong fighter. After saying that, the two bear threw the lance aside and tore his chest clothes with a cold voice. Giant bear is transformed. The two bear's body rapidly expanded. The skin turned black. Arms and back grew short hair. And part of the black bear's features appeared on the face. Both of them blasted out a punch at the same time. The small bones of Hyman's arm directly from the bend of the arm stabbed out. And the bone spikes were shocked back by two bear's force to stabbed into Hyman's chest. With a punch... Hyman was stabbed to death by his own bones. Rain was shocked and his heart also shuddered. Holy shit. So fierce. 72. The heroic stance of Little Booty. The battle was over in a moment. The captain of this fleet was killed, the crew was scattered, and all three ships sank. Avril and Armin got their eyes widened at the fallen Hyman on the deck in shock. Although they had already seen Chike die tragic last time, they still could not accept such a cruel death. On the contrary, it seemed that the young girl had seen more cruel scenes than this. She stood beside Avril with a poker face. Sister Avril, Sister Armin, this world is like this. If you don't kill him, he's going to kill us. Tuber slowly regained its original thin appearance and walked over to check if Hyman was really dead. After for sure that he was dead, Tuber groped around his body for a while, then felt a money bag from Hyman's waist, turned around, and threw it to Avril. Avril, there should be a few pearls here. Keep it first, said Two Bear, and then he kicked Hyman's body into the sea. How could there be no loot after the battle? Terry began to wash the blood stains on the deck with seawater, while One Bear, Two Bear, and Arson fished the materials in the water. There was plenty of material on the bottom of the sea. 
but Rain and the others were pressed for time now. Phoenix's troops could appear at any time, and they had to get out of there right away. Fishing the timber and the artillery first, Rain stared nervously at the radar. In about half an hour, Arson salvaged a large batch of materials. At that moment, Armin saw a small white bird flying in the sky and reported to Rain, Captain, there is a seagull. Rain realized that there was not much time left. Wait for a chance to come back to fish the rest later. Arson, one bear, two bear, get on board quick. Just twenty minutes after Rain and the others left, a huge G-class main ship arrived at the site of the incident. Looking at the timber drifting and the seaman's body soaking in the water in the distance, Phoenix furrowed. A seaman was rescued and then gave Phoenix a detailed report of what had happened. Oh Lord Captain, their ships are too strong, their repeating crossbows are extremely powerful with long range and amazing accuracy. The crewman said warily, in addition, they have three more mutant crew members. Two men and a girl, one of the men killed Captain Hyman with one punch. Phoenix got his eyes narrowed slightly as he walked up to the crewman and slowly crouched down. So, you're saying that three of your ships with 173 men were beaten by a small sailing ship about only 16 or 17 meters with only seven crew. And a dog? The crew involuntarily stepped backward and said in terror after seeing the cold gaze of Phoenix, Captain, we really tried our best. None of us escaped from the battlefield. We, we were all determined to die trying to ram and sink them. Phoenix smiled faintly and gently stroked the man's head with one hand. Well, that's good, I'm touched. The words just fell, and with a snap, the man's head was crushed by Phoenix. He did not even have time to scream out. Phoenix grunted and stood up, looking at the blood-stained clothes on his body, shaking his head with a disgusted look. Damn, dirty again. Phoenix looked back at the man's horrified corpse. Since you had a determination to die, then why are you still alive? Trash. Clean this place up. Back in the captain's cabin, Phoenix, Panther, Pig Emperor, and Sakura rechecked the chart. This time show me clearly, I must catch those jerks. I will make them feel that death is a luxury, Fisk said fiercely. At the same time, Rain spared a big circle. During the voyage, Rain replenished 200 arrows and used the extra metal to upgrade the hull reinforcement to 3. It seemed that the ramming horn was enough that no need to upgrade for now, so he upgraded the defense to avoid sinking after being hit by artillery. Arson and One Bear reloaded the bottom wooden spike while checking the bottom harpoons, and then returned to the ship. As long as the brothers do not transform underwater, they are still much stronger than normal people that can help Arson a lot. According to their previous plan, they let the little booty pass the wrong information to Phoenix to spread their forces. It seemed that little booty make a go of it. It was likely that other fleets were heading to the wrong place. Now all Rain had to do was to take the initiative and look for these flotillas. However, there was still a problem now, the seagull that was following above their heads. The flight height was not too high, but the crossbow arrow angle could not go up that much, so it definitely could not hit it. One bear looked at the seagull. He picked up an arrow, aimed, and shot it. The seagull in the sky was pierced by a metal arrow in a blink of an eye. One bear, awesome. Avril's eyes widened. Speaking of which, after this battle, one bear and two bear have been integrated into this new team. In the team, they were also playing an important role. At this moment, Rain suddenly said in a deep voice, Northwest, they are coming, preparing for battle. Everyone immediately entered the battle-ready state. Unknowingly, the sky had already darkened, but the sea was somewhat unsettled. Waves rolled in and out. Seven or eight corpses fell on Rain's deck. This time the enemy was a light gunboat plus two three-row oars warships with a large crew, and two bear alone could not stop them from jumping on board. Fortunately, one bear arrived just in time after sinking all three ships, and the two brothers transformed into two beasts and swept the field. Don't look at the one bear and two bear usually thin like a bamboo pole. Once transformed, the two simply as two wild beasts easily tear those crew members' bodies. This was already the fourth batch of opponents. After a series of fierce battles, Arson, one bear, two bear, Terry, and even Rain have been quite tired. After salvaging a batch of wood from the sea and replenishing the munitions of the large crossbow, Arson, one bear, and two bear lay on the ground, panting heavily. Terry came out of the firepower cabin, wiped the seawater from his head, and also sat down on the bow deck steps to rest. Captain, we've taken out four groups, twelve ships in all. Armand said I remembered clearly that the Punishment Bounty Corps had a total of twenty-three ships, and they lost nine in the fishing competition. Now they lost another twelve so they should only have two, a G-class main ship and a Viking warship. However, 
I don't know if they have replenished their ships in human class waters. Avril thought about it and said people rarely replenish their boats in winter. One is the labor cost of shipbuilding is higher. And secondly, new ships are rarely launched in winter when there are often ice flows. And new ships have nothing to do because there are no transport missions and few fish to catch. The cost recovery cycle is too long. While the crowd was speculating about the remaining strength of the punishment bounty corps, a seagull appeared in the sky again. One bear happened to be lying there, and when he saw the seagull, he immediately got up and grabbed his lance to shoot it. Wait! Rain suddenly shouted, that's little booty. The little booty flew in the sky for a while, then made a dive and stood proudly on the bow of the ship. The people around were exclaiming that little booty had done a great job, and its unperturbed style, calm and cool demeanor, the majestic posture of flying and accurate information. However, the little booty was just standing steadily on the undulating bow of the ship, looking blandly at the distant sea and sky. I belong in the sky. Rain no longer dares to take this little minion with 0.1 combat power lightly. With the return of the little booty, bringing back the information of Phoenix, then it meant that the showdown was about to be fought. 73. Gant Mountain Phoenix. The sea lifted layers of waves, and the deep blue sky was covered by thick fog. The waves rolled under the hazy moonlight. Ding, southwest 193 degrees, 1999 meters position, enemy ship detected. The whole ship tensed up as rain heard this sound. Just now, the little booty took the time to tell their intelligence about Phoenix. It pecked the plank twice, indicating that there were only two ships left in Phoenix's fleet now, and they were speeding towards this way at this moment. Then the enemy ships coming couldn't be anyone else. Ding, the enemy ships are two vessels. One is a G-class Portuguese three-masted warship and one is a small to medium-sized Viking warship. Although he had seen many Portuguese warships, Rain was very impressed with the one in Phoenix that the hull was over 40 meters long and there were three main masts on board. Three laden sails hung from the bow and two from the stern. The ship was nearly 20 meters high with at least 100 gun doors in the waist and a crew of over 200 men on board. The Viking warship, Rain was not afraid. To be honest, the Viking warship is not even held a candle to the Greek warships in power. But Viking warships are more flexible and have a good number of crew members which at least will cause some trouble to Rain. Guys, our enemy is coming, Rain said in a deep voice. I know everyone is tired, but this is our last battle, make or break. Everyone gathered around and had grave faces. What they had to deal with this time was a G-class warship. Let's make a slight adjustment this time. Avril, Armin, Terry. You three go to the firepower cabin. I have prepared 100 extra arrows. You have to fill them in time. Aye, Captain. One bear, two bear. You two are responsible for the port battle. Arson, you are still responsible for underwater. Yes, Captain. White, Fancy, and Little Booty, you hide in the stern compartment for the time being. The entire crew took their positions. Rain took a deep breath and shouted, Full sail. In the dark waves, a 16 or 17 meter three-masted sailing ship was riding the wind and waves to head southwest at full speed. Meanwhile, Phoenix was standing on the bow of the G-class main ship punishment, monocular in hand, keeping eyes on the fast approaching three-masted Carrick ship in the waves. Humph, you are working your own undoing, Panther, having the Viking warship make for them. And remember, stick to them and interfere with their direction of travel. A hoarse voice rang out, I captain saying that the panther swooped a dozen steps, leaped high from the punishment, and landed firmly on the Viking warship. All hands paddle at full speed. Rain did not have binoculars, but his radar was much better than theirs, and he quickly spotted the other party's movements. Only, the ship was moving in a very strange way. Well, what does it mean? Is this your tactic? Not going to fight hard with me? Rain sneered. It seemed they don't know yet that he has an almost 100% hit rate. No matter how good your blocking was, it's futile in front of the system. Rain quietly opened the cannon door. Two crossbows were ready to fire. Avril and Armin each guarded a crossbow cart and hold five arrows in their hands that were ready to upload at any time. The two ships were getting closer and closer, and the target was already in range. Come on, shoot me. With a hoarse voice, Panther shouted towards Rain's side, Come on, shoot me if you dare. Come on, shoot my ass. You punk. You're all trash, trash, trash. Shoot my ass. Come shoot me. Come shoot my ship. Rain locked his eyebrows. Such a serious big duel. Why suddenly appeared such a goofball? That was making people feel like the atmosphere changed all of a sudden. Shoot me? Rain had never heard of such a weird request. Right, this guy was a mutant. 
confidence in his own strength was also right. He must feel that the wind and waves were too difficult to aim, lure their own fire waste of ammunition, and this also was a good idea. But forget it, since the other party was so enthusiastic, Rain was also embarrassed to refuse. Whoosh 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 whoosh, ten stout arrows broke out of the air. The panther saw the ten arrows in shock. Fuck you, so accurate? Panther caught three arrows, but he couldn't catch all of them. The power of the repeating large crossbow arrows was beyond his imagination. Bang! 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 The Viking warship which was not that big was instantly beaten into a sieve. And under the huge impact, the whole ship actually almost turned over on its side. The ship's board instantly crumbled with wood ships flying around under the attack of thick sharp arrows. Half of the ship's crew has been shaken to the sea. The whole deck was already leaking, and when Panther looked back, the crew had already jumped overboard. He got his teeth clenched and looked angrily at the Carrick ship passing them by. His eyes were about to spew out the fire. His previous provocative behavior instantly became an act of idiocy. Damn it, what kind of crossbow was this ship equipped with? The power is comparable to artillery. To say that the panther has brain dead wronged him. In fact, he had lost due to taking the enemy lightly. Under normal circumstances, Rain's crossbow was difficult to aim at the high-speed moving Viking warship in such a big wind and waves. The panther's aim should be to entangle them, so he deliberately provoked them. Although they sank the Viking warship, the panther alone actually caught three arrows. This guy's strength was not to be underestimated. Suddenly, the panther shouted and the whole man from the Viking warship leaped up more than ten meters high. Rain just wanted to turn the rudder, but it was too late. The panther used the arrow in his hand to block the lance of the one bear and landed on the deck. This guy surprisingly had an agile body. Now Rain and Panther fought to a draw. Two people each had a mistake, but Rain had a slight advantage in that at least he sunk the Viking warship. Captain, leave him to us. One bear and two bear held lances and kept dead eyes on the panther. The panther's mouth slightly side raised, casually threw away the three arrows in his hand. I heard that you two brothers are quite capable of fighting. Let me see. Transformed, misty shadow cheetah. The tall and thin body of the panther continued to elongate while the nails of both hands extend out and turn into sharp claws, yellow and white fur emerges on his body, and his face shows part of his cheetah form appearance. His hands were on the ground and his back bulging high. The whole body bowed and shrunken as if containing great power. One bear pushed two bear away. Two bear, you go to the bow. Do not let others on board. I will deal with him. Transformed, giant bear. One bear tore open clothes. The original thin body quickly swelled, becoming unusually sturdy. With black hair, Han's nails grew out and became sharp. Although Two Bear was not at ease with One Bear, at this time they have been approaching the punishment. He cannot let more people on board. In view of his duties, Two Bear ran up to the bow of the ship. Rain temporarily ignored the panther on board and continued to surge forward. Just as he approached the punishment, both sides opened fire at the same time. Rain dodged desperately while firing crossbows continuously. At that moment, from the bow of the punishment, three men leaped up high. One of them liked a meatball. The other one's figure had a clear shadow that wore a pink dress. It was a mannish woman. The last one was the head of the Punishment Bounty Corps, Phoenix, known as Gant Mountain Phoenix. 74. The Power of Fancy. In a flash, Panther, Pig Emperor, Sakura, and Phoenix, the four strongest men of the Punishment Bounty Corps all boarded rain. One bear pushed the panther away and stood in a line with two bear and arson, staring at the four guys. Phoenix looked at these three persons contemptuously across the street. One, two, three, only three? Then sorry you are dead. You three guys are not bad. I really wonder why you are willing to follow that woman. When the time comes to fight, she just hides in the cabin and watches you three fight for your lives? Arson said in a cold voice. Who we are willing to follow is our business. No need you to worry about it. Phoenix smiled faintly that the cross flesh on his face became slightly crowded. Yeah, indeed it's none of my business. You'll all end up the same anyway. You guys are unforgivable that destroyed my whole fleet. But don't worry, I won't let you die so easily. I will make you beg me to kill you. Panther, Pig, Sakura, these three, leave them to you. I'll go and have some fun with our captain, said Phoenix, leisurely walking towards the stern of the ship. Over my dead body. Arson rushed over and threw a punch at Phoenix's head, yet Phoenix did not have any defense, and just walked forward as if he was walking at home. Just as Arson's punch was about to hit Phoenix in the face, suddenly a pink figure kicked Arson's arm away with fast speed. Sakura sneered and said to Arson, if I were you, 
I would have no time for other people's business. The pig emperor shook his big belly and looked at the brothers. I heard that you two brothers are quite strong, so let me see. The panther said dissatisfied, behave yourself. One for you, one for me. Whoever is one by one with you, first come first served, said the pig emperor's body became bigger and bigger. Rain felt the boat sink a little all of a sudden. As his appearance began to become ugly, Pig Emperor mutated his into a forest black-skinned boar. And just after completing his transformation, he rushed toward the two bear. The two bear hurriedly transformed and fought with the Pig Emperor. Over there, the panther saw the one bear was going to intercept Phoenix. He let out a low cry and pounced toward the one bear. In this way, the three stronger mutants in Rain's ship were all entangled by each other. Damn, Rain cursed in his heart. No one can deal with Phoenix now, and it seemed that the guy was the strongest. Avril, Armin, Fancy, and White were all in the captain's cabin. At this time, the enemy ship was approaching, and Rain still need to keep moving in the wind and waves to dodge the gunfire. This was the only thing Rain could do at the moment. Inside the captain's cabin, Avril, Armin, and Fancy watched the tall Phoenix approaching. White was barking, but apparently, a Labrador couldn't stop Phoenix. Avril had a lance in hand and stood in front of Armin and Fancy. Fancy, hide. Avril's tone was a bit shaky. Fancy's eyebrows locked up tightly. The scene was deja vu. The mutant of the clan fought hard to resist the strong man of the Black Hell. And at that time, a short and fat man also walked toward those women and children with recklessness. She promised her elder brother to protect the tribe in his absence. But she was too scared then. She was a twelve-year-old child, after all. Her body was shivering when facing such a bloody scene. How could she have the strength to fight? At that time, her mother was like Avril, standing in front of herself until a cold long sword ran through her body. In the end, she could only watch as the clan fell and the surviving clan members were shackled and pressed onto those big ships. Phoenix kicked open the wooden door of the captain's cabin, lifted his chin, and closed the door with his backhand. Greetings, beauties. Next I'll treat you all well. Avril got her teeth gritted and raised the lance to slash over. But Phoenix grabbed it, snatched it away, and threw it aside, TSK TSK TSK, quite fierce, but I like it. Your three crew members are a bit strong, but I wonder how those crew members would feel to see their captain have sex while they are fighting hard. Phoenix laughed lewdly as he stepped forward and grabbed Avril's wrist. You will pay for destroying so many of my ships. Get off me. Avril struggled desperately but she couldn't break free of Phoenix's hand. Bitch, still wanna run? Avril's eyes were already full of tears, thinking of the results she was about to face. This extremely strong and smart woman couldn't help but leave tears of humiliation. Seeing this, White rushed over and bit Phoenix's wide sleeve, tearing it hard. Phoenix had no choice but to let go of Avril, and then threw White flying, hitting the wall hard. All around, cannon fire was going on. On the deck of the ship, the six men were fighting fiercely. Inside the captain's cabin, Phoenix was stepping closer to Avril and Fancy. Come here. Phoenix tried to grab Avril again. And at that moment, the wooden planks on the ground suddenly buckled up and formed a shield made of four or five planks in front of Avril. Fuck, what's this? Phoenix was stunned. How could these planks suddenly move? This was not the end. Click, 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 click. Rain was dismantling the cabin at all costs and quickly made a large barrel sealed Phoenix up. But before Rain could breathe a sigh of relief, an arm punched a hole through the barrel. Fix it. Rain was also desperate. He had to dodge the enemy ship's cannon fire while also dealing with Phoenix. Rain knew very well that this would not last long. Phoenix was too strong unless Arson and the others could get the better of their opponents. And now he could not spare the energy to help them. At that moment, Rain heard a small voice say to him, Captain, let them all jump into the sea. Eh? Rain identified it was Fancy talking to him. Jump into the sea? Boom! Phoenix smashed two more big craters. He shouted violently inside. What the fuck, trying to trap me with this? Dream on! Fix it! Fix it! Right! Fancy's eyes stared dead at Phoenix. The captain couldn't last long. Fancy's gaze was determined. Also, aim your bow at the enemy ship. Fancy, what are you doing? Captain, I don't know if it's going to work. I haven't been able to master this power yet. But now I have to try it. Rain didn't know what Fancy was going to do. But Fancy said she was going to try. So at least it was a chance. And he couldn't give up if there was a chance. The ship was fighting fiercely until Rain's voice suddenly rang out. One bear, two bear, arson. All jump into the water. That's an order quick. The panther froze for a moment. And was wondering who was making that voice. 
Just at that moment, one bear, two bear, and Arson jumped into the sea in unison. Fancy, the ship's direction has been adjusted, Rain said loudly. Outside the door, Panther, Pig Emperor, and Sakura were looking into the captain's cabin, which seemed to be waiting for orders. Fancy gasped violently, and arranged her hands in a diamond shape with her four fingers. Her eyes were red, bless me. Mother, the phoenix sound, but there was silence all around, nothing happened. Moreover, Phoenix had broken in the barrel with fists before Rain fixed it. It's over. Fancy's desperate eyes had said it all, she failed, again. At that moment, her palm suddenly lit up with a white dot, followed by the white dots filling up rapidly the diamond-shaped area. Fancy looked at her hands in shock, she did it? Fancy, go for it. Avril clenched her teeth. Blood was already seeping out of the corners of her mouth. She understood when Fancy saw Avril. It was Avril who had strengthened her cellular activity and Avril was already overloading her spiritual power. Seeing that the enemy was about to rush over, Fancy's eyes widened in anger and bellowed, Fire! A white light, like a laser, burst out of the captain's cabin. The column of light multiplied in diameter as it rushed out of the cabin, passing through the hull and shooting towards the G-class main ship, the punishment. 75. The Prophecy Phoenix disappeared in the white light, the deck, the bow, the ramming horn, panther, Pig Emperor, and Sakura, instantly turned to powder. The center of the hull of the punishment was not far from direct blasted out of a large standard diamond-shaped hole. Holy shit! Rain's eyes widened. What kind of power was this? It simply overturned his three views. After a sharp phoenix sound, the whole world cleared up. The four mutants of the punishment bounty core were blasted to the point of no crumbs left. The punishment began to sink, but Rain was no better. With most of his hull gone, he was sinking fast too. Fancy and Avril went fainted after that, and Armin hurried to hold them both. How are Avril and Fancy? Armin hurriedly probed the two for breath, and then breathed a sigh of relief. Captain, they are both still alive. Rain breathed a long sigh of relief that they were still alive. After a while, Avril finally woke up, but Fancy was still in a coma. The good thing was that Avril had healing powers. After a little rest, Avril began to try to heal Fancy. Seeing Avril wake up, Rain was finally slightly relieved. Now he could only leave Fancy to Avril, while he had to solve the sinking ship problem as soon as possible. Captain, how is Fancy? One bear was anxious. Avril is taking care of her, so don't worry, everyone. Rain was nervous too, but at this time he had to steady the morale of the troops. Don't worry, Avril will do her best to save Fancy. At this time, we have to trust each other. Now the ship is going to sink. Fix the ship first. Arson, one bear, two bear. Quick, get the wood over here. The one bear and two bear looked at each other. Avril just woke up and was doing her best to save Fancy. What else could they say? They could only trust Avril at this time. If the ship sank, they were going to drown even if Fancy didn't die. The three quickly swam to the sinking punishment, disassembled the wood, and shipped it back to Rain. Rain hurriedly opened the system and quickly started the repair process. The wind and waves were strong. Now it was a race against time. Arson and the brothers quickly went back and forth to deliver the wood one at a time, while Terry and Armin desperately scooped water out of the wreck's storage compartment. With the help of his crew, Rain slowed his sinking question and slowly rebuilt the keel, hull, and deck. Ten minutes later, Rain finally got the damaged hull roughly repaired. They didn't have to worry about sinking for a while. Rain had Arson and the others push him near the wreck to speed up material acquisition. Early the next morning, after the red sun rose from the sea horizon, from Rain's captain's cabin, a faint voice came out. Sister Avril, is everyone okay? Fancy opened her eyes and the first words were this. One bear and two bear were thrilled with tears that Fancy has finally been saved. Avril was exhausted. Using skills continuously made her extremely depleted. When Fancy woke up, Avril smiled. Fancy, it's okay. Everyone is fine. And I'm going to take a nap first. Fancy looked at Avril strangely and was about to ask the others. As a result, the others also fell back to sleep one after another. In the captain's room, several people were lying on the disorder. This night, they were all exhausted. Fortunately, relying on a large number of resources from the punishment, their ship had been completely restored to its original appearance. Even rain reinforced the ramming horn and hull reinforcement all to level 4. There were still materials on the ship. Wood, canvas, guns, etc. Not too much, the wind and waves were too strong last night. Arson and the others were already done their best to salvage materials. When Fancy woke up, they couldn't stay up any longer. 
including White, all fallen asleep. Fancy stood up and looked at everyone nervously. Fancy it's okay. They're just tired. A tired voice sounded. Rain's spirit was highly tense from the successive battles. And with a night without sleep, he was also exhausted. Fancy brought a blanket and covered these people. She pushed the door open and was seeing the sun rising, closed the door behind her, and walked alone to the fence, leaning there looking at the calm sea. Last night it was still choppy, but today's sea was extraordinarily quiet, nothing like yesterday. Captain, are you still here? Fancy asked in a soft voice. I'm always here. Captain, I'm sorry, did my attack hurt you? It didn't. But I almost pissed myself because of you. Rain said honestly, what exactly is this ability you have? My ability comes from my family's heritage. I'm not sure exactly, Fancy said. Her melancholy look was not at all like a twelve-year-old should. I can't control this ability. That's why I watched my clan members being captured by them. Said two lines of tears slipped from the corners of Fancy's eyes. Crystal teardrops flew far away with the sea breeze. Even now, if it wasn't for Sister Avril, I still wouldn't be able to use this ability. Fancy, you did well this time. You protected the people you wanted to protect, and the ship. Rain's voice became low and soft all of a sudden. People have to have time to grow up. No one is born strong. I believe that one day you will revive your family. Fancy reluctantly smiled slightly. Really? Captain, if that day comes, will you help me? Me? With an attack of your intensity on second thought. It's best to stay away from me. Fancy was amused by Rain, this time with a less forced smile. Captain, didn't you say that all people need time to grow? I'm sure you'll keep growing too. Fancy gradually put away her smile. To be honest, although you're just a ship, I've never seen a captain as calm as you are. We defeated a far more powerful fleet with just one ship. Captain, I think you're superb. Rain laughed. Is it really a good idea for us to be flattering each other? Not flattering, Captain. You remind me of a prophecy that has been passed down in our Sea King tribe. Eh? What kind of prophecy is that? Rain asked curiously. One day, an incomparably huge supership will take us all and face an unparalleled crisis. Fancy replied. I didn't believe it before, but now. You believe it? Still. Fancy laughed, however. I think if the prophecy is true, then that super warship must be you. Rain froze for a moment. The word super warship made him think of his own system, the super battleship system. Except that such things as prophecy were too ethereal, and if Fancy's tribal prophecy was accurate. How come they hadn't predicted their own disaster? Of course, this word cannot be said. Captain, don't worry. I will keep getting stronger. This time we survived by a fluke. And in the future, we will face stronger opponents. I will work together with all the crew to protect our home. Rain watched the sea breeze lift the girl's long hair, vaguely saw fancy blue but incomparably perfect side face, slightly yellowish hair flying between the blue sky and sea. This image was just like a painting. Yes, we all have to become stronger, said Rain could not hold on any longer and fell into a deep sleep. 76. Made a killing. Rain didn't wake up until the next morning. As soon as he opened his eyes, he caught sight of Avril at the helm. Terry and Armin were adjusting sail, and Arson, one bear, and two bear got a lot more wood from somewhere placed neatly on the deck and secured with rope ties. Fancy was checking the reserve in the water purification equipment and pouring the water inside into the bucket. A lazy white leaned against the mast and yawned, while little booty stood at the top of the mast, looking away in solitude. Suddenly, Avril peeked down to take out a dozen money bags and was about to peer inside when she heard Rain burst into a coughing fit. Cough, cough. Avril felt a little uneasy. Oh, Captain, you are awake. Everyone comes here. Let's count the pearls. A group of hype people like a swarm rushed over. Count the pearls? That's interesting. Rain was also excited. Although Rain can check how many pearls he has from the system, he enjoyed it. They had sunk 14 ships, but almost all of the ship's material was used for restoration and reinforcement. After all, time was short. They couldn't bring too much material in order to increase the speed of the ship. It was only after defeating Phoenix that they went to several battle sites and salvaged some materials. Although there were a few materials, those captains and mutants had so many money bags. The more this stuff, the better, naturally. These four are the big ship captain's money bag. Fancy, go get something to fill it. Fancy brought the barrel lid over. Avril poured the four bags of pearls down. Clattered. A bunch of people gathered around a barrel lid and counted the pearls. These captains were quite rich. Most people have three or four hundred pearls on them. The least also had one hundred or so. For money bags a total of one thousand two hundred and eighteen pearls. Avril packed these pearls. 
These eleven bags belong to the mutant crew or small ship captain. Clattered, 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 another pile of pearls. These people were not as rich as the captain, but rich in number. There were also more than nine hundred pearls. Rain calculated, their savings before had been used to strengthen the ship, so now his total assets were two thousand one hundred and fifty-three pearls. Although the harvest was pleasing, but it seemed that there was still a lot of distance from the evolution to the next level. At this moment, one bear ran to the side of the ship and carried a small box back. Once he saw this box, Rain's eyes widened. This was surprisingly a gold chest. Although gold was not always valuable in this era, it was definitely rare good. Something certainly not bad that can be placed in the gold chest. Hey, it's not over yet. The finale is here. This is arson found in the wreckage of the punishment. It's also asked me and the two bear together to help get up due to being too heavy. I told you, how could a bounty group like them not have savings? Rain was so excited that he couldn't speak well. Roar roar, quickly, quickly open. With a snap, one bear broke open the box direct with his hands, and all people put their heads over to see. Once they saw what was inside, Avril and Armin can't help but cover their mouths full of shock. There were a lot of pearls in here. The quantity was no less than 10,000. Holy shit, Phoenix was so rich. Damn, I've never seen so much money in my life. Oh, we're rich. This is much more money than any bounty mission. The number of pearls filled Rain's vision. After the count, there were 10,034 pearls in the box. Rain's total assets direct soared to 12,187 pearls, only 1,813 pearls short of the 14,000 needed to upgrade. If he included some of the materials in the ship, it might not even be 1,000 pearls. Only 1,000 pearls short. Let's take some transport missions again. It won't take long before we can change ships again. At this very moment, Rain laughed. Friends, are you kidding me? Take missions? Do we still need to take missions? Everyone looked strangely at the screw cap on Avril's neck. Rain also had a little uneasy. Is everyone's spiritual support shifted to the screw cap? Captain, you still have money? That can't be right. Avril said strangely. All the accounts are recorded in mine, you can't have a nest egg. Nest egg? I don't need that. Rain sneered Arson, go to the stern propeller to check. Not long after, an excited Arson came back and hold a thick pearl necklace in her hand. That one pearl was three times the size of an ordinary pearl, and there were a total of 108 pearls in a string. This, ain't this the pearl necklace that Phoenix wore around his neck? Armin immediately recognized the necklace. Yes, Fancy killed Phoenix. But his string of pearls is fine and was knocked down into the sea. I caught it with the oar at the eleventh hour and flung it to the outer frame of the propeller. Rain said proudly. The crowd was shocked. In that situation, Rain can still notice this string of pearl necklaces. A miser is worthy of a miser. Although his life was almost gone, Rain still snatched down this string of pearl necklaces. Hey, how much can this string of pearls be sold? Rain asked. I see the pearls are big on it. At least two thousand pearls. Terry guessed, these big pearls cost several times more than ordinary pearls. Haha, <laughs> so we can just upgrade the ship. Captain, love you. Avril picked up the lug nut and kissed it fiercely. Forsyth Trading Market was a relatively large trading market nearby, twice the size of the Morgan and Sicily trading markets. The volume of transactions and the stock of goods here were far greater than in those markets. Rain and others drove to this place and docked at the corner. To Rain's surprise, he saw the familiar figure again. The mystery merchant Aoi. That was too weird. But now Rain was so hyped that he did not take it seriously. Avril and Arson went to sell the pearl necklace. Terry and the brothers went to buy materials. They made 5,000 units of wood into the simple rafts, each raft loaded with metal ingots, and tethered to the back of Rain. This big shopping trip almost startled the whole trading market. Didn't that necklace belong to Phoenix, the leader of the Punishment Bounty Corps? How come they have it? They said they took out the Punishment Bounty Group. But who believes it? Everyone can brag. I guess they made a killing. Holy shit. They bought more than 10,000 pearls of resources in one go. Too rich, right? Damn, I really want to rob them. You'd better not do that. They dare to show wealth here suggesting that they have something. Their boat you see? It is not the largest boat. But look at the horn and hull. They are reinforced. And did you see those two men? How strong they are. Must be mutant. You put it that way, it is. No wonder they look like have no fear. After a busy day, the general materials were ready. Under the watchful eyes of the people, Rain sashayed out dragging five rafts. Nowadays, in the no-man's land, those who can confront Rain were at least G-class warships. 
Rain no longer needs to put these small merchant ships in his eyes. Okay, let's go to the island to get some stones and build a new ship. 77. Galleon Light Gun Sailing Ship. Rain traveled to the two larger islands this time. 2,000 kilograms of stone was not a small amount. Apparently, it would be faster to collect from those two islands. The final materials were all collected within two days, and Rain's fifth evolution began. When the keel appeared, Rain could not help but take a breath. This keel was twice as long as the previous one. Oh, no wonder it takes so much wood. Immediately after that, there were hulls and decks. Twenty minutes later, a behemoth was floating beside Rain. Holy God, this is more than thirty meters. It's a G-class warship. Rain has never been so excited now. He never thought that only the fifth evolution, he has grown into a G-class battleship. This ship no longer had a U-shape. The bow was lowered almost as high as the hull. The hull was longer but the width was narrower than the Portuguese light gunship that making the overall hull more slender. In addition, the depth of the hull draft line was increased reducing the risk of overturning. The main mast was at least 30 meters long, with four masts in total, one on the bow, two on the hull deck, and one upstairs at the stern. On the two main masts of the hull, there were three sets of sails, with five triangular sails on the bow and a large triangular sail on the stern. This boat had already a galleon look. The height of the hull had increased at least a dozen meters this time, and Rain had seen what he most wanted to see, the gun, transferring the host consciousness and items. After the transfer, Rain couldn't wait to open the personal information panel. Host Rain, Vessel, Medium-Sized Multi-Masted Galleon Light Gun Sailing Ship, Cabin 7, Aft Cabin 1, Power Cabin 10, Crew Cabin 20, Fire Power Cabin 1, Large Storage Cabin. Crew size, 9, assignable positions, open for details. Ship speed, 16 knots maximum, open for details. Combat power, 2273.1, can be viewed in the crew information and weapon system. Load capacity, 3984.4 slash 60, 000 kg, open for details. Next level of evolution, direction optional, open for details. A few keywords that appeared in the basic information template made Rain's heart thump. The changes this time were so batted he didn't even know which one to look at first when he saw the data. The number of cabins has increased dramatically. The shipping speed had increased by a huge margin, and the load capacity had reached 60 tons, and the three most critical points. Combat power increased by over 2,000. What the hell is this? And the next level of evolution appeared in multiple directions. Rain hates the multiple choice questions. Well, anyway, let's look at them one by one. Open the weapon system. In the weapon system, one of the items attracted Rain's attention. Fragmentation Storm Cannon. Attack power. 200 number. 10. 1200 meters attack range. The best range is 300 to 800 meters. The shells have highly penetrating and cause splash damage when the shell fragments explode after hitting the target. Holy shit. Rain took a deep breath. Attack power 200. Storm Cannon. I like this name. Although this ship has no ramming horn, and no bottom wooden spikes, after the storm cannon was added to the weapon system, there is no need for these weapons. Although the number is a little less, this is definitely a big killer. Rain sensed a bit, and found 10 guns distributed in 10 fire compartments, 5 on each side. In addition to the storm cannon, there were 10 large crossbows that occupied another 10 fire compartments. In addition, the hull's data changed. The second level reinforced hull, defense power, 20. The strengthening effect of the previous hull disappeared due to building the new ship. But the base number of the second level reinforced hull was raised and doubled from the original 10. The base has been raised, so if I reinforce it later, will the reinforcement effect be raised as well? Rain thought about it and strengthened the hull directly. This time, the reinforcement required more than twice as much material as before. After all, the hull became larger and the material consumption was also more. After the reinforcement, the new data came out. Level 2 Reinforced Hull, Reinforcement 1, Defense, 2030. The defense power is increased by 30. Good. And next, Harpoon or something later, let's see the others first. The power system did not change much. The main power equipment was still the sails plus the oars at the bottom of the ship. The increase in the number of sails gives rise to a further increase in boat speed. Finally, Rain checked the direction of evolution. The next level of evolution direction appeared to branch out. But unfortunately, the system did not show the information for these two directions, only giving the required materials. 
Rain guessed that no matter which direction of evolution was chosen, the pearls needed for the next level were scary enough. Regardless of what the next level is, for now, what Rain could do was strengthen himself. It's better to add a ramming horn, at least more means of combat. After some contemplation, Rain decided. As a result, the metal needed for the ramming horn reached 1000 kilograms. Rain now had only 300 to 400 kilograms of metal. It seemed impossible to do. Damn, the ship is bigger, so it needs much more material than before. Forget it, then equip the bottom harpoon first. After the upgrade, Rain could equip the number of harpoons to reach 50. Rain covered the bottom of the ship with harpoons. After several battles, Rain found that the harpoons were important. Now he only relied on them to defend against undersea attacks. The remaining metals were not much. Rain used them to reinforce the hull. Although the reinforcement level did not increase, the defense power was increased by 5 points. Standing on this big ship, the crew was excited. One after another like country folk going into a big city. Looking around carefully. Holy God, there are so many cabins now. I don't even know which one I'm going to live in. So spacious. What a big ship. You guys come to the aft floor and take a look. The view here is great. Captain, this, this is artillery? Brothers, we have artillery. Wowza, what kind of shell is this? So big. Look at the barrel of the cannon. The range is at least 700 meters. Rain snorted, 700 meters? Is it possible for a cannon that can only hit 700 meters to appear on my ship? This cannon of mine can shoot 1,200 meters at most. And this cannonball, don't play blindly. Once it explodes, it will cause a fragment attack. A bunch of people were stunned and dumbfounded. Captain, said one bear with a widened mouth, stammering, then if we make the distance right and the landing point precise, won't one shell be able to blow up a ship? Well, it's just okay. Rain looked like a million pearls. 78. The powerful effect of the support. The Carrick's sailboat was recycled by the system, mercilessly. Even the dregs were not left. Rain had wanted to take a discussion with system. At least make a fleet or something. But no response. Well, forget it. The current system is just the program. Rain was no longer the little raft that would sink when the wind and waves hit. The crew seemed to be no less excited than Rain. Rain had always caught sight of Fancy, and White running around the boat like crazy. And now that the place was bigger, the two guys were happier. This time they defeated the punishment bounty group and upgraded the ship. Rain decided to let everyone rest for a while longer. So they rest for half a month on the two islands. Usually, Terry, one bear, two bear, the three men would have always drilled to the firepower bay to study those firepower systems. Men always have a kind of unspeakable affection for weapons. Arson, in addition to training, sometimes would pull the one bear and two bear arm wrestling. Armin liked to sit on the deck of the high stern building, watching the others play there while reading her books. The various logbooks, novels, sagas, and so on. Rain does not know how many times she read. And Rain thought about going to the trading market to buy this girl a few new books. Although Armin cannot fight, her knowledge is also a sign of combat power. Knowledge is power. Rain has not forgotten this saying. As for the little booty, now this one was standing higher than before. It has to stand at the top of the main mast, looking away in solitude. Avril has been practicing diligently. Her skills are special that need to be used constantly to improve proficiency before upgrading. Just she had to rest for a while after each use of skills. It seemed to be due to excessive consumption. A leisurely and relaxed life always goes by fast. Half a month later, the crowd also concentrated again on the business and gathered on the aft deck to discuss their plans. If they take on transportation tasks, they will earn more than before, certainly. After all, their loading capacity has reached 60 tons. Except that small trading markets like Morgan Trading Market often do not have such a large transport task. They also can't cover all the tasks. I'm not interested in transportation missions anymore. But the other special missions must depend on luck. Rain said thoughtfully, Does anyone have any other suggestions? Avril said, Captain, in the no man's land, only the bounty mission is suitable for us now. Otherwise, if we want to make more money, we have to enter the human class waters. Wabear also said, Captain, with our current armed strength, although we already have the strength to wander in the human class waters. If we encounter some fleets or sea monsters, it is better to avoid them. Tubear continued after his brother's words, Our storm cannon is indeed fierce, but the number is still a little less. If we encounter twenty enemy ships rushing over at the same time, we can't repel them all easily, and then the situation may be more dangerous. Rain pondered for a moment and then spoke, 
Yeah, indeed the number of weapons is still less. The most important reason why we were able to defeat the Punishment Bounty Corps is that their warships are scattered. If they all rush over at the same time, we can't beat them. In addition, I think Arson, One Bear, Two Bear, Avril, you guys still need to improve the strength. If it wasn't for Fancy, the final miserable defeat is us. The strength of a fleet depends on both the ship and the crew. Now Rain only upgraded the ship's strength, but the crew's strength was not much. Finally Rain said, is there any other way to improve your strength? Fancy suddenly spoke up, Captain I know. Our family trained a lot of mutants. I had to learn these things since I was a child. Oh? Fancy, then you tell us. There are three main ways to improve the strength of the mutant. One is to level up, which requires the consumption of a large amount of food. This food is not just eaten, but requires a scientific nutrition ration. Second, skills. Skills must be in line with the type of mutation, such as biological mutant fighting skills. If you let them learn the elemental control, obviously useless. Vice versa. And different kinds of mutants, such as land mutants and sea mutants. Their skills cannot be common. Skill leveling can only be increased by proficiency. Third is the fate equipment. The equipment of mutants is different from ordinary people. They are likely to undergo morphological changes after transformation, and many mutants are unable to use conventional human weapons. They have their fate weapons, such as Brother One Bear and Brother Two Bear. Their fate weapons are sharp claws and King Kong breastplate, but have been seized by the Black Hell merchants. Fancy said in great detail. Rain understood as soon as he heard it. And the data Rain had also matched Fancy's statement. Avril, Terry, and even one bear and two bear also tried to practice Arson's fighting skills that Chopper offered, but they failed. And whether it is Arson or Avril, their skills are through practice to enhance their skill level. As for the weapons, the system did not increase their combat power for them when one bear and two bear took the large arrows, indicating that the system does not recognize this way of strength enhancement. That said, why the system has not been prompted on how to make the equipment, it's not in the craft items either. By the way, Fancy, so have you ever seen a pure support mutant like Avril? Rain asked. This I have only seen in books because this world follows the principle of survival of the fittest. So if someone has no offensive power at all, then it is difficult to survive in this world, no matter the original propagation mother or genetic mother. Most of this ability only appeared in the early Azure era, now almost invisible. Fancy saw that Avril looked a little lost, and she immediately said, Sister Avril, your ability is very strong. Avril bowed her head, Fancy, thank you for your comfort. But you also said that it is because it is too weak that this ability is very rare. No, Sister Avril, I'm not consoling you, it's true. Fancy said excitedly, in the early days of the Azure era when most creatures were still in the stage of killing each other, no attack ability means no competitiveness. And people's abilities were not strong enough at that time, so the support could not improve much strength. But now it's different. After the mutation deepened, the strength of the mutants and sea monsters increased substantially. The support mutants finally can show their power. Avril sister, your ability can promote and slow down 20% of the cellular capacity. If it was in the past, enhancing or reducing the battle power is very limited. Even if you can double the battle power, you cannot change the battle. But if you put it in the present, think about it. If Phoenix doubled his strength, he can even dodge my Phoenix sound. This is the gap. The crowd thought carefully and looked at Avril with wide eyes. This assumption is too amazing. If Phoenix dodged the Phoenix sound, then the dead person is them. So, this is the powerful effect of the support. 79. Sign up for the bounty group. Rain has been delighted secretly at this time. It seemed that he had good luck. Avril will grow up a support that can save the day. Next. Rain combed through Fancy's information. The reasonable meal. This is easy, just spend a few pearls. And skills. Armin and Avril had said that the human class C auction house sold them. In the final analysis, it's all about money. As for the third point, equipment. Now Rain did not know how to get. The easiest thing was to level them up. I thought about it. Now Arson is at the first stage in level 6. One bear and two bear are at the first stage in level 7. Next, we should make some money and upgrade you guys to the second stage. As for the means to make money. Only one way we can earn a fortune. Bounty missions. We'll go to the Sicily trading market and ask Hades for a bounty mission. Eh? Captain, how do you know my rank? Arson asked strangely. Yes, Captain, we have not set our rank. How do you know? One bear and two bear also looked curious. Captain, what about me? What level am I? 
captain, and me. Fancy also looked at Rain eagerly. Woof woof. White barked from the sidelines, trying to get Rain's attention. Cough. I am the captain. With my discerning eyes, can I not see your ranks? Do I need you guys to tell? Avril, you are level two. Fancy you, ahem, you still have work to do. Rain said stiffly. He can't check Fancy's information. White, don't scream. Just you the most unproductive. The deceiving newbie pack. And that damn AI did even not say how White is going to upgrade before disappearing. Okay, don't ask. Let's go. Seven days later, the Sicily trading market. Hades was standing on the deck smoking a cigarette and looking out over the sea. It's spring again. After winter, I guess pirate groups cannot have a single pearl left on. And now for the transport peak in time. Many pirate groups must not sit down. Baika, are there any new bounty missions recently? Captain, a new batch of bounty missions just came in. Supplies are getting tighter and tighter now, and there are more and more pirate groups. The one who answered Hades was one of Shob's old men, and signed Baika. What about the bounty corps? Have these bounty missions been sent to them? I don't want the area I manage always be haunted by pirates. I just want to muddle along at a leisurely pace. Hades spit out a smoke ring. Looking at the smoke ring, he could not help but think of his friend and rival. Showed that guy borrowed me 500 pearls and ran off to the beast class waters. I don't know if I can get this money back. Captain Hades, Lieutenant Shob mortgaged me to you, said Beak with eyes red. Why he is the victim in the implicit deal between these two big bosses. Ha ha ha, Baika, don't be aggrieved. Shob considered you have a family. He doesn't want you to risk with him. But he took Rachel away, Baika said with tears in his eyes, his heart full of indignation. Rachel, Hades replied, his goal is the admiral. He is an ambitious guy. Baika, you are different. You do not like to fight and kill. You'd better help me well here. Here is a bit idle but safe. At this moment, a navy ran to Hades and reported, Lieutenant Hades, Captain Avril, and the others are here. Oh? Finally showed up? What are they doing here? T they said they want to register for the Bounty Corps. Sign up for the Bounty Corps? Pft Hades laughed, yeah, they are indeed powerful. But just that small ship registers a bounty group? Is this too, too exaggerated? How do they fight when encounter pirate groups? Go ramming? Lieutenant Hades, they seem to have changed a ship. The soldier interrupted the boss with some embarrassment. A new ship? And how about you go to sea? Avril and others were sitting in some cabin inside the charge at this time. They had come to collect the bounty mission, but they were not given. The staff said that only Bounty Corps could receive the bounty missions. So they came to register the bounty group. Not long after, Hades walked into the cabin. Avril, how are you guys? Hades came up and offered to shake hands. Thinking of Shob saying that this guy was rather horny, Avril chose to bow slightly. Hello, Lieutenant Hades. Why are you here in person? The one bear shook Hades' hand straightly. Hades froze, wondering what the hell these guys were up to. That was not the point. Hades sat down, don't be polite, have a seat. Gee, actually, well, I do appreciate you guys very much. By the way, Avril, is this your new crew member? Yeah, Lieutenant Hades, we're here to sign up for the Bounty Corp. Avril and the others all sat down. Bounty Corp, ah, well, Avril, although I appreciate you guys, there is a threshold for registering a Bounty Corp. At least you need five ships, and the main ship is a 30-meter sub-G class gunship. Avril frowned, but we only have one ship. That's right, Avril. Actually, if you're willing to join my... Avril interrupted Hades, Lieutenant Hades, so what if we have the strength to defeat a fleet? Hades frowned. He had no chance to say his recruitment plan. Well, forget it. It is better to talk to them properly, and let them perish the thought. If you really have the strength, no problem. After all, the number of ships is only one of the parameters, not a necessary condition. What we require is still combat power. Hades continued only, are you sure you have the strength to defeat a fleet? You know, what I say defeat, I mean defeat head-on, not using any circuitous tactics. If you can defeat five ships head-on, I will allow you to form a bounty corp. What kind of five ships? Avril asked. Minimum configuration. Three Carthaginian warships, not less than 15 meters in length. A Greek three-row oars warship, not less than 20 meters. And a Portuguese light gunship equipped with a minimum of 10 guns, not less than 30 meters. After saying that, Hades smiled and looked at these people. In the beginning, Avril did sink nine ships. But the ships were sunk one by one and these guys used the complex environment at the time. And now the five ships he listed can already form a relatively substantial combined combat power. With melee, jamming, and long range, just on Avril them a ship 
it is impossible to win. Who knows Avril took a long breath of relief, and several other crew members also smiled. Okay okay, it's not demanding. Yeah we just happen to have 10 guns, just right to meet. Hades was astonished. Why did these people look so relaxed? They can meet this condition? Impossible. 80. 1 vs 5. Lieutenant Hades if it's such a fleet as you say, we can do it. Avril turned her head and said to Hades. Hades frowned well. Avril, although I do think highly of you, now it is a business matter. It would be meaningless if you talked big. Avril thought about it and said actually, Lieutenant Hades, we just wiped out a bounty group. Hades didn't think so, is it a registered bounty group? Yes. You can defeat a registered bounty corp just with your little shit? Fine, let's say I believe you. Then tell me which bounty group it is, and I'll ask someone to check it out. Hades was already a little impatient. He leaned back in his chair and took a sip of water from his teacup. The Punishment Bounty Corporation. With a poof, the tea spurted out of Hades' nostrils. The Punishment Bounty Corp. This bounty group does not need to be checked. This was a sub G bounty group with only one more 500 pearl task needed to be completed to upgrade to the G rank. No one would doubt that they have the strength of a real G class bounty group. Lieutenant Hades, you know we had a run in with the Punishment Bounty Corps during the fishing tournament. Once spring started they had been coming after us but were annihilated by us. Avril said quietly. The punishment bounty group was annihilated by you? Hades looked at Avril in shock. Some time ago, someone saw Phoenix's big thick pearl necklace. Phoenix regards it as a treasure that he even did not take it off in the shower, unless he was dead. Moreover, so much time has passed, and the punishment bounty group had not come to collect the bounty task. Hades felt that this bounty group may have been gone. Yeah, they'd been trying to take us out for a long time. But we have started first. Avril said faintly. It was incredible. One bear saw that Hades still looked half-hearted, thus he said, Lieutenant Hades if you still do not believe. It is very simple. Just find some ships to try us out. Hey, one bear. Avril stopped the big bear in a hurry. What if we damage the navy ship? Hades heard, what the fuck, just you can break my ship? Captain Avril, I do think the crew's suggestion is good. How about this? Let's try it out. No, Lieutenant Hades. We would have to pay for it if it were to break. We just changed our ship and don't have much money. You don't have to pay for it. We just captured a few Carrick warships a few days ago. I'll arrange five of them to try out your firepower. Seeming that there was no other way out now. Avril agreed. All right then. The people were out of the cabin, and Hades let his men arrange this matter at once. Not long after, Avril and the others came in a new boat. Hades was stunned when he saw the new boat. They did get a new ship. This ship is almost twice as long as their original ship, and it has reached the level of the sub-G class main ship. However, their gun doors were still too few, only 20. In a naval battle, such a little firepower was not enough, obviously. Hades still had full confidence in his judgment. The five Carrick warships were moored 1,000 meters from rain and spread out with rain as the center. When the test began, they would close in on the rain and sail around it. There were no sailors on board and they would not fire. But there was someone on the bow controlling the direction of the ship. According to Hades, if more than three of the five ships could sail around their ship for two laps, Avril would fail. On the contrary, if Avril and the others could beat three ships at least dead in the water, then they would be considered to have passed. This requirement was not too high. In a real battle, if they let three enemy ships have the ability to get close enough to sail around them for two laps, then Avril and the others could not fight against the minimum configuration fleet yet. The Sicily trading market was in an uproar. After all, this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. People dropped what they were doing, stood on the wooden bridge, and stuck their necks out to look. Do you understand the rules of Hades? All it takes is three boats to circle them twice and they lose. I don't think they get the win. Hey, do they plan to register a bounty group with one ship? This is too naive. In naval battles, a single ship will be played to death. Not to mention that their ship is not as strong as the main naval ship. That captain seems to be the champion of the fishing competition. So what? War is not fishing. Those Carrick warships are quite fast and flexible. They would make a circle in a few minutes. It's almost impossible to sink three of them in such a short time. Hades stood on the deck of the charge, looking at the sea ahead. Hey, I was hoping to recruit them, but I didn't expect that they were all guys who like to brag. Looks like I need to reevaluate them. Even we don't dare to guarantee that we can sink three enemy ships with just the main ship. But they said they are going to do just with these few guns. It's simply idiotic nonsense. Hey, Baika, what do you think? 
Vika stood aside, thought about it, and said, impossible to accomplish in theory. But they all seem to be not people who follow common sense. I have seen them fly up with my own eyes. Humph. Hades snorted. That was a coincidence. Lady Luck can't always be on their side. A naval flagman on the shore raised the high blue air when he saw that both sides were ready. Everyone began to get nervous. It was about to start. With a crash, the flagman waved the flag down. And at the same time, the five Carrick sailing ships began to move. They were coming fast toward rain. The smaller the radius, the smaller the perimeter. If they could approach the opponent 500 or 600 meters, dodge the cannonballs with their flexibility, and sail around rain, then the race would be over in a few minutes. On Rain's ship, the crowd was staring closely at the enemy ship. Captain okay? Rain sneered. When did your captain ever fail? Hold on first. Let's just wait and let them get closer. When the enemy ship was 800 meters away from Rain, people saw 10 gun doors open. Five of them extended black, thick, and long gun barrels. Eh? What? They only have five guns? I'm so disappointed. I thought they could take out at least one or two ships. Just five guns and they dare to register a bounty group? Do they want me to laugh my head off? Hades smiled in triumph and glanced at Baika, which means, look, this is the level of these people. However, at that moment, there was a sudden loud bang. That's right, just one. Because the five guns were firing at the same time. So it sounded like there was only one cannon shot. After that, those five Carrick warships were hit in the middle part of the ship at the same time. For a while, wood ships were flying. 81. A pretty cool bounty group name, maybe. Snapped. Hades's cigarette fell to the ground. A jaw-dropping Hades stood there. Bing bang bang. On the wooden bridge, many pots and pans in people's hands all dropped to the ground. A blazing fire was lit up on the sea. All five ships were sinking. My goodness. What happened? Just with one ship instant kill five ships? I, I can't believe my eyes. What kind of artillery are they using? It's too strong. And who fired the gun? Not even the helmsman on board was injured. Too accurate. Horrible. Too horrible. In the shocked eyes of everyone, Avril came towards the shore and docked at the harbor. Avril, one bear, and Arson jumped down from the deck, and the people around them were so frightened that they ducked aside in a hurry and made a way for them. When they reached Hades, Hades' expression had not yet recovered. Lieutenant Hades, can we register the bounty group now? Why yes. Hades stumbled a bit with his words, I will accompany you. Sitting across from Avril again, Hades' attitude was unlike any other before. Well ahem, what is the name of your cannon? Not, what is the name of your bounty group? Hades said the question he most wanted to know unconsciously. Dad bounty group. Avril said the name Rain has long thought. Dead? You mean death? The staff asked. DD dad? Dad bounty group. Avril repeated. The pen in the hand dropped to the floor. Avril was also helpless. She also asked Rain why he made such a striking name. Hey don't you think the name pretty cool? Imagine that. When we launch a charge, we would shout Dad is coming. Rain replied. Fine, you are the captain. So that is it. Dad Bounty Group. This name is very novel. Then your main ship is also called the Dad? Black lines covered Hades' forehead. What the hell the fucking name? No, it is Super Battleship. Avril replied calmly. Good. Congratulations. You registered a bounty group. You will move up in the world as you complete the bounty mission to get more and more points. Hades stood up. He wanted to slip away at once. If people knew that this bounty group was registered with him, he would be ridiculed. Thank you, Lieutenant Hades, Avril said happily. You're welcome. It's my job. Hades forced a smile. I suggest you design your own banner. And later you will be eligible to take on the bounty missions we issue. By the way, I would like to remind you that each bounty mission has different requirements. So you should look carefully. Good, thank you for the reminder. By the time Avril and the others returned to the ship, they had an extra stack of wanted in their hands. The next day, Rain asked Fancy to buy a large quantity of food according to professional nutritional ratios as well as some metal ingots to stock up in the storage compartment, and asked Armin to design a flag to serve as the symbol of the Dad Bounty Group. As the flag of the Bounty Group are following the uniform setting that the main part of the pattern is a pearl clam containing a pearl. So Rain's flag was also of this design. This is an open pearl clam instead of a pearl in the middle but a rough drawing of a people's back. The black background pattern is circular, and there are eye-catching words at the top, Dad Bounty Group. It moved against the wind when the flag was inserted high on the main mast. Quite a bit of momentum. After everything was ready, 
The crowd gathered in the captain's room and began to sift through these bounty wanted orders. Sub-G8 Pirate Group, the Iron Bull Pirates, 800 Pearls Bounty. They have a Sub-G class warship and seven frigate ships. Avro read out according to the wanted. This one, reserved for now. Let's see the next one, Rain said. A G2 class pirate group, the Blue Whale Pirates, with a bounty of 2,400 pearls. They have a G class main ship, a sub G class battleship, and 23 frigates. No, we can't beat it. Next one, sub G6 pirate group, the Iron Brothers Pirates, 600 pearls bounty. They have a sub G class main ship and 6 frigates. Leave this one. G rank C monster, Silver Shark King, 3,700 pearls bounty. Forget the sea monster for now. It's too hard to find. After some sifting, they set their sights on the 24 sub-G pirate groups in the nearby waters. These sub-G class pirate groups that most only a sub-G class main ship with no more than 10 frigates activities in the waters around the Sicily trading market. A day later, the super battleship set sail. Rain and the crew set off. A week later, 600 nautical miles from the Sicily market. Seven or eight ships followed a 30-meter Portuguese light gunboat on the surface. On the main ship, at the lookout on the mast, a seaman shouted Captain Smith, there's a ship ahead. A middle-aged man narrowed his eyes and raised his monocular. In the lens, there was a large ship heading their way indeed. Yo? Looks like someone got lost. Hold on their flag, a bounty group. Smith looked around again. There were no other ships around. What the hell? Fake? Not even a single frigate and still dare to say they are a bounty group. Let me see what they are. Dad? Dad Bounty Group? What the hell is this? Smith put down the binoculars with a shocked face and called for his men at once. Bucktooth, ever heard of the Dad Bounty Group? Behind him, a man with a mouth full of black buck teeth frowned. Captain, what? Dad? Dead? Which dead? The Bucktooth did not understand whether the captain had a problem pronouncing or he had misheard it. Or he had misunderstood it. How many other fucking dads do you have? The dad who fucked your mother and gave birth to you. Bucktooth finally understood, oh captain, I've never heard of the dad bounty group. Smith snorted, it seems to be a fake. Brothers, there is business. That ship is not small. I guess there is a lot of good stuff. Oh yes, I think I also saw a woman on board. Several ships were excited all of a sudden. These crew members who hadn't seen a woman in a long time were whistling and coaxing. Smith smiled, brothers, charge. Kill those men. The eight or nine boats rushed at the lone vessel at once and encircled it. 1500 meters, 1000 meters, 800 meters. The crew had seen that there was not only a woman on board but several women, and each one was beautiful. Oh oh, beauty, daddy is coming. At that moment, ten gun doors opened without hurrying in the ship's waist. The black, large, and long barrels extended slowly from the gun doors. On board, Avril smiled faintly at the surrounding ships. You guys seem to be mistaken, we are the dad. 82. Money grow on trees. Boom 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 boom. A series of gunfire before the pirate group could react. This gun door of the fake bounty group shot a series of fires. Followed by the surrounding pirate ships that were almost blown to pieces all of a sudden. The still excited pirates just now cried out and screamed suddenly. Damn. What kind of weapon is this? Why is their firepower so far and fierce? Holy shit. The ship is going to sink. Run away. Quick. My leg, my leg, help me. Usually, after the seamen jumped overboard, they could run to their fellow ships. But when the pirates in the sea emerged from the water, he found all the other ships were in a half-sunken state except for the main ship. A round of attacks to sink all the frigate ships. It was difficult to describe the shock in the hearts of this group of pirates. At this moment, the dad bounty group ship turned the rudder, with the side facing their main ship. With three gunshots, the Eliza hull was blasted out of a large hole. Whoosh 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 followed a series of thick arrows kept piercing the devastated hull. The guns equipped with the Eliza fired a few shots. But the shells just landed impotently on the sea around the enemy ship due to distance and aiming problems. Smith stood on the bow of the ship and shouted, Underwater! Everyone, go underwater and overturn this ship or we all die. A large number of crew members jumped into the sea in a hurry. Arson also grabbed a lance and leaped into the sea when she saw this scene. At the bottom of the sea, Arson could see a large number of pirates coming in all directions. Instead of taking the initiative to attack, she just bided the time and place. At this moment, dozens of steel harpoons shot out from the bottom of the ship. Poof poof. A series of muffled sounds. Arson did not know how many people were killed. 
Arson saw a few missed fish and swam over to solve them. Smith stared at the bottom of the sea nervously. Now his only hope was to get the win on the undersea battlefield. However, after not much time, the blood stained the sea red followed by several bodies floating up. Damn it Smith got impotent rage. Unexpectedly, their undersea defense is so solid. His only hope fell flat. Fifteen minutes later, Smith was grabbed by Arson from the bottom of the sea. This guy is a land-type mutant whose power does not hold a candle to Arson in the sea. Of course, One Bear to Bear also was waiting for him on the deck. One Bear picked up Smith, cross-referenced the wanted, confirmed that it was the person, then stabbed him through the thigh. Smith screamed miserably, Ah, what are you doing? I've surrendered. You are mistreating your captives. To Bear came over and snorted, Do you pirates ever treat your captives well? You've killed and burned a lot, and you expect us to be kind to you? But you can also rest assured that we will not kill you. A live pirate leaders can receive an additional 20% of the bounty. Your life is worth 120 pearls. The navy will dispose of you. Then Two Bear tied Smith up in chains and hung him upside down from the mast crossbar. This guy is a mutant, after all. All these measures were designed to prevent him from escaping. After sinking all the ships and capturing the pirate leader, it was time to salvage materials and pearls. Because the storm cannon was so powerful that almost destroyed the whole ship so they didn't salvage much wood. The most important thing was still to obtain some artillery parts. They only fished up 7 or 8 artillery parts due to the metal sank too fast. It was about 1200 kilograms. And the quality of these guns was relatively poor, not as good as the punishment bounty group's guns. Not much use for rain right now. But what rain wanted was not artillery. What he wanted were metal ingots. The metal was worth 1,200 pearls. In addition, there were canvas, ropes, some miscellaneous household items, basic materials as well as a gold chest. As soon as they saw this gold chest, the crowd pulled their self together and gathered in unison in front of the chest. Pirates and bounty groups seemed to like to use the gold chest to pack stuff. I wonder how many pearls there are in this. Avril's fist pumped. This chest seems to be lighter. Much lighter than the punishment bounty group. Arson was disappointed slightly. Let me open it. Tuber grasped the chest and broke it with force. The chest was opened. Well, that's all the pearls? Avril was disappointed. Hey, Smith. Just these few pearls. Why are you dare to say you are pirates? Smith wanted to cry. This group of people looked down their noses at his money. They are simply more than like pirates. After an inventory, the total assets of the Black Rock pirates were only 419 pearls. Armin deduced that these people splash out on previous savings in the winter. Generally, the pirates do not hold a candle to the bounty group's rich, and a sub-G6 level pirate cannot be compared with Phoenix. Finally, the crowd thought about it. Anyway, consider the more than 400 pearls as an additional harvest, plus 600 bounties for destroying the pirates, and 120 pearl bonus for the captain captured alive, and materials. They have earned more than 2,000 pearls this trip. Two heads emerged from the water until the dad bounty group left. These two had a face of horror. Holy shit. This dad bounty group is horrible. Fortunately we hid. Otherwise, we would have been captured too. For sure, they won't even spare the rags on the ship. It's just like bandits. And they would get an extra 10% bounty for capturing us both alive. We'd better get going. From now on, we must hide far away when we catch sight of this bounty group. After saying that, the two run away in a hurry. Rain took a pile of cargo and returned to the market without incident. They got a total of 720 pearls bounty after handing the frightened smith to the navy. Generally, if you want to collect the full bounty, either sink the pirate's main ship or kill the leader. And there is an additional bounty for capturing the chief or the main mutant alive. The extra bounty does not count towards the bounty core points. So their bounty core points were still 600. As for the pearls and the materials they got also do not need to surrender. During this trip they harvested more than 1000 pearls as well as more than 100 wood, 1,200 kilograms of metal ingots, 230 kilograms of the canvas, plus some household goods. Rain has been quite satisfied. It is indeed a gravy train. No wonder most fleets are registered bounty groups. Avril came to energy at once when she heard this. Captain, how about going on after we have a replenish? Yes, Captain, the money simply grows on trees. Rain thought about it. Avril, you guys go replenish the wood. No need to replenish the metal. We have it in reserve now. Armin, screen the next target. 83. The weapon system for crew. Most of the bounty group after completing the mission make a pig of themselves. But Avril and the others do not have this habit. 
They set sail soon after purchasing some necessary supplies. Watching from afar Avril set off again. Hades took a sip of his cigarette. How do I feel these guys are going to rob others? However, what shocked Hades was just the beginning. Half a month later, the Dad Bounty Corps defeated the Vulture Pirates and caught the leader and two mutant crew, which made them gain 500 points and 700 pearls. 26 days later, Dad Bounty Corps defeated the Black Hole Pirates, gaining 400 points and 480 pearls. A month and a half later, the Dad Bounty Corps defeated the Boning Pirates, earning 700 points and 910 pearls. In just six months, Dad Bounty Group defeated a total of 17 pirate groups, gaining 8,500 points, a total of 11,000 pearls. For a while, the Sicily trading market around has not seen the pirate group. Those pirates turn pale at the mention of the Dad Bounty Group. Gradually, in the pirate circle, people began to use another title to call the Dad Bounty Group, mainly because Rain's name is too weird. Dad and Dead had almost the same sound, so people began to call this bounty group Death Bounty Group. No ship can escape as long as it is targeted, as if encountering death. From the sixth month, Rain found them hard to find the pirate group. Rain wondered where these guys have gone to hide. Hey, the ATM was gone. Rain and the crew drive in the sea aimlessly. They have entered the sea around the Kava trading market for several days but still have not encountered the pirate group. Could it be that the pirates active in this area have moved? Forget it. Rain asked Avril to take stock of the recent harvest. Today, they have several gold chests sitting in the captain's cabin. Captain, during this time, we have gained 11,000 pearls and recovered 28,122 pearls from these pirate ships. After some expenses, now we have 39,021 pearls. Oh yes, I didn't count the value of those materials, Avril added. It's okay. I counted it, Rain said. It takes 150,000 pearls to move up to the next level. But we collected a lot of canvas and metal in the previous battles. Let me see. We still need 90,000 pearls, Rain made a rough estimate. I do not want to encounter the G-Class pirate group for the time being. Next, we go to a farther sea and look for more sub G-class pirate groups. All people had no opinion. Although still short of three-fifths of the pearl, they can make light work of dealing with sub G-class pirate groups. The risk is low and almost no consumption. It is just a matter of spending more time. Rain opened the crew information menu while everyone changed course. These days, everyone has been eating nutritious meals, plus the constant training and fighting, their level has been raised. Arson reached the first stage in level 8. One bear and two bear reached the first stage level 9. Avril reached the first stage in level 3. And fancy, Rain still cannot check her information. White still was a common dog with a combat power of 1. But those weren't the things Rain wants to know. Why is there no equipment system for the crew? Rain fell into contemplation. Although he was a newcomer to Azure Era, he had played a lot of games. Rain checked the manufacturable items again. There was no such item as crew weapons among the more than 50 items. God damn it. Trash system. While he was complaining there, Rain thought of something all of a sudden. There was one thing that Rain hadn't checked until now. The job assignment. Thinking of this, Rain tried to open Arson's job assignment. Currently Arson's position choices were captain, combat crew, and general crew. Huh. What is this? Rain then opened the combat crew option. There are 10 classes in the combat crew one star per class. And in Arson's panel, only the one star combat crew was optional. Then assign Arson as a one star combat crew member. After exiting the position option, Arson's position has changed, and her position now reads one star combat crew. At the same time, Arson's information list also changed. Several new data items were added. Name, Arson. Position, one star combat crew member, corporal. Skill, skill book has been added to the manufacturable list. Merit, 0 out of 100. Mutation stage, first stage slash. Open for details. Mutation level, 8 out of 10. Open for details. Transformation ability. Underwater transformation, currently 80%. After the transformation, the target's power is increased by 80% underwater, and is reduced by 80% on land. Weapons. Crew weapon system has been added to the list of manufacturable items. Combat power, 16, real time. Rain's eyes widened. The point surprisingly was in the position that he had overlooked. Not only does it have weapons, but it also has skills. He couldn't wait to open the crafting list. In the craftable list, there was a new branch called crew items. Holy shit, I finally found it. 
Rain started to check the crew items in a hurry. Items arson. Reinforced sharkskin diving suit. 20 slash 0 kg sharkskin. 20 slash 170 kg rubber. Effect. Increased 20% movement speed underwater with certain defensive capabilities. Reinforced sharkskin diving suit combat power. 20. Fly claw. 16 slash 19343 kg metal ingots. Both hands can be equipped. Consisting of four reinforced metal claw spikes, can be used in melee combat, and also can press the organ to launch. Fly claw combat power, 20. One star combat crew skill book, common to underwater mutant vortex stranding, level 1 by quickly rotating with fins to form a small vortex to disrupt the enemy's actions, and then use the fly claws to deal massive damage to the enemy. Oh, Rain was shocked. I can't believe I missed it before. This crew item system is too important to Rain. Not only can he improve the strength of the crew, but most importantly, with this system, the crew recruited in the future will not even need his supervision, and they will go to great lengths to improve their merits. 84. G5 Class. Rain couldn't wait to assign positions to his crew. One bear and two bear, both one-star combat crews had their own exclusive item system as well after being assigned positions. Both brothers have almost the same items but were different from arson. Items, one bear. Fly claws. 16 slash 19343 kg metal ingots. Both hands can be equipped, consisting of four reinforced metal claw spikes, can be used in melee combat, and also can press the organ to launch. Fly claw combat power, 20. Meteor hammer, 50 slash 19343 kg metal ingots. Meteor hammer combat power, 40. Note, only choose one from the two weapons. One star combat crew skill book, common to land type mutant power burst. Level 1 stimulates physical potential, boosts basic attributes by 10%. Oh yeah, Rain was so excited. This was another chance to increase combat power. By the way, and Avril and the others. Rain had some hesitation about Avril's position. She is a mutant, but her combat power is only one. All open up. As expected, Avril was unable to select the combat class crew item. It's true that she doesn't belong to the combat category. In that case, Avril could only be assigned to the general crew category. There is the first mate, second mate, third mate, chief sailor, sailor, cook, doctor. Rain chose first mate directly, which is the captain's main assistant. Avril's previous performance, Rain believes that she is capable of handling this position. The general crew does have not so many additional options. Rain speeded up. Terry was the second mate, and Armin was the third mate. Fancy and White were both in special situations. These two guys cannot be combat crew, so Rain can only arrange them as sailors for now. Since the others were arranged, Rain simply arranged Little Booty as well. Then Booty also became a sailor on this ship. Anyway, these positions can still be adjusted. Wait and see how they change later. Rain was in a good mood. Afterward, Rain held a crew meeting and informed all the crew of his new arrangement. I arrange it like this for now, Rain said. Now we have fewer people on board, so we should not be bound to any position or not. We should do what we should do. Don't worry, Captain. We've been in many battles together. Terry said, what position or not? Whoever is lazy will be thrown into the sea bath. The crowd burst into laughter. Armin also nodded. It's good to arrange the main duties of individuals. It doesn't matter if there are fewer people now. But there must be a division of labor when there are more people later. I'll be in charge of fighting anyway. Arson said indifferently and, Captain, you said there is still some good stuff for us? Hey, go check out your new gear. Rain said in a pretentious manner, in the captain's room. Arson, one bear, and two bear rushed to the captain's room. Wow, what kind of weapon is this? And the book? Three people were full of surprise. Rain said, one bear, two bear, y'all see what weapons you like to use. Choose one from fly claws and meteor hammer. Also, Arson, we go get some sharks sometime later. I will make you a diving suit. Haha, <laughs> I want the meteor hammer. This big ball of iron will definitely make a big hole in the boat. One bear replied. Then I want the fly claws. I used to use claws. I just like simple and brutal. Ha ha, two bear, look at this claw. It can still fire. Arson fiddled with the pair of steel claws. Captain, I still have a diving suit? Great. In addition to weapons, there are skills here. Avril frowned. Captain, don't you have any gifts for me and fancy? You too have a special situation. Allow me to study and research. Okay, Captain, hope you research quickly. We also want to become stronger. Fancy said. Rain also wants his crew to become stronger. Although Rain has not yet figured out these two people and White's situation, he was not in a hurry. 
With this discovery, Rain had more trust in the system. He didn't believe that his super battleship system would let potential stocks like Avril and Fancy go. He would figure it out later. A few days later, Rain made a sharkskin diving suit for Arson, so that her speed in the water was further enhanced. In the end, Rain calculated that this weapon system for crew provided him with a 100-point boost in combat power. September, the weather was hot, but there were often several people sweating like Rain in Rain's ship. After getting the new skills and weapons, one bear and two bear often practice with each other. Two bear's weapon attack power is a little worse but has high flexibility and can launch steel spikes. Plus one bear dares not swing the meteor hammer with full force he was afraid to break the deck. So two bear gained the upper hand. The sea next to the ship always rolled up a vortex. Although the vortex was very small, Arson has been able to cause a small scale underwater vortex, progressing quickly. Avril experimented with white every day. White was always the most laid back on the ship anyway. After a lot of training, and sufficient and reasonable food, the crew's strength improved a lot. Rain was still searching for pirate groups, but he did not know what was going on with these pirate groups. Rain has not encountered them for some time, just hanging out at sea for a month. This day, Rain wandered aimlessly in the nearby waters. Suddenly, they heard gunfire far away. Eh? What happened? Rain drove in the direction of the sound at once. On the sea, the smell of gunpowder wafted. They caught sight of the battlefield. And not much later, Rain's radar responded. Ding, 13 degrees northeast. 5,000 meters position found ships. Number, 58 ships. Both forces are G5 class bounty group Golden Crow bounty group and G5 class pirate group Ninja Pirates. What? G5 class? How come they came here? And the two sides seem to be fighting. The bounty of the G5 pirate group is more than 5,000 pearls. The wealth of those sub-G class small groups cannot hold a candle to the G5 class bounty group or pirate group. Phoenix bounty group was sub-G9. But their strength was definitely more than the sub-G9 class. Their strength should be in the G2. Just such a G2 class bounty group. Rain has scavenged more than 10,000 pearls. Then if it was G5 class wouldn't be rich? 85. The Fierce Battle. Rain's heart was pounding fast. If he came across a G5 class bounty group or pirates, then he wouldn't even think about anything. The best is to get away at once. Generally, the G5 class fleet has more than three G class main ships, plus other frigates. Rain's firepower cannot hold a candle to them. In addition, the number and strength of the mutant on the G5 class fleet were not something he could afford to mess with. In fact, Rain will not mess with the G class pirate group. He wanted to keep a low profile and give the crew enough time to upgrade. But the problem was, this time the situation was a bit special. Those two big guys seemed to be at each other's throats. Rain told the news to the crew and the others were on the same wavelength as Rain. Captain, this is one chance in a million. One bear said excitedly, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Why don't we try it? We can't miss the boat, of course. Rain said but not now. Everyone no hurry. Let me think first. Rain suppressed his excitement. They cannot be rash. This time if he did not play his cards right, Rain would have no chance at all to make a comeback. And once the battle was lost, how miserable the fate of him and the crew will need not say more. It can be said that this action will make or break the fate of all people. Rain observed the surrounding situation. There was a large amount of smoke around, which was left after the artillery attack, plus the battlefield was such a mess. Rain could hide safely. At that very moment, a new message came from the radar. Ding, two battleships have sunk in the battle area. The sunken ships are Portuguese light gunship of Golden Crow Bounty Group, Spanish galleon light gunship of Ninja Pirates. Well, Rain couldn't even think about it before another message came over. Ding, three warships have sunk in the battle area. The sunken ships are Greek warship of Golden Crow Bounty Group, Viking warship and Turtle Carthage warship of Ninja Pirates. These two guys are fighting pretty hard, huh? I have radar, so I can get their situation by detecting their remaining ships here, Rain said to the crowd in a hurry, everyone stay put, we'll just bide for time, the battlefield, the smallest ship here was 20 meters, and there were a dozen ships over 30 meters, the battle here doesn't seem to have just started, at this point many ships entangled each other, especially those in close combat, one against the other with hundreds of crew members jumping and fighting on the deck with weapons, on the other side, each side had three large warships of more than 40 meters side by side. Gunfire was all over the place. Wood ships flew everywhere. And no one knows how many people were killed by the explosion. A little farther away, 
Both sides also had stone-throwing carts and crossbow carts firing. There were ships firing, fighting, and even sinking. Shouts, screams, and roars were everywhere. The whole scene was chaotic. Both Golden Crow Bounty Group and Ninja Pirates' main ships were British battleships lengths more than 50 meters long. At this time the two main ships also were fighting. Inside the firepower cabin of both sides, a long series of guns fired. And then both ships were damaged badly. Miyamoto, how dare you trouble us? What a death wish. On the Golden Crow Bounty Corps, a stout man wearing a captain's hat growled with six crew members standing behind him. Looking at their gazes and auras, estimated that they all were mutants. The captain of the ninja pirates, Miyamoto stood on the side panel of the ship, laughing widely, ha 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 ha, don't pretend, Iken. Do you think we don't know what is loaded on your ship? Iken, we have tracked you from the human class C all the way. You won't get away. Iken snorted, we need to run? In my opinion, it's you are working your own undoing, is that? It just so happens that I have been invincible for so long. So hurry up and let me feel what is death. Behind Miyamoto, six masked swordsmen stared dead on the opposite side. The corners of Miyamoto's mouth lifted slightly, brothers kill them. The two large ships were separated by 100 to 200 meters. With a command from Miyamoto, the seven people of Ninja Pirates leaped up high and jumped on the deck of the Golden Crow Bounty Group. About 5,000 meters from the battlefield, rain was waiting anxiously. Ding, four battleships have sunk in the battle area. 49 more ships. Rain calculated. Ding, one battleship sunk in the battle area. Ding, two ships have sunk in the battle area. 46 ships to go. After a total of two hours of waiting, now there were only eight ships left on both sides. And coincidentally, the number of ships left on both sides was the same. It's nip and tuck. Good, good. Rain was getting more and more nervous. At this point in the fight, even the two remaining ships should be pretty much damaged. But Rain was still worried about the mutant. The fact that those eight ships were still fighting meant that the backbone of both sides hadn't fallen yet. In anxiety and tension, Rain and the crew waited another hour and a half. Ding, one battleship has sunk in the battle area. There is one ship remaining in the battle area, a 55M British battleship of the Golden Crow Bounty Group. Now Rain's heart was beating fast. Only the last one left. He began to move slowly toward the battlefield while paying close attention to the radar. From the radar, it looked like the ship hadn't moved. As they kept getting closer, Rain finally saw the giant ship. He likes a kid in front of this 55 and British battleship. But the ship, at this time, has been damaged seriously. All seven main masts were broken and twisted down, white sails floating on the surface of the sea. Its hull was also badly damaged. The middle of the hull was blasted into oblivion. If this ship was a person, his current appearance would be a row of ribs all exposed. No wonder it's not moving. It looks like it can't either. There were still a lot of ship's remains and a large number of bodies around. The color of the seawater was dyed red. So tragic. Avril couldn't help but marvel. Yeah, how many people are here? At least five or six hundred, right? Rain continued to approach forward cautiously. Strangely enough, as they approached the British battleship, they found it surprisingly quiet. Eh? Is this done fighting or not? Rain tilted his head and looked at the behemoth, which was at least thirty meters tall much taller than Rain. He even could not see the ship's deck. Rain pondered for a moment and said, Terry, Armin, fancy, y'all stay on the ship. Avril, Larson, one bear, two bear, let's go up and take a look. 86. A great harvest. Rain and the others got on the ship. At this point, the ship had been in a mess. The bodies of sailors and crew were everywhere. They went up to pick up the booty when one bear and two bear caught sight of the corpses, and they could find a small pearls bag occasionally. These guys were ordinary crew members. It is rich for them to have four or five pearls. Of course, there is better than no. They collected all the pearls and unified them in a bag. Along the way, there were at least four or five hundred bodies, and the pearls they got were several hundred. The ship indeed was large. There were four or five layers in the hull. Rain and the others carefully made their way up. After this layer, the front is the deck. Everyone be careful. Two bear walked into the forefront, y'all follow me. One bear walked up the last flight of stairs, and the crowd followed him quietly. Not long after, Two Bear went up to the deck, and the rest of the group hid on the stairs to wait for his signal. Two Bear poked his head out and took a careful look around, then waved to the crowd, no one alive in sight. The crowd then went up to the deck as one. The situation on the deck was even more tragic. No one knows how many people died here. The bodies lay on all sides. 
Many places have been smashed through the artillery. The equipment, fiber rope, and light bulbs were everywhere. Rain and the others noticed the large open area in front of the captain's cabin where there were only a dozen corpses was a little different from the crowded scene around. The others also found that area and figured that was where the strongest of the fleet were fighting. So the general crew didn't dare to go near. Tuber took a deep breath. I'll go check it out. Y'all wait for me here. Tuber crossed his hands at his waist, equipped his sharp claws, and approached carefully. Estimated that these guys were not ordinary mutants. Rain was afraid they are not a match for them with his few people. They must be doubly careful. Rain watched Tuber check a masked warrior, then walked towards another person, and checked a dozen people in a row, before standing up straight and saying to them, Come here. All dead. All dead? Undoubtedly, this is the best ending for Rain. The crowd hurried over. Surprise. Both sides all died. Rain marveled Avril. Check who is the pirate group leader. Although it was dead, also worth about 5,000 pearls. Avril took out endured the pirate group wanted at once. One by one comparison. She found a man's body. Captain, that's him. Miyamoto Naoyama. The corpse had four knives sticking out of it. Estimated that the strength of his men was poor and finally surrounded by the enemy and died. But then again, even so, he still managed to kill all his enemies. He indeed was a strong man. One bear was still focused on collecting booty from the corpses. Obviously these people had more money than those ordinary seafarers. Some even have thousands of pearls. Get rich, get rich. Wow, this is not bad. At least seven or eight hundred. One bear did not miss a single opportunity along the way. Others also rushed to help and quickly finished. Well, do not count Pearl first. Go to the captain's cabin, Rain said. All of them walked together toward the captain's cabin. The captain's cabin has been destroyed half the beams collapsed. The crowd searched around but did not find the golden chest. Eh? Look, guys. There is a secret room. Avril moved away a log and froze there. Because the house was damaged, this secret room which should have been hidden in the wall was half exposed. A secret room? Go inside and take a look. One bear and two bear got the wood blocking the doorway out of the way, and the group entered the secret room. The secret room was not big, and the furnishings inside were simple. The golden chest was in the secret room. One bear went up to try to move it. He is a mutant with great strength, after all. So he did not use too much strength at first. But who knows he failed. The golden chest did not move at all. A shocked and excited one bear got his eyes widened and looked at the crowd. The others got it at once. One bear did not move it up at once which means this chest is very heavy. And very heavy means. They may be making a great fortune this time. One bear opened the box. Everyone's eyes lit up. It was full of pearls. A hyped one bear put his arms inside. All pearls. All pearls. Oh my god. Arson rushed over to help. Wow. It's heavy. Much heavier than Phoenix's chest. Captain. Let's get this chest to our ship first. Yeah go ahead. One bear and Arson carried the chest and walked out slowly. Rain looked around. In addition to the gold chest, there was also a long wooden table in the corner. Avril also noticed the wooden table. To be precise, she noticed a notebook on the wooden table. She went over, opened, and examined it in the dim light. It was a journal, but it was only a cursory record of the events of a period. And it was incomplete with burn marks. I can't figure out what we found. Is this the legendary son of Poseidon? But whatever it is, it's obviously not something we can have. I think it's better to sell it as soon as possible. My men have already reached out to those perverted guys. And there are already a few that are willing to buy this strange thing and offer a price high enough to make my heart skip a beat. The price of asterisk hashtag is great. They won't go through the trading houses though. They want to deal with us in private. Wouldn't it be stupid for a D-class bounty group to deal with us in private? But the price they offered was too much for me to refuse. It was 3,000. That's enough to raise our strength by several stages. Draco has already informed them of the place and time of the transaction. And they have agreed to send out only one sub-G class warship to trade with us. They said they only want the item and won't design us. But who will believe such stupid words? There is no integrity in this world. Even if our. After repeated contacts, Draco said they agreed to send a wooden ship of only 10 people for the deal and that the crew would all be ordinary people. This proposal satisfied me more. The end result of the deal was, damn it, seven days later is the time of the deal. But I don't know from whom the news leaked out. It must be Draco. I will cut his tongue when he comes back. I'm going to move up the trading time. Tomorrow, yes tomorrow, my little baby, sleep well inside. After tomorrow, 
you'll be a mountain of pearls, a D-class bounty group? Rain was also stunned. Although he did not know what level the D-class bounty group was, he could only know that a D-class bounty group want the item the logbook referred to. 87. Child of Poseidon. Captain, is there some more treasure here? Avril looked around. It was easy to figure out from this logbook there is something else here. But Avril had a clear view of the room. Where there was any treasure? Armin came over and checked the logbook. Then she said, Captain, the last logbook is dated yesterday, which means today is their trading time. We have to hurry. Rain felt his scalp tingling all of a sudden. Although the logbook said the D-class bounty group only sent a small wooden boat, who believes their words. Moreover, even if there is really only a small wooden ship to trade, Rain was afraid that their large forces definitely will not be far away. D-class bounty group. Rain wanted to run just hearing it, not to mention with them face to face. Hurry up, we cannot delay here more. We cannot let them find us, Rain said in a hurry. At this moment, Armin took a step back and looked at the wooden table in front of her. There were only three things here. The gold chest, the log book, and this wooden table. Captain, could it be inside this table? Avril and Armin looked at each other and touched the wooden table with a fine-tooth comb. Rain didn't know who touched the mechanism. Suddenly, the wooden board in the middle of the table opened slowly. Armin and Avril backed up and looked at the scene surprised. There was a mystery inside the wooden table. Rain finally saw the situation inside when the board opened. Inside the table was covered with the skins of unknown animals which looked soft. And in this layer of fur was lying on a snow-white pink baby. This baby's skin can almost be described as crystal, feeling blown. And the naked baby boy closed his eyes slightly and seemed to barely breathe. Rain did not know whether it was alive or dead. At this moment, Rain's system sent a sudden warning. Ding, a 15-meter plank paddle boat is approaching from the south. Rain's hair on the back of his neck almost stood up. This coincided with what the log said, the D-class bounty group was here. Hurry up, carry this baby boy away. The D-class bounty group is coming. Let's go. The nervous Avril and Armin hurriedly wrapped up the baby boy with fur and quickly out of the cabin. Once back on the ship, one bear and the other still talking about salvaging these materials. Rain stopped them in a hurry. Life is more important. Hurry up. Full speed sailing. Quick. One bear and the others were all dumbfounded. With the captain's character, he would give up so much material. There were at least tens of thousands of pearls here. And how come Avril was holding a baby? What are y'all still standing there for? Hoist the sails. Rain almost shouted. Terry and the others had never seen Rain so nervous. They did not dare to ask more questions at this time and hurried to set sail. The small wooden ship was not fast, which created an opportunity for Rain to escape. He locked its position and fled fast to the direct north with the help of the huge battleship's mutilation. It was on the way that Avril and Armin told everyone the reason. Holy shit, so that's it. That's why the captain was so nervous. Two Bear was also scared in a cold sweat. If we had been seen by that gang, we would not have been able to run away. By the way, Avril, what the hell is that baby? The son of Poseidon? Terry asked, I've never heard of it. Avril also shook her head. I've never heard of it either. But it looks like it's worth a lot of money. A G5 pirate group fought for it at all costs. Even a D-class bounty group came a long way to buy it. So one can imagine how valuable it is. Rain did not join in the discussion. He has been paying attention to the small wooden ship. The wooden ship stopped moving when its position overlapped with the battleship before. Rain and the others have escaped a long way right now. Rain breathed a sigh of relief. Those people have not seen him. Otherwise, they would have chosen to chase after him at first. In any case, Rain did not dare to slow down for a moment and kept fleeing fast to the north. After driving out for 400 or 500 nautical miles, Rain finally breathed a long sigh of relief. Then Rain opened the system. System, detect item. Ding, found a child of Poseidon, hatchling dot. What the hell? Can't you explain? This time the system seemed to hear Rain's words and gave a note below. Special item note. This is a kind of organism that evolved from a large number of mutated single-cell organisms. As humans sacrifice babies to see gods, these single cells polymerize to look like the human body structure. The general mutant has obvious exclusivity and directionality. Once they obtained a certain mutation, they will continue to one way to this direction of deep mutation. And it is not compatible with other abilities. The child of Poseidon has excellent compatibility. Because of this, it has become the norm for the adult child of Poseidon to have multiple abilities. They often are the most terrifying creatures. Currently, the consciousness of Poseidon's child is not fully developed. 
May I ask does the host want to occupy this body? After occupying the body, the host still can transfer your consciousness freely. Rain froze. He did not understand what the large paragraph said. Anyway, the general meaning is that this item is fucking great. Others can only have one ability. This can have a lot of abilities. Of course, it depends on whether it can undergo that many mutations. But it at least has the potential to gather multiple abilities. In other words, this is the child who wins at the starting line. And to top it off, the system asked him if he wanted to occupy the body. Rain was so used to being called a ship that he had even given up the idea of becoming a person again. But just when he had accepted all of this, the system told him that he could have a human body. The answer is obvious. Too excited. I do. Rain's voice was choked with emotion as he said, although there are advantages to being a screw cap, I still want to become a human being again. Besides, the consciousness can still be transferred anyway. Start consciousness transfer. A bunch of people were staring at the baby. By the way, is it a boy or a girl? A boy. Armin said and pulled the blanket off the baby without hesitation. Really? It's a boy. Look at the little cute dick. One bear flicked the little cock. Little guy, wake up, or your uncle would play with your little dick again. Dare you fucking try again. Suddenly, the baby opened his eyes and stared coldly at the curious one bear. 88. Galleon or cruiser? Rain had a look of awkwardness and depression. He still was too young. The child of Poseidon sounds very cool. But the biggest problem was that this guy was in the baby state. Damn it. Why do I have to be so anxious to transfer consciousness? Why don't I wait until no one is around? Now a group of people surrounded by naked him. And there was one bear this idiot. Well, at least get him a diaper. Rain's words scared the crowds. This little guy was not only awake but also talking. Holy shit. One bear scared to plump down on the ground. W what the hell is this? The baby had a poker face, Avril um. Please wrap me up. Avril wide-eyed, slowly re-leaned over Captain. How could she not hear the Captain's voice? Captain, how did you get like this? The baby let out a long sigh. I am brain dead. I fucking transferred my consciousness to it. Saying that, the infant began to wave its arms randomly. Why are my hands moving around? Ding, detected the host is occupying the body of the child of Poseidon. Current fusion progress 0.1%. Before the fusion progress reaches 100%, each exit will return part of the complete degree. Rain was confused, so he was taking over the body. Now he only occupies 0.1% of the consciousness. So many physical actions were not under his control. Fuck you. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Damn it. Shame my illustrious life. Over here, the group finally figured out what was going on and regrouped. Wow, how cute. Arson came over full of motherly love. Yes, look at the chubby little hands. And the skin is so smooth. Armin also could not help but touch, oops, sweating. A non-breathable blanket can cause red skin. Hey, do not move my ass. Rain cried with alarm. Captain, your butt needs out for wind, or it will get a rash. It's okay. I saw my mom take care of other kids like this. Armin said. Yeah. Avril echoed. My brother also had a red bottom. You need more sun. Stop it. Rain was scared. Captain, we're doing this for your own good. These days Rain all the way to escape was very tired. The crew was the same. They even did not count the number of pearls in the gold chest before they fell asleep in the room. Late at night, the sea gently rocked the ship, just like a cradle. Rain had a little feeling coming from the body as the progress of the consciousness transfer increased. The feeling became so real all of a sudden. Avril turned around, opened her eyes, and saw the baby sleeping on the box. The little one was lying there alone, kicking the covers. Avril rubbed her eyes, got up, and walked over to the baby, Captain, awake? No, Rain was sleeping like a pig. Avril shook her head and put her hand under the covers. No, Captain. You wet the bed. Oops, hurry up and change the quilt. After a toss and turn, Avril wrapped Rain up again. She had wanted to continue to put it on the box. But thinking about it, Avril carried the baby to the bed and placed it next to herself. Looking at the sleeping Rain, Avril's eyes became strange. Should I call you baby or captain? It always feels weird. Avril caressed the baby's face as if she saw her brother when she was young, and could not help but hold Rain close. The next day, all the crew gathered in the captain's room. One bear and two bear brought in the golden chest. It was a so big chest. Rain was placed upright on a chair with a quilt over him for fear he would catch a cold. Oh, hurry up, Rain said. The crowd still was not suit the baby as their new captain. They had never seen such a money-hungry baby. The box that was opened was full of pearls. In addition to the original pearls in the box here, 
There were pearls the one bear all the way to pick up the booty to get. Anyway, that was all. Six people began to count together. This was a big project. They cost almost an hour to count out. Captain, the total is 128,331. Avril recorded in a small notebook, plus the 39,021 we had before. The total is 167,352. Wow, my goodness. About 160,000 pearls. Captain, we're fucking rich. Captain, now we have enough pearls to upgrade to the next level, right? Yeah, and we have a lot of materials. Last time the captain said it would only take less than 130,000 to upgrade. The group of people was so excited. They had thought it would take a long time to upgrade, but they didn't expect to earn so many pearls so quickly. Rain was the happiest. At this moment, he's sitting on the stool with his hands dancing. Oh, not good. Rain suddenly shouted. Captain, what's wrong? Avril looked at Rain in confusion. I seem to be, a little wet, down there. Black lines covered the crew's forehead, the captain peed again. Rain thought very clearly. If he bought too many supplies in a trading market at once, it was inevitable that someone would get suspicious. So he decided to buy supplies from the seven or eight trading markets. Rain took this time to stay in the body of the child of Poseidon for one and a half months. Finally, Rain took over the body completely. As for the consciousness generated by a bunch of single-celled organisms in this body, Rain didn't feel guilty at all. The important thing was that he can control his urination and defecation. The body of the child of Poseidon grows much faster than the normal baby. After a week, Rain already looked a year old. And after a month and a half, he had grown into a four or five year old child. Rain did not have any special abilities now, the only advantage was that he was born to swim. This skill was simply a master skill for someone who was drowned in a previous life. With a body of his own, Rain naturally wanted to use it more. After floating in the sea for so long, he was not afraid of water anymore. So he always jumped into the sea and swam around. Two months later, all materials had been collected and Rain opened the system. Rain had two options for this evolution. One is the Spanish galleon that favors transport and firepower. The other is the British cruiser that favors speed. The British cruiser also has some firepower. Its firepower is not as much as the Spanish galleon though. It wins in flexibility. Rain thought about it. The Spanish galleon looks great. It is bulky and heavy though. If I bring enough materials, I can repair it while fighting. It's good. And the load capacity is also very important. It should be used if I would do transport business in the future. Just need a little more crew. To speak cruiser, the most important thing is flexibility. But the load and firepower are poor. If I can create a battleship will be cool hey. Rain was torn for a long time. And finally made up his mind. Forget it. Flexibility is still important. Rain did not particularly understand the history of ship development though. At least he knew the British defeated the Spanish Armada to establish maritime supremacy. Laying the foundation for the future establishment of the empire on which the sun never sets. Come on, cruiser. 89. New weapons. Systems construction speed was as powerful as ever. In just half an hour, it built a ship that would have taken others months to build. The new ship's hull was 38 meters long, which was improved than before. But the width was unchanged. The widest position was 8 meters. The increase in length made the ship look more narrow and long. The hull had a streamlined shape and there were four masts on board. The longest mast reaches 50 meters. All four masts were equipped with transverse sails and the sail area increased a lot. The bow and stern also were equipped with a tilting mast and a triangular sail on it. The ship was 12 meters high and had two gun equipped decks with each of 20 guns, a total of 40. After consciousness transfer, Rain quickly opened the basic information. Host Rain, ship, medium-sized three-deck British patrol light gunship. Cabin, 9, stern compartment, 2, power compartment, 10, crew compartment, 40, fire power compartment, 1, large storage compartment, crew size, 9, all positions assigned, open for details. Ship speed, 20 knots maximum, open for details. Combat power, 8473.1, can be viewed in the crew information and weapon system. Load capacity, 16824.7-80000 kg, open for details. The number of cabins had not changed much. It was just one more power cabin and 20 more firepower cabins. The speed of the ship was increased from 16 knots to 20 knots. Although there was only a 4 knot increase, Rain was already satisfied. He knew that the faster the speed is, the more difficult to raise it. 
A shipping speed of 20 knots is quite fast. The increase in load was only 20 tons, and the ship itself takes up 16 tons, which equals almost the same before and after. Of course, the biggest change was the weapon system. Combat power increased from more than 2,000 to 800. Quadrupled. Come on, open the weapon system, Rain said impatiently. Fragmentation storm cannon. Attack power. 200 quantity. 20. 1,200 meters attack range. And the best range is 300 to 800 meters. The shells have highly penetrating and cause splash damage when the shell fragments explode after hitting the target. Destroyer storm mortar. Attack power. 100 quantity. 10. 2,700 meters attack range. The best range is 1,000 to 1,500 meters. The shells have strong penetrating and explosion, and their parabolic trajectory is difficult to intercept, so they can cross the obstacles and hit the target. Large crossbow. Attack power, 10, quantity, 10, can be fired in bursts of up to 5 shots with a range of 800 meters and an optimal range of 300 to 500 meters. Lurker storm shallow water bomb. Attack power, 250, quantity, 10, a diving depth of 5 to 30 meters, explodes upon touch, deals little damage to the target, level 3 reinforced hull, defense 80, holy shit, you say 250 attack power is little damage, Rain said in shock, I can take a sneak attack on others from now on, Rain was wondering what was so special about the level 3 reinforced hull, he found it when he checked his side panels, the ship's side plate looks like other ships, it is wooden, but this is just an illusion. Actually, there is wrapped with a layer of 2 centimeters of metal plate armor in the outermost layer of the ship. The system has insidiously finished the metal surface. It is painted with the wood grain to look like normal wood. Yeah, the protective color. Insidious enough. I like it. Rain was excited. Although the metal hull is thin, it has some defense against some bows and arrows or some shells with weaker attacks. No wonder his overall defense had increased so much. These weapons and equipment alone provide Rain with 7,680 combat points. His weapon system had over 8,000 combat power with 50 harpoons. This was not the key. The key was that a variety of weapons provide more options for Rain's future tactical. Mortars are responsible for long-range strikes. The medium range is left to the cannons. Melee is handled by flexible large crossbows. In addition, the emergence of shallow water bombs has enriched Rain's tactics. After checking the weapon system, Rain continued to check the power system. Power Equipment 1, Stern Spiral Propeller Asterisk 2, Power Equipment 2, Bow Screw Thruster Asterisk 2, Power Equipment 3, Main Mass Transom Sail Asterisk 4, Sail Asterisk 4, Power Equipment 4, Triangular Mast Asterisk 2, Sail Asterisk 3, Power Equipment 5, Large Folding Oars Asterisk 2, Power System 1, Artificial Power, Power System 2, Wind Power, Power System 3, host propulsion. The power system also did not change much. The number of propulsion and sails increased. These changes have allowed the shipping speed to 20 knots. The crew went around the ship in excitement. Captain, have we increased the speed? The hull is narrow, so it feels like there will be much less resistance. It's not easy to turn over due to the draft line being deeper. The design of this cruiser is perfect. Come on, let's go to the firepower cabin. Terry, one bear and two bear had been loving weapons and ran to the firepower without saying a word. There was a shout from the three men inside within a short time. Jez. What is this? A mortar? We've doubled the number of cannons. Hold on, there's another layer down there. No way, this is... Dropping bombs? It's fucking great. Rain didn't bother to pay attention to these guys who hadn't seen the elephant. These guys always have to make a fuss every time he upgraded. Although he also made a fuss... At least it wasn't as exaggerated as theirs. After checking the ship, Rain transferred his consciousness to his new body. Come back all. A group of people gathered around a young boy of four or five years old. Now that the ship has been upgraded. Tell me, can we go to the human class C? Avril looked at one bear and two bear, thought about it, and said Captain, it's perfectly fine. Rain smiled faintly, very good. He has been waiting for this for a long time. The Golden Crow Bounty Group's goods were held by them. Estimated that the D-Class Bounty Group would search the nearby sea next. Rain wasn't sure if they could find him, but he didn't dare to bet it. Once he was found, he would die ten deaths. In that case, it would be better to go to the Human Class C. Good, I think there must be more opportunities over there. Let's buy some more materials. Three days later, make for the Human Class C. Captain, 
Which human class C are we going? One bear asked. Rain thought about it. I don't know. How about this, Avril? You call the shots. Avril froze for a moment. The captain let herself choose. Did he mean, help her to take revenge? 90. The Furious Emperor's Bounty Group. It's been three years since he first met Avril. In those three years, Rain had evolved from the original raft to a cruiser. Captain I. Rain smiled faintly. You don't think I am for your revenge. It's the same everywhere I rob. I just want to see how powerful my new ship is. Sister Avril, don't worry, we'll all help you. Yes, Avril. How would the captain let you risk your life alone? Avril's eyes turned red, nodded heavily. This was not the time to be polite. Her chances of winning revenge alone are not as high as if everyone came together. Rain set off towards the human class sea. No man's land, a 50 meter long British battleship. A strong man knelt on one knee in front of the captain's room door. Captain, that galleon ship suddenly disappeared, and all the seagulls failed to find it. A man's voice came from inside the captain's room, low and strong, suddenly disappeared? Yes, they can have a mutant that strong could make the whole ship disappear. Yes, it's just that we've sent thousands of seagulls, but we still have no news. Then what's the use of keeping these seagulls? A large number of seagull bodies fell from the mast at once as soon as the captain's words fell. All these gulls died as a result of explosions generated inside their bodies without exception. A group of people on the deck only felt a chill in the back of their hearts. Without moving to kill thousands of seagulls just like this. They know, although the captain killed the seagulls, even if it were a person or even mutants, the result would be the same. Their emperor bounty group a D-class bounty group came a long way here to buy something but it was stolen by a small broken ship. It was a burning shame. Son of Poseidon. Son of Poseidon. It was snatched away by a bunch of thieves. That should have been mine. Mine. The voice in the captain's cabin seemed furious. I must find them no matter what it takes. Aye, captain. Meanwhile, Rain purchased a batch of spare materials at a trading market 700 nautical miles away from them. Not only that, but Rain also had a small wooden boat of 5 or 6 meters built. After staying here for 10 days, it so happened that Arson's level increased again. This allowed her strength to catch up with one bear and two bear. Rain led the crew to the southeast all the way according to the route given by Avril when the wooden ship was completed. This day, Rain was sitting in the bow of the ship. Now he preferred to stay in the body of the child of Poseidon. Having a human body let Rain's feelings more concrete. Half a month later, they were still 300 nautical miles from the human class waters. At that moment, they reached the place where Avril had been hit. Avril leaned over the parapet nervously and looked out into the distance. Avril, Rain said as he saw Avril behind him, you said they were tracking you from the human class waters. But we don't know if they will appear around here yet. You don't have to be so nervous. Captain, they are merchant ships, Avril replied, but I'm not sure what kind of merchant bank they are but I'm sure they would be transporting goods between the human class C and the no man's land trading market frequently. Why? They have cargo on board and have a deeper draft. That's why we didn't get caught up by them. Avril's eyes were a little red. It looked like the memories were making her a little sad. I think they were tracking us though. Our driving route should also happen to be on their route. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gone to great lengths to catch us. Avril lowered her head. If I had realized that and asked my father to change course, Maybe we could have escaped from their clutches. Rain looked at Avril. This girl had matured a lot. He let out a slight sigh. Avril, you don't have to blame yourself. You didn't have that much experience at that time. Sometimes, disaster doesn't wait for you to grow strong enough before it comes. Avril pursed her lips tightly and nodded. After organizing her emotions, she said, Captain Armin, help me check that there are three trading markets in the vicinity. I have recorded the location of these three trading markets. We can deduce the three best routes as long as we figure out the nearby currents, monsoon winds, and the location of the starting point. I tried to deduce a route last night, but there are two more routes. I'm kinda confused to remember the change of currents. I, Rain walked over and pulled Avril's hand, well I see, give me the chart. The rest to me will be fine. You go rest and relax. Otherwise I am afraid you would not have the energy when it comes to the time you were needed. Avril was too nervous indeed. These days she had been studying the chart and practicing her skills. She was eager to be able to use her power when she met her enemy, so her spirit was always in a state of hyperactivity. She looked down at Rain being said by him. The captain was right. She was too nervous. She would do nothing in the real fight instead if she was so nervous before the battle. It's just that it's always weird to hear these kinds of words coming from a five or six-year-old. Don't overthink. 
I will give you the opportunity to avenge your family with your own hands when the time comes. Go on. Rain smiled slightly. I didn't get the chance to do anything for my family. But you did. I won't leave you with regrets. A little red occurred to Avril's eyes and nose. Her throat choked up as she nodded heavily. I, I know. After saying that, Avril left her charts to Rain and returned to her room in a hurry. Rain opened his own chart when Avril returned to her room. The three surrounding trading markets were marked on the chart. It had information such as the location of the area where Avril's family was located in the first place and the time when the enemy was found tracking them. System. Scan the chart to find the best route to the three trading markets from the starting location. The system recorded several important locations marked by Avril onto its own chart and then drew out three shipping routes based on the direction of ocean currents, wind direction, and the location of the three trading markets in human-class waters. These three routes overlapped at first, but three bifurcations appeared at a certain point, leading to the three trading markets respectively. That point was only 50 or 60 nautical miles from their current location. Well, such a coincidence? All three routes would have passed through this place? Rain thought about it, and then smiled with relief. In this situation, the best way was to go to the crossover point and wait for the chance. 91. Revenge. The main body of the flag logo of the Chamber of Commerce is to present the pattern of rice as growing upward and wrapped, and there must be a letter B. But the pattern will vary from one merchant house to another in order to distinguish. Take the gold foot merchants for example. Their icon is six golden ricers which are like two palms cupped upward. And the black hell merchants are two black skeletal hand bones cupped upward. Avril said the men who killed her family had taken off their flags when hit them, which prevented Rain from targeting them directly. But Avril remembered the look of the enemy ship. That was a small to medium-sized Spanish galleon. Vessels for ocean transport were generally Spanish galleons unless there were specialized frigates. Strong firepower and excellent load capacity are the basic conditions to perform ocean transportation alone. The wood color of their ship's hulls was darker, and the canvas was white. Only these pieces of information did not have high recognition. Many ships are like that. Captain, call me if you find a similar ship. I can definitely recognize it. And their captain, I remember his face even now. Rain nodded and began to moor at sea, keeping an eye on the neighborhood. A couple of transport ships had passed by a few days ago. Usually, large ships have lookouts so they all spot Rain and the others. What's that ship doing parked there all the time? It's the Bounty Group's boat. Eh, uh, why is there only one boat? Never mind, just as long as they don't hit us. The Navy won't care here. Let the gunners take their positions first. Rain had little interest in them. Rain wanted money, but he would not go around burning and looting. Six days later, in the late afternoon, the sky was clear and the sea was calm. Suddenly, several ships came into Rain's sight. Rain narrowed his eyes. Well, this boat, kinda like. Rain notified the crew at once. Terry, one bear, two bear, adjust the sail direction. Let's go over and check it out. The crowd immediately went on high alert. Avril rushed to the helm position at once with her eyes fixed on the direction of the ship. Avril, can you see it? No, but looks kinda like it. But how come they have five ships? It's probably a big deal. Rain stopped talking and continued to approach the five ships. The other side began to change formation when they were 3,000 meters away from each other's position. The five ships were arranged in an arrow shape. On the front deck of the foremost ship, a flagman raised his flag and waved it at Rain for a while. Captain, they're warning us not to keep approaching. Yes, it is the ship. But not enough. I want to see their captain with my own eyes. Avril shouted at that moment. Keep approaching until we get a good look, Rain ordered. The flagman started waving the flag frantically when the opposing fleet saw Rain still approaching. Our men translated the flag message that they were going to fire if Rain continued to move forward. Rain didn't care and kept going. 2,000 meters, 1,800 meters. Avril's eyes were locked on the man on the bow deck at the front of the line. She finally got a good look at the other side as the distance between the two sides continued to close. The captain's uniform cannot even cover the navel of the large belly man standing in the bow of the ship. She would never forget the obscenities this man ordering the gunners to intimidate her family with their cannons had spoken to them along the way. Avril's eyes were beginning to fill with blood due to the long hours of anger. Her kind eyes were burning with murderous intent at this moment. Captain, the one who killed my family is the captain of the first ship. Everyone's gaze began to gloom down. Although Avril was not the captain, the status on the ship was second only to Rain. And everyone can feel how kind a girl Avril is. Today, they were on Rain's boat and had become a family. Then they would not put themselves out of the way. 
Rain watched the other side adjust the bow gun and aim at himself. Rain snorted. Ready. Terry Armin and Arson, y'all take charge of the upper firepower cabin shell replenishment. One bear, two bear, and Fancy take charge of the second. Now Rain's firepower cabin was divided into two floors. The lower firepower cabin was placed with 20 storm cannons. The upper firepower cabin has 10 mortars and 10 large crossbows. The firepower cabin and gun door of the mortar design are relatively special because the mortar shells have a high parabolic. First of all, the gun door is located higher. The window is more open that can cover all directions from 45 degrees to 15 degrees angle. In addition, the wooden plate under the gun mount is movable so that it can move forward half a body position. So it can also be fired even if the angle of more than 45 degrees. Everyone quickly took their positions. Rain and White stood at the bow of the ship, looking coldly at the other five Spanish galleons. Captain Toussaint narrowed his eyes slightly. What was this ship doing? A patrol ship ignored their warning and just drove toward them. This was not how Rob works, right? Or did they not see the flag? Impossible. He raised his monocular again, and now he could see clearly. There was only one person on the other boat, and it was a six or seven year old kid, and a white Labrador sitting beside the child. Suddenly, the child seemed to find him. He smiled slightly at himself, and then gave his middle finger to the telescope. Damn it! Attention all ships! Treat them well with our bow gun once they are close to 900 meters position. Blast them into slag. All five captains got their orders. Their bow cannons were already aimed and the gunners were ready to fire. 1,500 meters. Hey, hey, there's a good show. Many of the crew members stood on the deck. I just saw there were women on board. Did they all run into the cabin? I've never seen such a stupid ship. Trying to fight five with one? By the way, there's only a little brat on board. I think they're crazy. With the firepower we have, can he compete? Women, here we come. That little doll is so fine and tender. I like it. However, just at that moment, ten cannon shots were heard. Hundreds of crew members looked up at the ten shells that flew into the sky. This is mortar. Firing from so far away? It shouldn't be able to hit us. Definitely. Mortars are notoriously inaccurate. The next moment, ten shells from the sky fell like meteorites on the bows of five Spanish galleons. And the landing time was almost the same. The tremendous force pierced the bow deck of the ship and a strong impact caused the shells to explode. The bows of the five ships along with the firepower compartments in the bow were destroyed in one fell swoop. Rain snorted coldly, inaccurate? Sorry, I have a 100% hit rate. Rain put one foot on the bow rail so that he could appear taller. Amidst a sea of fire, everyone heard a child shouted voice. Listen you assholes, what destroys you today is, Dad Bounty Group. Good. Round 2. Fire. 92. Maximizing benefits. The second attack fell from the sky on the fordex of the five Spanish galleons. Smoke rolled off the bows of the five ships and chaos ensued for a moment. However, the Spanish galleons were not incapacitated completely after two rounds of attacks and the distance between the two sides was gradually closing. Rain observed the formation of the opponents. They have arranged in the shape of AV. The smoke from the burning provided excellent cover for the boats in the rear. The formation was used in a group fight that cover each other and was extremely powerful in terms of fire, but less flexible. But rain had the most important point in addition to the advantage of fire range, accuracy, and agility. Having destroyed the gun on the bow of the opponent's ship, rain suddenly changed course and scuttled into the flank of the opposing fleet when they were 400 or 500 meters apart. Rain was downwind of the enemy fleet, and by now was lost in the smoke emanating from the five enemy ships. Captain, there's too much smoke to see where they are. The lookout on the Toussaint's ship reported loudly to the captain. I've never seen such idiots. So what if we can't see them hiding downwind? Their sight is worse than ours. Toussaint had a scowl on his face. This ship had hit five of his ships hard without saying a word. Obviously, this cannot end there. Attention ships on the east side. Pull back to avoid accidental damage. Fire at full power once they come out. However, just as Toussaint felt he was safe, Ten cannon shots erupted from the smoke before Toussaint's fleet could change formation. This sound was different from the mortars. It was louder and lower. Several flashes of fire came out of the smoke. Immediately afterward, the shells hit their target with precision. The side of a ship parallel to it was blown to pieces in a moment. The firepower compartment was destroyed, and the whole ship was already badly tilted before they could fire. The splash damage from the shells did more damage to a large number of crew members. Unexpectedly. 
After one round of attack, the 45-meter galleon had only half the side left. Toussaint's eyes were blazing. One of his ships was dead. There was still a lot of cargo on board. Damn, what kind of cannon are these assholes using? However, the surprise wasn't over yet. For some reason, a series of explosions suddenly rang out from the bottom of the ship, followed by a violent shaking of both Toussaint's ship and the two ships behind him. Captain, several holes have been blown out of the bottom of our ship. The bottom is leaking badly. Torpedoes? Toussaint was baffled. That ship was equipped with torpedoes? That was not something a ship in human-class waters could play with. Naturally, he did not know that he was not hit by torpedoes, but by mines. Rain had sprinkled shallow water bombs ahead of the Toussaint fleet before he had changed course. Rain is very good at using something sinister. The crew attempted to plug the hole in the bottom though. The hole was so big that seawater soon poured into the bottom compartment, and the whole boat was sinking fast. Five boats, one was destroyed outright, and three were ambushed by mines and were about to sink. Toussaint was furious. Son of bitch. Don't run away. Come and fight head on if you dare. Fire, fire. I'll sink them whatever it takes. Naturally, Rain wasn't going to be trapped by such simple agitation. He was going to play to his strengths that not fight his opponent hard, and he had rounded behind him by now. At this point, the advantage of boat speed comes into play. Lumbering guys didn't even have time to turn around. Captain, our ship is about to sink. Get on board Captain James' ship. The ship's first mate said anxiously, pulling Toussaint along. Is this about to sink? They hadn't even had time to fire. They were just like five live targets being bombarded by the other side. However, it was true. Their ship was already sinking fast and many of the crew had already jumped overboard. Toussaint finally jumped overboard after his first mate and climbed up the last boat following the rope James threw out. My ship! My cargo! Toussaint was angry and distressed as he watched his ship sink. The price of this shipment is over 300,000 pearls. He couldn't afford to pay for it. James walked over quickly. Captain, what now? They have too much firepower. And crucially, they have a long range. The ship is faster than us. We can't approach or defeat them, and we can't run away either. What could be more tragic than not being able to fight and even run away? Toussaint grasped both hands into claws and trembled all over. They were really going to be played to death by that ship. Toussaint was so angry that his internal organs ached. Suddenly, he noticed that the ship had reappeared in front of their ship. The ship was facing them sideways and the ten gun doors on the second level of the firepower cabin were all open. Ten long and thin gun tubes sticking out of the gun doors looked extremely creepy. Damn, they're going to fire. Quick, turn, James shouted. But just as the ship twisted a little, the other side fired. There was only one shot, and it landed two or three meters right next to their hull. Then came another shot, which broke the ship's mainmast with precision. This time, no one would have been naive enough to think that the other side had misfired. If all ten guns had fired at once, they would have been dead ducks. It was clear that they were not allowed to turn. James hurriedly told the crew to turn the ship back. There was a boom and another shot landed two or three meters in front of their ship. It was a warning for them to slow down. What the fuck? Where the hell did they find the gunner? It's so accurate. James frowned. The other side was using cannon fire to make fun of them and to control the direction and speed of their ship. This was a skill that they had often seen at sea. They had often done it before when they had plundered some small ships, but it could never be this precise. He finally resigned himself to his fate when he looked at the ten blackened gun barrels again and thought of the ship half of its hull blown off. Slow down. The two sides were 800m apart, 500m. 200m. The last Spanish galleon came to a halt. Toussaint climbed onto the bow of the almost ruined ship, stood on two crossed raised planks, and shouted towards the other side. Who in the world are you and why trying to kill us? You're a bounty group, not pirates. Why are you robbing us? Do you know who I am? We are affiliated with the United Merchant Bank. Aren't you afraid? A thick arrow flew past Toussaint's face before he could finish his sentence and nailed the captain's cabin door framed 30 meters behind him. From the opposite boat came several people, led by a woman. Avril stood on the bow deck and looked coldly at Toussaint. Captain Toussaint, do you remember me? 93. Forgiveness is between you and God. Toussaint stared intently at Avril, trying to remember. Avril sneered, it feels good to be played by cannonballs, doesn't it? Suddenly, Toussaint's face began to look unnatural. Yes, it's you, Edic's granddaughter. You're Avril. Impossible. You, aren't you already dead? Your ship has been destroyed.
you couldn't have withstood that much wind and waves. Toussaint's expression grew horrified. That's impossible. Avril frowned slightly. This guy not only knows her name but also her grandfather's name. In theory, they could not have known this information. Avril had thought they were following them on a whim. Avril said coldly, I didn't think you two investigate my information by design. Are you trying to kill us all? But the result let you down. All my relatives were on that boat. On that fishing boat you sank. For three years, I never forget the pain you brought me. Today I will make you pay in blood. Hold on. Toussaint suddenly shouted, Avril, don't fire. I was just following the wishes of the young lord of the United Merchants Bank. Avril frowned slightly. Avril, your grandfather was Edic. Your ancestors were the first group of seafarers. They found a treasure in the early days of the Earth's submersion. It is said that the treasure map is in your grandfather's hands. Toussaint's voice was slightly anxious. At this distance, they would definitely die as long as Avril ordered. He had to explain it as soon as possible. The senior management of the United Merchants Bank knew the secret from somewhere. And they traced it back to your family and asked us to capture you. I admit that I had some thoughts about you. But I really had no intention of following you guys before I got the order. It all started because of the United Merchants Bank. You say I got your family killed. But at least you're still alive, aren't you? You've sunk four of my ships, and my crew has been killed and injured. Isn't that much enough to offset your anger? I know you're a kind girl. Please let me go. I've paid enough. Spare me. After Toussaint finished speaking, all the crew members of that boat came to the foredeck. Yes, spare us. Avril looked at the crew of that ship. She remembered clearly, the first mate who had steered the ship, the gunner who had opened fire, the crew who had screamed and shouted, and some she didn't know at all. About two hundred people were begging for her. Avril sighed slightly and looked at Rain, Captain I. Rain looked at Avril lightly, it's up to you. My decision may disappoint you. Rain smiled faintly, that's okay. Avril nodded with the captain's support, then took a deep breath and looked at Toussaint. Toussaint, you did lose a lot. Four ships plus these goods. That is enough to ruin you. Yes, yes. I, I've lost everything. There are at least 300,000 pearls here all sunk into the sea. Please, give me a break. Avril snorted coldly. Unfortunately, what you've lost is worth nothing compared to my family. Toussaint jerked his head up and looked at Avril in horror. Avril's gaze had gone grim. That's how my mother begged to you back then. But did you leave them alone? No, you didn't. We both know that if we were caught by you, maybe you would have left us alive so that you could go back and get those rewards. But you would definitely abuse my family recklessly. Toussaint, even if you were ordered to track us down in the first place, so what? My family died at the hands of you and your crew. If I let you go, you would never be kind enough to let go, would you? Sorry, my kindness is never reserved for the devil. Forgiveness is between you and God. It's my job to arrange the meeting. After saying that, Avril looked at Rain. Her gaze flickered a little, but she finally gnashed her teeth and said, Captain, help me to kill them. Rain smiled faintly, no problem. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. A series of shells flew towards the opposite side where the crew had gathered. In a moment, the Spanish galleon was instantly ignited by cannon fire, and shell fragments burst through the crowd. Blood, flame, and fury exploded on the last ship. One round, two rounds, three full rounds of bombardment. Rain almost blasted the ship to cinders. Arson and the others were salvaging materials. Rain told them to search mainly for pearls and canvas. Other salvage that was difficult was not needed. Their load capacity is not too big after all. Loading more stuff would affect the speed of the ship. A large number of bodies floating on the sea. Five or six hundred. Of course, these were not all. There should be some in the hull. Followed by the ship sinking into the sea. Not long, Arson dragged a man up. This guy's body was full of wounds. Only one breath in. This man was none other than Captain Toussaint. Avril you, how cruel! Avril walked up to Toussaint and looked at him coldly. You're the one who taught me that if you're not ruthless enough in this world, you would only die. He 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 he, ha 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 ha. Toussaint laughed out loud cough cough cough. Do you think you can run away? Dare to attack the United Merchants ship. They will definitely find you. You will definitely die. Rain came over, friend. Many people are looking for us. You have to get in line. Toussaint gasped and sized up Rain. Was this little kid the one who had threatened to destroy them? Unfortunately, he did it. Who the hell is he? She, Avril. Do you think this much blood would attract sharks? Rain looked at the sea and deliberately looked worried. Avril's family was eaten by sharks. After not much time, the heavy smell of blood immediately attracted swarms of sharks. 
Avro coldly looked at Toussaint and said to one bear, One bear, throw him down. Let him have a taste of that. With pleasure. One bear smiled faintly and walked towards Toussaint. No, don't. Avril, kill me, kill me. One bear came over, lifted Toussaint, and threw him into the sharks without saying a word. With a scream, Toussaint was instantly dragged into the seawater. The sea surface emerged with shocking blood-red seawater. Looking at the murderer who killed her family and also tasted the pain of being torn by sharks, Avril who had been holding back finally could not help but cry. She finally avenged her parents and her brothers. She finally let her enemies get what they deserved. Sister Avril. Fancy Armin. And Arson walked up to Avril and hugged her tightly. Good girl, don't cry. You still have us. 94. Legend of the Sun Fountain. Azure Sky. Azure Sea. A British patrol ship quietly drove on the surface of the sea. Three ships loaded with metal sank to the bottom of the sea and could not be salvaged. The timber in the two boats was scattered all over the place instead. But unfortunately, Rain did not want these things. Rain also thought he was gotten too cocky lately. If in the past, he would go to great lengths to collect all the wood. But now it was different. A pearl can buy ten units of wood. It was not good for his navigation with so much heavy and take up spaced wood. In the current situation, it is more important to ensure the speed of the ship unless it is on a navy protected voyage. In addition to some supply materials, the focus of everyone's salvage was still on the pearl. Armin and the others were counting the pearls they had salvaged. With the two gold chests they had found, they had harvested nearly 30,000 pearls on this trip. Of course, the pearls were secondary. The point was Avril's revenge was finally avenged. Avril's mood was much more stable, and she sat alone on the deck dazed. Rain came over and sat beside her. Hey, a pearl for your thought. Captain, am I too cruel? Are you disappointed in me? Rain smiled faintly. Oh, to be honest, I was afraid that you let them go. Avril looked at Rain half-heartedly. Really? In your mind, shouldn't I be an easily soft-hearted girl? Yeah, that's why I was worried. But it's good you didn't let me down. Rain continued. I used to be an ordinary person, not even fought a few times. But I know the truth that to be merciful to your enemies is to be cruel to yourself. Avril, they can do that to your family. Then they will also do that to others. Avril repeated Rain's words blankly. To be merciful to your enemies is to be cruel to yourself. Yes, if I let them go, then we would be in hot water. Rain smiled and patted Avril's arm, ready to stand up. Suddenly, Avril pulled Rain's tiny hand. Captain, you, nothing to ask me? Yes, of course there is. I'm just looking at you in a low mood, Rain replied. Avril was amused by Rain's money-hungry look. This was the first time she smiled since her revenge. It's nothing really. Just, I finally avenged them. Captain, ask whatever you want. Rain resat next to Avril. Your family was the first group of mariners? I don't know about that. But when my grandfather was young, he was a seaman indeed. That's why he had that chart. Rain thought about it and said, Didn't your grandfather ever mention treasure or anything? Avril carefully recalled for a while, but finally shook her head. No. Rain was a little disappointed. Oh yes, Captain. Although my grandfather did not mention the treasure, he told me about a place. Avril suddenly woke up. He mentioned that place to me and my brothers more than once. What place? The Fountain of the Sun. Avril recalled my grandfather said that somewhere at the bottom of the endless sea, a huge dragon guarding a cave there. There was no seawater in that cave. It was just like a strange space that the seawater could not enter it. In that cave, there is a fountain named Sun Fountain. My grandfather often said that human selfishness and evil deeds will eventually be punished. Greed and lust will create unparalleled demons. Only the Sun Fountain can wash away the sins of human beings. Another esoteric legend. Rain had been immune to this. People had been also believing in God and Buddha in times of peace, let alone in today's world full of unknown and horror. There should be a lot of these kinds of legends and prophecies just like spiritual pillars. Rain pondered for half a day but did not understand what the old man wanted to express. Perhaps this just is an old man's faith. Seemed like he can't count on this legendary treasure. It is better to change the subject. Avril, your road to revenge is not over yet. Um, Captain, you mean the United Merchants Bank? Aren't they too strong for us? Yes, they are the boys in the back room. Rain said even if I do not want to trouble them, they will come to trouble us. Why? Have they found us out? Avril looked at Rain nervously. It's not hard to find us. First, my current body is the son of Poseidon. I won't be able to hide it sooner or later even if I hide deeper. Second, if the United Merchants Bank know that you were still alive, Perhaps they would not give up to search for that so-called treasure. So, 
I believe they will get about us sooner or later whether the D-Class Bounty Group or the United Merchants Bank. We must always be prepared. Rain rarely looked grave. We must grow fast and be strong enough to fight them all the time. But you don't need to be nervous either. I didn't say we would go to them now. We should still develop first. Although Rain was weak in the past and live in Clover in no man's land, as his strength continued to grow, he would be involved in the Azure Era competition. So, Captain, what do we do next? Next? Rain winked mysteriously at Avril. Do you know where the Black Hell merchant usually ship their slaves to be sold? Captain, are you going to buy Fancy's clans? Of course, there are too few crew members now. If we encountered a cutthroat fight, y'all would not even have time to reload shells. I need to recruit more reliable crew members. Avril got excited all of a sudden. Rain called out when she was about to tell Fancy. Don't tell them. Give them a surprise. A month later, the ship docked at an island, Bankra Island. This is not a small trading market or a harbor for docking ships. This is an island in human-class waters covering hundreds of kilometers. There are large fences built around Bankra Island. According to Avril's introduction, these fences serve a great purpose. Besides defending against enemies, they can also divert the sea currents to avoid the island being flooded. There are a large number of ships docked in the shallows outside the fence. Several of the harbors seem to be dedicated to large ships. The smallest ship inside is 35 meters. Behind the enclosure, Rain saw the island was almost full of houses. Densely packed. In this era, the land is so precious. Naturally, no one dares to waste a little space. Holy shit, we finally see real land. Rain was hyped and his eyes were full of fascination. It was worth mentioning that now he had grown into the appearance of an eight or nine-year-old boy about one meter four. Wow, Terry was even more full of shock. Those who can afford to buy a house here must be tycoons. Rain didn't expect that houses are still a luxury after 300 years. However, Rain was not here to see the house. He looked at the spectacular Bankra Island and smiled faintly. Yo, human class C? I'm coming. 95. Bankra Island. What? The registration officer at the door looked at Rain in shock. Dad Bounty Group. Rain had to repeat. The staff member took a deep breath. Such a name was simply unheard of. Not long after, he found this bounty corps on the thick hardcover roster. Registered in the Sicily Trading Market Station Navy Squadron, sub -G Bounty Group, 8,600 points, and N, only one ship? Yes, this is it, Rain said impatiently. The Bankra Island procedures are much more complicated than Port Angel. The man shook his head, probably pondering what kind of weird bounty group this was. You are here for the first time, so listen carefully to a few rules on Bankra Island. The man said as he took notes on the roster. First, fighting and brawling are forbidden on the island. Even if you meet with your father killing enemy, you are not allowed fight on the island. But you can go out and fight again. It is forbidden to break into people's houses and destroy them. All houses here are protected by the government. You will be sheltered in our place as long as you have money. Molestation of women is prohibited. You will have fun in the tavern. All disturbances to the island's security are prohibited. All three points in the first article should be paid special attention. These are felonies. Our army has the right to execute on the spot once violated. Second, it is forbidden to cut down trees and excavate stones. Third, when there is an emergency, all people will follow the arrangements of the government. That is important. Also, there is a fee for boats docking off the island. You have to pay five pearls to dock inside the wall every day. Our guards will guarantee the safety of the boats. We are not responsible for security outside the wall, so that is two pearls a day. If there is spending on the island, 100 pearls of spending will offset the two pearl docking fee. Rain was stunned. Unexpectedly, they had the right to execute on the spot. The docking fee was also expensive. The VIP parking space needs five pearls. That's the equivalent of what they used to earn for a transport mission. And just the docking position needs two pearls. Although the parking lot charges, consumption can be free of charge. So a thought, Rain immediately relieved. Park inside. The man raised his eyes and looked at Rain. Do all these people listen to this little brat? Okay, 50 pearl deposit first, please. Avril paid the 50 pearls and asked for a receipt. Then Rain took the ship and entered the island. After the ship docked, Rain let Fancy, one bear, and two bears stay on the ship. The others went off the ship with him to the trading market. Suddenly, a familiar figure came back into Raven's sight. Well, well, well. Looks like we've met an old friend again. Rain met the mysterious businesswoman again, Aoi. Let's go see what the hell is this. Rain came to Aoi's booth, 
and Avro greeted Aoi warmly. Hello Aoi. But the businesswoman gave a puzzled expression. You are. Oh. I see. You must have mistaken me for my sister Aoi. My name is Boy. Avro was a bit embarrassed. They were both wearing capes after all. And they are sisters, which was really hard to tell. Whatever, Rain opened the system and wanted to see the basic data of this boy. Name Maui. Rain was stunned. Black lines covered Rain's forehead. What the hell is this? You don't say you have 26 sisters, do you? At the same time, this boy seemed to have sensed something. She walked towards Rain. Ayala what a cute little brother. Then she touched Rain's face with both hands without any further ado and kneaded it into various shapes. The Rain unable to resist completely felt this woman was too scary. In the moment of launching the probe just now, Rain felt that his underpants were seen through instead. AVR. Hop me. Boy too much. Oh I am sorry. The boy let go of her hand and apologized with a smile. After all, it was the first time I had seen such a lovely body. Rain wanted to get away from this hellhole. Avril, let's go. Finally, they left the place and came to the slave market. The slave market here is much more formal than in Port Angel. At least it looks like a market. There are dozens of areas large and small. Slave sellers would rent space to sell slaves. Inside the grounds, there were also a lot of buyers coming and going. The market was filled with the sound of people bargaining as well as the cries of slaves, and even some people were flogging some disobedient slaves in public. The scene was chaotic, but not out of control. Rain checked the map of the area at the entrance and found the area of the Black Hell Mercantile. Armin said that the main business of the Black Hell Mercantile was not in the human class C, so they just rented a random venue in Bankra Island. There was a lot of activity around the area on the way to the Black Hell Mercantile. You should not miss it definitely. Mutant Slave Sale, Biological Mutant, Specialty Mutant, Suit All Pockets. All come to see. Quality slaves, young and strong, hardworking, and beautiful women. The last four days, sold out to go away. Rain took a look at a few women on the stage. Not very old, not covered, timidly shrinking together, waiting to be bought. A few male buyers came up to the stage and put their hands on them from time to time. But they had to put up with it. Rain is also a little horny. After all, he is a normal man. But he felt more or less uncomfortable after seeing this scene. However, he was only one person after all. His current strength was still too weak to change the fate of everyone. After walking for a short time, the crowd arrived in front of the Black Helm Merchant's booth. Last time Rain had scanned all of Fancy's clan and Port Angel. The system still had a backup. There were two booths here with a total of 400 or 500 people of which only 70 or 80 were in the backup. It seemed that the Black Hell merchants shipped other slaves to this side as well. The person in charge here was much more professional than those crew members. Seeing Rain and others standing here for a while, he immediately greeted them with a smile. His eyes slipped around Avril, beauty by slaves? We have a lot of strong men here. Avril gave the guy a blank look. Where do you get all your slaves here? There is nothing strange about asking where the slaves come from. After all, People in this era are serious about genetics. Oh, there are from all places. We have records here. The man led them to the side of the booth and let the staff access the information. There were 473 slaves here, mainly from four places. Among them are 81 slaves from Fancy's homeland Sea God Island. These places have produced a lot of mutants. Beauty, where do you prefer slaves? Avril was not to answer in a hurry. She asked, what's the price of it all? Oh, for ordinary people. 25 pearls for men. Women between 10 to 50 depending on their looks and age. For mutant. First stage mutant between 500 and 700. Second stage mutants were all sold out. Oh we have a third stage left now. The guy is worth 1000 pearls. Indeed the price here was more expensive than the port angel. It only cost 40 pearls to buy one bear and two bear at that time. But now it would cost 20% more at least. Avril pretended to ask about the Sea Serpent Island situation first, then shook her head, and then entered the subject, what is the situation of this Sea God Island? Beauty you really have good eyes. They have a high percentage of mutants in their ethnic group. We have sold a lot, and now only 81 people are left. 60 ordinary people and 21 mutant. I said the 1000 pearl guy also belonged to their ethnic group. Only the guy is not a combatant, so he has a low price and has not been sold. But he is in the third stage after all. Which means that the genes of this group are very good. Rain's heart was dripping blood. The most expensive was all in the fancy tribe. But the third stage mutant only sold 1000 pearls. This price was really cheap. Beauty, 
How many slaves are you going to buy? Fifty. Avril said, pick out the sixty ordinary people. I'll choose some. The waiter's eyes were rolling quickly. The women wanted to buy fifty. This was a big deal. Ninety-six. Mr. Tick. The waiter began to pull out all the people of Fancy's tribe in a hurry. The customer wanted fifty. But he wanted to sell one hundred. Oh, beautiful, Captain. How about them? Look at their bodies. Very strong, right? And you look at these mutants. I have to tell you the truth. It took a lot of effort to get them. Avril had a difficult look when she was choosing. Well, indeed quite good. So many mutants. It must be of great use if I could buy them back. But I only intend to buy fifty ordinary slaves. Terry also shook his head. These mutants are not simple indeed. But we'd better go to Port Angel to buy mutant. Rain watched their performance in silence. Just leave the bargaining to them anyway. Half an hour later. Beauty, let's close the book. Sixty ordinary slaves and twenty-one mutants. A total of fourteen thousand four hundred pearls. I'll give you a twenty-five percent discount. The total is ten thousand eight hundred pearls. This price I am giving you exactly according to the port angel. Avril shook her head and said forget it. I was only going to spend a thousand or so. I would not spend eleven thousand at once. Too much over budget. That's right. If we go to Port Angel and buy so much in one go, they will give us a discount. Terry pulled Avril. Let's just go. Hey hey, wait a minute. Ten thousand. You take them away only ten thousand. It really can't be any lower. I've already given up a lot of profit. Nine thousand. Nine thousand will buy it all. Armin quoted the lowest price. Rain looked at the attendant's expression that was about to cry. This expression was deja vu. Wasn't it the same way Goldwell was selling the treasure map? These guys always drive a hard bargain that makes the seller want to cry. They bought 81 slaves with 9,200 pearls in the end. The extra 200 was Rain added. Otherwise, Rain did not know how long need to delay. These shackled slaves lined up in long lines with numb expressions and followed Avril out of the market. Fancy was sitting bored on the boat, looking at Bankra Island hands on the cheeks. Captain did not take me to play this time. Unhappiness was almost written on Fancy's face. One bear and two bear were cleaning the ship aside. Fancy, don't think nonsense. Someone has to stay and watch the boat. I'm sure Captain will take you next time. Fancy muttering, not happy anyway. As she was talking, Fancy saw a large group of people coming towards the mooring area. When the group of people got closer, she saw the Captain and Avril. Fancy stood up at a loss. Brother one bear and two bear, come and look. One bear and two bear put down what they were doing and came over. Both of them also froze at the same time. The mop in one bear's hand fell to the ground. Not long after, Rain led the team to the boat. Fancy one bear, two bear. Look who we brought. Those slaves got on the deck one by one. When they saw the three people in front of them, their numb faces all changed. Princess Fancy. One bear, two bear. One bear and two bear's eyes were wet right away. Uncle, aunt, everyone. You. The scene was chaotic at once. One bear, two bear and Fancy identified everyone, calling their names. Everyone cried out in pain. Since they were Fancy's clans, Rain let Avril open everyone's shackles. It was not until the evening that their emotions calmed down. Rain pushed the door open and walked out with Avril and the others when he felt the quiet outside. A figure jumped into his arms just as he stepped out. Captain, thank you so much. It was supposed to be a very romantic scene. If ones ignore this just a little girl and a much younger child cuddling together. One bear and two bears stood aside with their heads bowed. Captain, words cannot express how thankful we are. After that, they knelt in front of Rain. Thanks Captain for saving my family. We will follow the Captain to death. Many thanks, Captain. The other Sea God clans also followed and knelt in front of Rain. Rain felt a little uncomfortable seeing the scene. He cleared his throat, frowned, and said, Hey hey, what is this? Get up quickly. We are family aren't we? Avril Armin, you get them up. Rain had intended to add ten crew members. It would be better if the mutant. He doesn't need much crew except for the elite. But he couldn't ignore so many of the Sea God clans, simply by them all. Those Sea God clans were asleep after a full meal. They finally sleep a restful sleep today. Inside the captain's room, Rain was having a meeting with several members of his crew. I want to buy a house in Bankra Island. Buy a house. The crowd looked at Rain in shock. Yes. Rain replied. I found out that all the forces have their bases that they use as supply locations. It can be used as a reserve of personnel and materials. While we cannot afford to take over an island as our main base now, we must plan for the future. Bankra Island has a very strong strength and good order. 
how about we just set up a temporary base here, and we can also arrange for more people to settle down. Avril nodded Captain, that is right indeed. Almost all of the major powers have their independent islands. Developing and building the islands requires a large number of people. If we go to some people hastily, it is not reliable. Yes, Captain you need a lot of supplies for the next level. And our current ship is not suitable to carry too many supplies. So we can put it in the temporary base. Arson said. Terry frowned, Captain you are right. But the house here is very expensive. I used to want to settle in the human class C. The cheapest medium-sized island like Bankra Island is 40 to 80 pearls a square meter. Rain looked to Avril. How much money do we have left now? 72,669 pearls. That should be enough. Rain said, spend all the money at worst. All? Yes, all. The house must be as big as possible. Or I live uncomfortably. Rain had a smug face. Besides, when we get to the human class C, afraid you cannot make money? Fancy. Pick ten of your clans who want to come with me. Others will stay in the base. No one dares to move them with the house in Bankra. Fancy lowered her head a little. Look at her expression seemed to have some difficult words. What's wrong? Rain asked curiously. Captain, everyone else is okay. But my teacher. Your teacher? Yeah, it's that third stage mutant. His name is Tick, a combat teacher of our Sea God clan. He could only train other mutants because he was injured in a battle many years ago and couldn't fight. Rain was taken aback. No wonder the Black Hell merchants were so cheerful. They said his ability was some kind of construction class. Bullshit. He was still too young. 200 pearls down the drain. Fancy continued, my master said he didn't want to stay if you wouldn't force him. Mr. Tick has a high reputation among the mutant. The others seem intent on following him. They want to go. For revenge? Rain guessed right away. Fancy was silent. It looked like Rain guessed correctly. Revenge? Revenge for what? Rain shook his head. As a teacher, how can he be so stupid? Just a few people. They are working their own undoing. At that moment, a knock sounded outside the door. Then a strong man barged in, Captain, I am Tick. I heard what you just said. I admit I was a bit impulsive. But when you watch your loved ones being killed, your students dying in battle, countless clans being treated like hogs, can you still say such words? Rain slammed the table and looked at Tick angrily. Sorry, I can. 97. Base. To everyone's surprise, a child of 8 or 9 years old was not worse than a 30-year-old man in momentum. Rain walked towards Tick. So you want to take those people to die just because you are unwilling? Do you think every captain who would buy you will give you freedom? There are many more of your clans who are living like hogs on some ship. There are more of your clans waiting to be bought and taken away to do free labor for the rest of their lives. For the anger and hatred in your heart, you are going to take those 20 mutants to their deaths? To bury the only hope of saving your people? Tick, how dare you be a teacher? You're just a rat. The room was silent for a moment and even the angry Tick became speechless. Rain stared at Tick. I will not stop you if you want to die. I just want to ask you three questions. Can these twenty of you shake the black hell? If you die, will your sea god clans have a second chance? Can you change anything even if you die in battle? Decide yourselves after thinking it over. After saying that, Rain returned to his seat and looked at Tick indifferently. In fact, Rain was also nervous. That was ten thousand pearls. He will have a heavy loss if they go. Rain did not know whether his words would keep the 10,000 pearls. Tick slowly raised his head, staring at Rain long time. Then he looked at Fancy and the others. After a long time, he finally sighed. Your words scolded me to wake up. Fancy is right. I have too underestimated you. You are a remarkable captain. Sorry, I was too reckless just now. Rain also breathed a sigh of relief. It seemed that his 10,000 pearls were saved. Actually, there was another reason for Tick to leave. Fancy just said Rain is the captain but did not say Rain's true identity. Although this group of people was grateful to Rain, a captain less than 10 years old made people feel unreliable more or less. But Rain's words proved that his mind was not a child. You have a farther vision than me. Those who have a long vision must have greater ambition. Captain, we are willing to follow you. Tick bowed to Rain slightly. Rain nodded in satisfaction. Go back and rest. We have a long road ahead. The next day... Rain took a group of people to buy the property. At the sales office, Rain had an eye on an area of 1,800 square meters that had just been developed. This area was built for ordinary home buyers. The houses were small. The smallest was 5 or 6 square meters. The largest was only a dozen square meters. And the price was not high, 45 pearls a square meter. The total selling price of this area was 81,000 pearls, which was more than Rain could afford. 
but Rain had been hesitant to give up this place, mainly for two reasons. Firstly, this area was relatively independent. It was surrounded by rocks, forming an island within an island. This area is very suitable as a base that their ship can even drive in. Secondly, there were many rocky hills behind the area, about 1,200 square meters. These rocks were forbidden to be developed by the government. Although the area cannot be used to build houses, they can be planted, farmed, and stacked with goods. So the overall area of this piece was 3,000 square meters in fact. And these rocky hills were not counted in the total area, which means that if he would buy this place, it is equal to a gift of 1,200 square meters. Why are you guys keep asking about the overall situation of this area? I think it is meaningless. Which one do you in the world want to buy? The person in charge of the sales office was already a little impatient. These guys came over and named him to serve, but the result he had been asking questions by this little kid. The adults behind him did not say a word, which was fucking with him. Even the surrounding employees were a little unbearable. Guys, it is not a place for sightseeing and tourism if you would not buy. That's right. It can't be that you are spies sent by other companies. Look at your outfits. Want to buy the whole housing area? If you would not buy it, then leave quickly and don't waste our time here. This new housing area is not opened until three days later. So don't ask. Rain shook his head. The place was chosen. Just leave the bargaining to the crew. It's not his strong point. Avril, Terry, you guys talk to him. Arson, one bear and two bear casually put down the canvas bags behind them. Once heard the clatter, the surrounding people cannot help but be shocked. In this bag, it can all be, pearls? How many pearls is that? Avril came to the point, how much is the minimum? The manager couldn't keep his eyes off the three bags. Gulped, his attitude improved at once. What? Where? Of course the whole area we asked for a long time. The whole, everyone, let's talk in the house, okay? Are you thirsty? I have prepared tea for you all. We are not thirsty, say it straight. How much is the minimum? If it is still according to the price you said, we will go. If you have any internal prices and discount prices, give us a count in. We would have a spot deal if the price is suitable. Avril said we do not have much time. Hurry up and offer. The people around took a deep breath of cold air at the same time. Toussaint owned five Spanish galleons, but he only had a few small tens of thousands of pearls in fact. It would take 80,000 pearls to buy the whole housing area. This amount was something that not many people can take out at once even in the whole of Bankra Island. Unexpectedly, these few unimpressive guys wanted to buy it all at once. This feeling is just like a sudden person running into the sales office and saying, I want to buy the whole property. The employee who handed over the water shook so much that the water spilled. Seeing this, the manager took over the water in a hurry but found his hand shaking even more. Drink water first. I'll go call our boss. Not long after. A man came down from the inner office. Please come inside. Let's sit down and have a good talk. Sitting down and talking meant they can cut the price. In that case, Rain didn't have to worry about it. After a battle of wits, they ended up with a deal of 72,500 pearls. It was about a 10% discount. House bargaining was a lot harder than for slaves. This discount was already rare. After all, the cost of building a house was not high, but the cost of land was. With the land permanent use certificate in hand, Rain and the others returned to the boat and drove it from the inland river to their base. Looking at this large area, Rain was quite satisfied. Everyone, here is the main base of our dad bounty corps. Also your home. 98. New income. The people of the Sea God clans looked around in excitement, while Rain likewise with a group of people patrolled the surrounding area. This island within an island extends from Bankra Island and consists mainly of huge rocks with a high elevation. The western and northern areas are connected to the island with the outlet of an inland river to the southwest. And the east side is adjacent to the sea. There's a wall over here. It's good. Terry pointed to the area connected to the main body of Bankra Island. Strangers could not enter with this 5 meter high fence and gate. Terry Tick you guys go buy some food seeds and livestock youngsters to raise in the mountain area. Rain turned to Avril and said, Avril, how much money do we have left? Only 169 pearls left. Oh, and a deposit of 50 pearls. That's 219 pearls. They had had 100,000 pearls. Now they were left with a fraction. However, Rain did not care much. Okay, that should be enough. If not enough, just sell some metal ingots. One bear and two bear, you go buy some more quilts cotton clothes or something. Soon to winter. The price of quilts should not be cheap. Oh yes, there's some canvas on board should be able to use. Now purr, we scrape by for the time being. 
Tix said in a hurry, Captain, you do not say so. You have done too much for us. I really do not know how to thank you. I, I apologize to you again for my previous attitude. It's all in the past. There's no need to mention it again. Besides, getting the base built is a strong guarantee for me, Rain said with a smile. The people in the base could be self-sufficient with these things. But that wasn't enough. Since it was a base, it had to be able to provide him with extra help at least. Hey, do you guys have any other ways to make money? Terry said right away, Captain, we are west of the sea, so we can raise some fish in the spring. But to raise fish, we still need a few fishing boats. Rain realized, yeah, we can buy a few fishing boats when we earn money. Not only can we raise fish, but also can go fishing in the nearby sea. Right, in front of us is the mouth of the sea. There should be fish. The crowd has reached the eastern side of the sea, which is only a few hundred meters from the fence, and there was still a narrow stretch of seawater under their feet. It was not possible to fish in this place, but for breeding. While the crowd was checking the surroundings, a twenty-odd meter boat not far away turned a corner from the estuary and drove towards them. One bear and others alerted up, standing by Rain's side at the ready. In a short time, the ship came closer. A scruffy middle-aged man stood on the bow deck. He stared with big eyes when looked at so many people on shore and said, Hello, this is your territory? Rain looked at him warily, Yeah? Oh, that's good. The man breathed a sigh of relief. Rain frowned, wondering what this guy was up to. The boat stopped in front of Rain and the others. Since Rain and the others were on higher ground, so if this guy was going to have any ideas, Rain and the others were at a geographical advantage at least. The man said with all smiles to Tick, seeming that he took the taller Tick as the leader of the gang. Dude, how much to dock the ship for three nights? Tick looked at Rain in confusion, and Rain was a bit baffled. Avril said, shouldn't you park your boat in the harbor? What are you doing here? Hey, it's really expensive over there. Five pearls a day. If you park outside the wall, the boat would be swept away without knowing. I think here can park too. So I'll park here if it's more convenient and cheaper. Rain's eyes were getting wide. Still have this kind of trick? Rain thought about it and said, how much can you give? Um. One pearl a day okay? Are you kidding me? Two pearls a day, Rain replied. But we don't guarantee the safety of your ships. Two pearls, okay. Well it's inside the wall at least. But can you send someone to watch over it? There's nothing on my ship, just don't let anyone else take it. Rain brainstormed. The east side was used for a fish farm and was too close to the wall to park a ship. But this large area to the southeast could be used as a small port. A ship two pearls a day, he did not ask for much. If it would park 10, that was 20 pearls a day. So a month was 600 pearls. This was a considerable income. It was no exaggeration to say it is enough to support the normal expenses of the base operation just the income of parking ships. Plus so many other additional incomes, this base can already achieve a profit. Of course, he was able to charge such high fees relying on the fence and good order of Bankra Island. But it was not on his conscience to exploit the advantage of the Bankra Island. We do not guarantee safety. Rain replied, even if you stop at the toll port, and they talk a good game and guarantee the safety of the ship if someone steals the ship, can they see it? You're better off keeping the crew to do that. The man listened and frowned, the little guy was right. In fact, it is not safe to leave the safety of the ship in the hands of outsiders. Even if parked in the 5 pearl port, he still has to leave people to watch over. And stop here for one night only 2 pearls, cheaper than next door by 60%. Hesitating, again and again, the man still agreed. The difference is too big. The price of five pearls is too high for a small boat like theirs. They didn't have many people on board, about thirty. After paying the deposit, the captain left five people behind and the others went ashore. Brother, do you have a house for rent here? What? What the hell is this guy? Do they force him to make money? Although Rain did not decide whether to rent a house to them, this guy seemed to have given him a way to make money again. After thinking about it, Rain said no. Even if there was good security here, the base was not yet formed for outsiders to live in. Oh, then I'll look elsewhere. And do you have pork for sale here? If you have it here, I'll save myself from running to the trading market to buy it. Rain froze. He had a good feeling for this scruffy captain all at once. He had given Rain three ideas with his three questions. Talent? Yes. If they do some sales or something, this would be another income. No wonder those forces rushed to get the base. The benefits of the base are too much. Of course, the base of rain was not yet formed. But it does not matter. Just a little longer, this will become a new income growth point. And a long-term and stable growth point. The pearls were well spent. 
Bankra Island might not expect that a group of people was secretly getting the best deal. 99. Explore Mission Since winter was coming, Rain and the others stopped going to the sea to build the base with the people of the Sea God clans. When these people who had lost hope for their lives were free again, all the Sea God clans cherished this opportunity, and everyone did their best to build their new home. With the efforts of all the people, the base gradually took shape. They set aside a small area alone for mooring ships. All crew members who come ashore must enter and exit along the outer edge of the base. In addition, there have specialized someone to watch over the ships. Their prices were so cheap that more and more ships chose to dock here secretly. The 15 parking spaces were hardly ever free. In four months, the income from mooring the ships alone was 1,900 pearls. Rain purchased three 20-meter fishing boats with these and replenished more living supplies. The planting and breeding area of the base was also taking shape fast. These Sea God clans were old hands and no need for Rain to worry about them at all. On the rocky hillside there were people who specialize in sheep and pigs, chickens and ducks. Rain did not consider leasing out rooms for the time being. He didn't like strangers living in his base after all. Rain spent on shore four months. Everyone's efforts made the base of the Dad Bounty Group take shape. It was worth mentioning that Rain saw the value of Tick during this time. Under his training, Arson, One Bear, and Two Bear managed to break through the bottleneck and reach the second stage. The other mutants also improved in level with the abundance of food. Tick's experience was a huge help to improve the overall strength of the mutant. In March, the base was picking up steam. Rain realized that he was going to start the journey again. That night Rain sat in his room with his crew as well as 21 mutants. At this time, Rain already looked like a 10-year-old boy. According to the previous growth rate, he should have been more than 10 years old. But the strange thing was that his appearance and height change became slow by the age of 10 all of a sudden. With no difference from normal people, Rain did not know what the hell happened. However, there was an advantage that the others did not become suspicious of him. I plan to take 10 people to the sea with me. But I want to state one thing. In order to ensure that we can work together more tacitly, my crew will not change. Once you choose to go to sea, you have to travel with me to the south and north. Rain's voice was still very young, but it seemed more confident than before. Captain, we are all willing to listen to your arrangements. A young man in his early twenties said, It is equally important whether we are on the ship or staying to defend the base. Rain smiled. It seemed that everyone's awareness had increased quite a bit. So is there anyone in particular who wants to come with me? Me. Captain, I want to go with you. Several people stood up right away. I also want to, Captain. I will practice harder. Captain, I want to go too. Seeing that the crowd was so motivated, Rain laughed. Don't be in a hurry. I will need more crew members in the future. This time I will only take 10 people. Although there is no problem with security here, we must also have our own armed forces. They cannot be left unprotected. At this moment, Tick stood up, Captain is right. The base also needs defense forces. Captain, how about this? Let me pick them, I know them all well. Seeing Rain nod, Tick began to roll call and a total of 10 people were selected. The names were not called does not mean you are weak. I just choose personnel according to the match. The base is our backbone that also needs strong people to guard. Rain looked at Tick, Tick coming with us? Tick froze for a moment, he also want to go with Rain. For a moment of hesitation, he gave a long sigh and said Captain, I also want to go with you, but you know my situation. I can only act as an assistant and cannot help you win the battle. I am afraid to become a burden on you, I. Rain smiled, Tick, I need you very much. Come with us. Tick raised his head in surprise, the eyes that had already given up lit up a glimmer of hope, Captain, I. There is no problem taking one more person on my ship. I don't need you to fight but to help me train my crew, and me of course. Another discovery Rain made during this time was that he found that he hadn't undergone a specific mutation though, his physique was stronger than normal, and he seemed to be able to learn both Arson's fighting techniques and One Bear and Two Bear's skills. Rain would have liked to learn, but there were other ships docked here every day. It was a bit inconvenient, so that's why he decided to learn when he was out at sea. Captain, that is my great honor, Tick said excitedly. Rain smiled and nodded, good, then it's decided. Let's get ready again and see if there are any missions by the way. Set off when we find the right one. The next day, Rain took Avril, Fancy, and One Bear to the mission release point on Bankra Island. The human class C was big. The mission release point is clearly a square. Here, there are special transport tasks, search and rescue tasks, and bounty tasks, divided into different categories. 
Wow, a lot of missions. Fancy jumped around happily. She finally had a chance to come out and play. The crowd first looked at the transport task here, where the transport weight is calculated according to tons and transport distance is often several thousand nautical miles. Of course, the pay is not the Morgan can compare. The reward here for all the transport tasks is no less than 300 pearls. In the past, Rain was happy to take on this task, but now it's different. With the base as a stable source of income, Rain was not much interested in the task of earning only 300 pearls a month. Cocky me really. Rain said go, go elsewhere. There were still many bounty missions. After all, pirates are particularly rampant at this time of year. The bounty missions here were still handled by the navy. Many were bounties for G-class pirates, and even appear at G8 and G9 levels. Armin went to get a full copy of the wanted. Search and rescue missions were also a lot of cost effective but a lot of people were grabbing. Rain did not want to crowd with them and continued to go to the next place. This display area was obviously much less crowded, and there was only one mission on the blackboard. Hello guys, come to take the exploration mission? You are lucky. We just got an exploration mission a month ago. Come and have a look. The person in charge here was a young woman, and she looked enthusiastic when she saw Rain and the others. Rain had heard of this first time. He went over and asked, What kind of mission is it? exploring the Devil's Sea. The smile on the woman's face was very bright. However, Rain turned his head and left. Excuse me, goodbye. What are you kidding? Exploring the Devil's Sea? Just the name was unfriendly to Green Hand. 100. G-Class Sea Monster Poisonous Stinger Dracula. Hey, hey, hey. Don't go. The staff got down from her seat in a hurry and caught up with Rain and the others. She didn't know who the captain was, so she could only say to Avril, how about getting to learn about it first? The reward is very generous. I'm not the captain. This is our captain, Avril said. The woman took a look at Rain, a small child. She came to the spirit right away, little handsome. Just take a look anyway. Besides, the reward is great. Rain frowned and thought about it. All right, it doesn't matter. Well, okay. The Devil Sea is located northeast of Bankra Island 2000 nautical miles. The sea has a large number of devil fish, so called the Devil Sea. That's it. Rain could hardly believe it. So the so-called devil sea is not because there is a devil, but the devil fish. He thought lady, just because I'm young doesn't make me stupid. If it was really so simple, would you pay a 10,000 pearl reward just to draw a map there? My name is Susan. As for your doubts, well, hey, actually it is like this. The location of the devil's sea was not important. There are many reef areas, and no one wants to approach them. But over the years the direction of ocean currents has shifted 200 nautical miles to the northeast in us and Hobbs Island, Baidia Island and many other islands. In the Devil's Sea, there is a huge deadvilfish sea monster of the G8 class named Poisonous Stinger Dracula. After the route change over the years, it often attacks our incoming and outgoing ships. And after each attack, it would hide back in the Devil's Sea. We knew almost nothing about the situation there, so we didn't dare to go deeper easily. This time, we are to hunt this sea monster. For that, we have to figure out what's going on around here. What you have to do is to draw a chart of this area. In fact, you can do it during Dracula is not at home. Just a few more trips and you'll make a complete chart. Rain grunted. What a joke. Running to AG8 rank sea monster's house to play? Is this really not a death wish? 10,000 is indeed a lot of money. But it's not even close to his life. Besides, if he really encountered Dracula... The loss of the ship was a small matter. The whole crew might be killed. Rain still can minute clear it. He shook his head. Sorry, Susan. We are not interested in this mission. You'd better find another one. Susan had thought that this child is easy to deceive. But who knows he is more astute than adults and simply not moved. Just when Rain and the others were about to leave this display area and go to the trading house to look for the treasure map, a group of soldiers with lances in their hands surrounded them all at once. The lances in their hands were not cold weapons lances, but firearms. Rain and the others looked at these people in surprise. What do you want? This is Bankara Island. Do you plan to violate the law and order here? One bear stood in front of Rain and shouted. Sorry, we are the army of Bankara Island. A tall man stroked his goatee and walked out gracefully. Captain Rain, it's an honor to meet you. I'm Chief Officer Hughes of Bankara Island. Don't be nervous. It's just that our Lord Governor wants to have a chat and a cup of tea with you. We don't mean any harm. Oh, by the way, that mutant, I advise you not to get any ideas. The power of these muskets is not something you can afford. Rain frowned and said angrily, Have tea? 
Do you also have someone gun at you when you have tea? Not before, but now it does. Hughes gave a slight smile. Let's go. Rain, Avril, Fancy, and one bear were invited by a group of armed soldiers to the governor's palace in the center of Bankra Island. 99% of the houses on Bankra Island are single-story bungalows, but the governor's palace has four. The governor's house is absolutely magnificent compared with those shabby and small houses. At this moment, the governor was sitting in the parlor waiting for Rain and others. When Rain four people came in, the bloated man stood up, smiled at the four people, and said, Friends, please sit down. Hughes, why wouldn't you go and pass the tea to the four distinguished guests? Rain looked at the governor in front of him with a rather unfriendly gaze. Oh, Captain Rain, right? A hero, really. I have heard a lot about you. I am the governor of Bankra Island. Just call me Hallowell. Rain grunted then lay on the couch. Governor Hallowell, what's the matter with finding us here in this way? Harry did not seem to take any offense to Rain's rudeness, and still had a smile on his face. Captain Rain, you're, ahem, Dad Bounty Corps is making quite a name for itself these days. I'm glad you're using our island as your temporary base. Oh yes, your temporary base has well built indeed. Rain felt an unpleasant feeling all of a sudden. It seemed like this guy has been eyeing himself for a long time. And it seemed like he is just waiting for him to build his base and then get himself in trouble. Oh yeah, you guys also charged for mooring fees secretly. Should have made a lot of money too. Rain couldn't help but sit up and his expression became serious. Governor Hallowell, what exactly are you trying to say? If you want to threaten me with my base, then sorry, you may be disappointed. I don't have to build a base in your place. Oh no, 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 Captain Rain, you misunderstand. I welcome you very much to build your base here. As to the birthing fees and whatnot, it also alleviates the problem of our tight birthing locations. Hughes brought in four cups of coffee, which is a luxury. Please enjoy your meal. After saying that, Hughes stood aside. Rain took a deep breath, thought for a moment, and said, Governor Hallowell, I don't like to beat around the bush. What in the world do you want to talk to me about? Hallowell smiled and placed his cup on the table and walked over. Good, I like to keep it short too. I just want you to finish exploring the Devil's Sea and map it out. Hallowell said, in fact, you don't have to worry about Dracula. We will find a way to hold him back and buy you more time. Rain sneered, you can draw it yourselves if you guys can stall it. Why call me? Captain Rain, you're right. We can't hinder it completely. That's why we need to find you. Hallowell also looks serious. I've heard about you from both Shob and Hades. They said that only you can complete this mission alone. Shob and Hades? Yes, we are old friends for many years. Hallowell said many bounty groups have a high rank. But as far as single ship combat ability, they may not be better than you. And more importantly, you have a cruiser. In terms of having great firepower and flexibility at the same time, I haven't seen any better than you in human class waters. Shob said your captain is Ms. Avril. But it was Mr. Rain according to the registration records. That's not the point. All I know is that you have beaten the sub class pirates to the point of not daring to show their heads in unmanned waters. I believe that no matter who is the captain, you all have the ability to command the battle well. Rain narrowed his eyes. Even if what you say is true, why did we have to agree to go on such a dangerous mission? Because Dracula has upgraded from G8 to G9. If we don't destroy it, Bankra Island will be in his stomach. For this, we are willing to pay you 200,000 pearls. Rain's eyes widened. 200,000 pearls. 101. 500,000. 200,000? Avril froze. An astronomical reward. Yes, not only will you get 200,000 pearls, but we will also offer you the following conditions. Hallowell smiled confidently. Firstly, your base will receive special protection from us. Rain turned around. It would be a lie to say he was not moved by these first two conditions not to mention the other conditions. Sure enough, Hallowell continued, Secondly, all income from your base will be granted tax-free privileges. Don't be naive enough to think that your business doesn't need to pay taxes. We just haven't bothered to collect them before. Thirdly, you will be awarded the Order of Merit of the Bankra Island. Anywhere, a flotilla with the Order of Merit will be a valued local guest. It is a reflection of your own worth, and those who are worthy will naturally be valued. In the meantime, you enjoy free boat parking and a 10% discount on purchases on Bankra Island. This discount is refundable directly from us in reverse and also can be stackable by you bargaining with the merchants. Rain's mind raced. Hallowell had really cost the earth. Each of these conditions was quite right up Rain's alley. The first two were far too good for the base. They could operate with confidence and boldness. And with the tax exemption, 
Their goods would have an advantage that no one else could match. The 10% discount didn't seem like much, but Rain calculated that the next level of upgrade would cost 500,000 pearls. And with a 10% discount, it would be 450,000. That's a direct saving of 50,000. And that's just the next level, even after the next level. The 10% discount is an even bigger return than 200,000 pearls. Hallowell walked up to Rain, Captain, our fleet will attract the attention of the sea monsters. All you need to do is map the Devil's Sea. We will provide advanced surveying equipment. It usually takes 8 to 10 passes to complete the map. We have minimized your risk. Plus such a generous reward, do you still want to say no? Rain looked to Hallowell. What if we don't say yes? Keep pointing guns at us? Hallowell laughed helplessly. We won't do anything to you if you don't say yes. Hughes was a bit rude though. Shobe had said that you were harder to convince. The survival of Bank Era is at stake. If he hadn't stopped you, you would have been out to sea. He had to do it. It's just that with Bankra Island gone, your base is likewise gone and those inhabitants of your base will be buried. Simple as that. Rain had to say. Hallowell was pretty bad. He did not look for himself at first. But when Rain had got the base in shape. If Rain refused, Rain would lose nearly 100,000 pearls. But then again, although Hallowell had played some tricks, he had been kind to Rain and the others if Rain put himself in his shoes. The island was about to be destroyed. If he hadn't used some tactics, it would have been incompetent of Hallowell. Rain took a deep breath and deliberated for a moment before finally looking up. How long can you stall Dracula? No more than three hours at a time. This is, of course, at the cost of our large number of ships. Is there any danger in the Devil's Sea? Deadvilfish are somewhat aggressive and they can fly out to sea and fire their poisonous stingers from their tails. The poisonous stingers will cause general paralysis. The poisonous spines of mutant deadvilfish even can kill. Rain rejoined the sofa and sat down to take a sip of coffee. A taste that had been missing for a long time. Everyone was looking at Rain, wondering what he was up to. After a long time, Rain finally spoke. Another cup. Cough cough. Hughes was helpless but still helped Rain pour another glass. Second glass down, third glass. Hughes was about to freak out but was stopped by Hallowell. Finally, halfway through the fourth glass, Rain put it down. Raise the reward to half a million. What, half a million? You, you ambulance chaser. Hughes exploded. You're just going to measure. You're just going to enter the Devil's Sea eight to ten times while we're going to fight Dracula eight to ten times. Do you know how many ships are going to be destroyed and how many men are going to die in battle? Rain raised his eyes to Hallowell. Look, I'm not going to let my crew get into danger. So I am going to complete the map with just one trip. As it's only one trip into the Devil's Sea, it also means you only have to hold Dracula back once, and you can keep more ships. So I want 500,000. In addition, I need a 15% discount on my purchases and other conditions remain the same. All the conditions, we write them down in black and white. What, once? How could you possibly measure up in such a short time? If you had made a mistake in your measurements, we would probably have lost the whole island when we fought Dracula unless a bounty corps or navy help us out. Hughes looked to Rain in shock. It's okay if I say it is okay. Since you came to me, you should trust me completely. I can guarantee the accuracy of the map. If there are mistakes, I won't take a pearl. Hughes shut up. Hallowell took a deep breath. If Rain really could do it, they would save a lot of ships, which was more important than 300,000 pearls. As to the 15% discount, it doesn't matter. Hallowell said, Captain Rain, I'm willing to trust you. There is a lot at stake. If something went wrong, our loss would be unmeasurable even if you wouldn't take any money. So after you finish the survey, you must join us in the battle against Dracula. Yes. Rain agreed without hesitation. As Rain and the others left, Hughes shook his head, Governor, do you think they can do it? I don't know. But we have no more ways. Dracula will attack us in less than three months. I can only trust the vision of Shobe and Hades. Both of them have said that this is a fleet that can work miracles. Hughes, pour me a cup of coffee. Well, Governor, that captain took all coffee beans. Five days later, Rain and the others finished their preparations and set sail with the escort fleet from Bankra Island. There was an extra crew of eleven on board. These men seemed to look extra nervous. Tick took a deep breath. Captain, is it really okay? Rain smiled. To be honest, even if Hallowell wouldn't give me a price increase, I guess I would take the job. It's not a difficult mission. But Hallowell, that guy played tricks with me. It is surprising if I wouldn't sting him for more. Exploration? Mapping? Is that kind of thing difficult for Rain? 
He doesn't even need measuring equipment. He has system radar. 102. Mission completed. Rain was inconspicuous amidst the mass of warships. Banker's fleet had 50 ships, all G-class warships. Rain knew this was not the entire force of Bankra. All their ships were probably over 200. This made Rain realize what a horrible amount of financial resources would take to have an island like Bankra. When they reached the designated waters, all the boats dispersed. Of course, Rain had already gone far heading for the Devil's Sea 160 nautical miles away. Arriving in a safe area, Rain stopped the boat and waited. They would get going as soon as Little Booty reported that war had broken out. Rain made a few cups of coffee. In the beginning, they didn't even have fresh water. But now they can actually have hot water to make coffee. It was as if they had evolved from the Stone Age to modern times. Everyone come and have some. Do not be nervous, Rain said. While he waited, Rain turned on his system. Not much has changed on this ship, and Rain mainly checked the crew information. After four months of practice, the crew attributes had all changed quite a bit. Arson, second stage and level two. Skills, biological mutant fighting techniques, 14 twentieths. Vortex strangling, level one. Active skills do not count towards combat power. Equipped with fly claws and a shark skin diving suit. Combat power, 90. Transformation status, 120% increase in main attributes, 60% decay above water. Well, arson is gradually starting to work. What kind of mutation is she? The growth and side effects are so much stronger than others. Rain sighed. One bear, second stage and level. Skills, strength enhancement, level 1, main attribute boosted by 20%, primary collapse slam, active skill, equipped with a meteor hammer, combat power, 66.4, transformed state, 110% main attribute increase above water, 110% decay underwater. Two bear has the same combat power as one bear. But since the fly claws has 20 points less than the meteor hammer, the total combat power is 46.4. Avril, first stage and level 4. Skills, cell mastery, boosts or reduces cell attributes by 20%, and can affect up to 4 people at once. Combat power 1. This guy still won. Rain sneaked a glance at Avril. The guy was sipping her coffee with a curious look on her face as if she hadn't had it before. Avril was definitely a great support, but someone have to protect her during the fight. White combat power 1. Uh, white you fine. Tick, third stage and level 8. Detects serious damage to crew body, skills scrapped, and abnormal attributes. Combat power 10. Tick had turned out to be really strong and almost reached stage 4. But it had been severely injured after all. It wasn't easy to still have 10 combat points by now. I wonder if Avril can heal Tick's injuries. I'll make a great deal if she can. Rain mulled it over in his mind. Now it was not the time. Let him wait until this matter was settled. As to the rest of the newcomers, none of them had a high level. After all, many slaves had already been sold when Rain went to buy them. The ones left would not be too strong. But with Tick's training and the Great Feud, they trained extremely hard. During this time, their strength had increased to a greater extent and all exceeded the first stage in level 5. It was at this moment that Tick came over. Captain, there are a large number of dead fish in the Devil's Sea. Do we have any countermeasures? Just leave it to me, you all hide in the cabin. What? Who will control the direction? And who will control the measuring instruments and draw the maps? Avril came over and said with a smile, Tick, you don't have to worry. Just listen to the captain on everything. Fancy also said, Mr. Tick, our captain is very good. Even Fancy said so, although Tick had concerns, he could only nod his head and agree. An hour and a half later, a lone seagull glided daintily against the sea, reached the ship, and rested firmly on Rain's shoulder. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Yeah, yeah, you're the boss. Rain shook his head, all hands into the firepower cabin. Avril Arson, you follow me to the captain's cabin. Aye, captain. Everyone got into position as Rain closed the door and shifted awareness to the ship. The ship began to move, accelerating, reaching speeds of up to 20 knots, making a fast dash towards the Devil's Sea. The Devil's Sea waters were very conspicuous because they looked like it was black from a distance. The problem is not the seawater, but the untold number of devil fish that live there. As the boat got closer, the fish started to stir and began to swim fast that anyone with a dense phobia would have had goosebumps all over their body. Rain didn't have a phobia, but he also was creepy looking at all the bat-like devil fish on the sea floor. System, scan the seabed and map the devil's sea. 
the system was already working. The school of devil fish was hyped all of a sudden when rain rushed headlong into the devil's sea. Their swimming speed soars all at once and a large number of devil fish burst out of the sea with the aid of inertia, firing their tail spikes toward rain. Holy shit, flying fish? Although rain was prepared for this scene, he was still shocked to see it. It seemed that these devil fish were no longer what he knew before. They had become very powerful in attack after mutation. In the Devil Sea, a narrow British cruiser like a speedboat sped through the waves, while a large number of devilfish around it flew out of the sea, flicking their tails and shooting out tail spines that contained a high level of poison. Halliwell the Old Fox. There's no way a normal ship could have completed the survey in these conditions. No wonder he said it would take 8 to 10 times to get the map right. The radar quickly completed a map of the seabed. Wherever rain passed, the radar immediately mapped out an image of the seabed there. The sea was about 10 nautical miles long and 2 nautical miles wide. With Rain's current speed, he could make a total of 6 round trips in 3 hours, covering the entire area. Although there were many reefs on the bottom of the sea, Rain could avoid them with ease with no one chasing him. As for the mutant devilfish, hundreds of them jumped onto the boat and attacked with a series of stinging tail shots, giant tail spikes, and other tricks. But it was useless no one was on board. Inside the firepower cabin, the crew then heard a myriad of dangling sounds around the ship's plates and the newcomers were apprehensive. How on earth did the captain do that? Can he map out the terrain? I still can't figure it out. Who the hell is driving the boat and will we be able to finish the job? It was at this point that they noticed the ship slowing down, followed by the captain's voice. Phew, finally we finished the mission. So tired. The group of newcomers stared wide-eyed finished. Captain, are you sure the mission is over? Tick looked incredulous. He didn't know where the captain was talking to him and could only ask in the direction of the exit. That was too easy. With a snap, the hidden door on the deck opened and Rain looked over at the new crew with a smile. Easy? I thought it was already considered exhausting. Clean up the devil fish on the way out. Hey, I wonder if this is good fish to eat, said Rain, shaking his head and walking away. Well, Tick froze there for half a second. 103. Evolve. The mission described by Hallowell as extremely important and difficult was inexplicably accomplished by a group of men holed up in the firepower cabin. The ship was littered with poisonous spines and indomitable devilfish, which were carefully cleaned and put into tanks to be taken back as dinner. Tick looked at the completed topographical map of the seabed with disbelief. How did this get done? Fancy patted Tick's back, Mr. Tick, let me tell you a secret. Um? What the secret? The captain is this ship? His consciousness can switch to the ship. Since he was already a crew member on this ship, Tick would learn the secret sooner or later. This is, mutant? I could tell the captain was a mutant long ago. But where is the way to mutate like that? Either that or it's a ghost ship? No, how can I put it? By the way, Mr. Tick, do you remember the legend of our tribe? Tick's eyes widened and he whispered, You mean the prophecy of the super battleship? Fancy said I don't know. But with the captain's ability and character, I'm sure he'll take us to finish the Black Hell merchants off. Tick froze in his tracks, his mind recalling the legends of the tribe. One day, a super battleship will lead mankind to face an unprecedented enemy. Go and be its right-hand man. It needs you. When the topographical map of the Devil's Sea was placed in front of Hallowell, almost spat a mouthful of coffee on the map. How did you guys do that? It doesn't matter how. What matters is that there won't be any problems with this map. Rain saw that Hughes was hiding their new coffee beans and hurried over to them. Just bought them? It's haha -ha, yeah. With a high price. Hughes pronounced the word high price very heavily. Rain was unfazed. I'm out of coffee on board. With that, Rain directly snatched the entire bag of coffee beans. Governor Hallowell, as agreed, it is time for you to pay your reward. Hallowell had no choice now but to take Rain and the others to get their money. Black and gold pearls were not yet circulating in the human class waters. So the 500,000 white pearls still need to be exchanged one by one. In order to count the amount, Rain worked all afternoon with his crew before leaving with five large chests. Lord Governor, just give them the money, this map, said Hughes, wanting to say something but then stopping. Hallowell knew what he was going to say and shook his head. There is nothing we can do now even if their map is fake. The operations department said Dracula is evolving faster than we expected and he will attack our island in two months at the most. Anyway they are going to fight with us. If the map is fake, they will die with us. Hughes, follow this map and set up your tactics. In seven days, we get to launch a general attack and make sure to kill Dracula. Hughes took a deep breath. 
He was about to say something else, but now he had no better way than to take the map and salute at attention. Yes, Lord Governor. There was a buying spree after people learned that the army of Bankra Island would be fighting Dracula in seven days. Rain had got a second-class medal of honor from Bankra Island, a 15% discount on purchases, and a huge half million dollars, but all of which had been turned into materials before Rain could warm them up. The materials were available, but the problem was how to get out of the island. With a manned guard now outside their base and surrounding area, it was impossible for Rain to leave the island. But this was not a difficult problem. He had Armin charter a 200-ton transport boat and led the Sea God clansmen to take it 300 nautical miles off Bankra Island. Hallowell led a raid on Rain's base after learning that Rain's men had left the island with a large quantity of material. However, his concerns were allayed when Rain warmly hosted him and he used to eat devil fish together. In Hallowell's eyes, Armin and the new crew were not a priority. As long as Rain, Avril, and the ship remained on the island, he had nothing to worry about. As soon as Hallowell and the others left, Rain left the island. Of course, Hallowell could not have known. At that moment, Rain's body was still inside the base while his consciousness shifted to a screw on Armin. Captain, we're here. Armin looked around warily and said to the screw hidden in her shirt, Armin, take me out. Armin reached out and pulled Rain out of her clothes. At this point, those of the Sea God clans were leaning strangely against the fence. Captain Armin, stop here. Just wait a bit everyone, Armin said. It was at this point that Rain's voice suddenly came. Evolve, British battleship. Rain's heart couldn't help but throb. He had finally made it this far. From a three-row raft to a British battleship. The British battleship proclaimed who was the true king of the sea. With nimble cruisers and battleships, Britain became the sun never sets of that era. There is no doubt that the British battleship is the end of modern sailing history. The huge amount of timber was cut, sanded, put together and inlaid at breakneck speed. The huge keel showed that this will be a large vessel of over 50 meters. 104. New weapons. The Sea God clans were already looking dumbfounded and spooked. Wow, what's going on? My God, why are those materials being assembled themselves? Unbelievable. Am I dreaming? Oh my God. Could it be that? Super battleship. In the next second, they had been transferred to the new ship. Armin hurriedly reassured. Everyone takes it easy. Remember this is our secret. Keep it if you want to save more of your people. Captain Armin, we are all rescued by the captain. We never dare to forget the blood feud of our sea god clan. It is an honor to see the scene. We will not say anything definitely, the crew said excitedly. Rain didn't have time to pay attention to these people now. He couldn't wait to check out his new ship. Host Rain, Vessel, Optimized Medium-Size Fordeck British Battleship, Top Sailing Boat. Cabin, 20, open air cabin, 2, power cabin, 40, crew cabin, 92, firepower cabin, 2, large storage cabin, crew size, 11, all positions have been assigned, open for details, ship speed, 26 knots maximum, open for details, combat power, 25,010.5, can be viewed in the crew information and weapon system, load capacity, 46.7 slash 220 tons, open for details, Evolution, optional, click for details. Rain remembered that when he was a three-deck plank ship, it also showed top plank ship, and the next level he entered the era of sailing ships. This time it showed top sailboat, so was he going to enter another field? Rain couldn't confirm it yet, because the evolution option in the base panel was damned optional again, which meant that he would not know what the hell he would become in the next level until he gathered enough materials. Since he couldn't see it, Rain didn't dwell on this one. This ship was not only a battleship but also optimized. In terms of the hull, the depth of the draft is deeper than a normal battleship, which makes the ship more stable. The number of crew members was off in all attributes. After all, Rain did not bring all the crew members, so he did not check it. The speed of the ship has been increased by 6 knots, mainly due to an extra mast, the number of sails, and the increase in area, but no qualitative change. Now Rain was not very concerned about the load capacity after having a base. The key was where the amazing 20,000 combat power came from. Rain couldn't wait to check the weapon system. There are three decks and each of them has 30 gun doors of which the lower two levels were all storm cannons, 30 on each side of the hull. On the top level, 20 mortars and 10 large crossbows staggered. The system had not abandoned the large crossbow, but its role has changed in light of the current weaponry. With the presence of cannons and mortars, 
the large crossbows no longer needs to undertake the task of destroying ships instead more used to dealing with enemy sailors. In addition, the battleship also has two independent firepower compartments at the bow and stern, which is the bow gun and stern gun. In combat, Rain no longer needs to reorient the battleship to shoot instead from the front or from the butt. Rain was very hyped when he saw the data of the bow gun and stern gun. Thunder cannon, bow gun attack power, 800. Farthest range, 1,500 meters. Best range, 6001000 meters. Shell diameter, 315 millimeters. The ship needs to be within 15 degrees of the enemy ship when firing and try to keep the ship stationary. Excessive angle deviation or firing while in motion may cause recoil to destroy the bow compartment. The firepower cabin is equipped with a recoil countermeasure system. No personnel is allowed to enter the firepower cabin when firing. The shell has the ordinary penetrating ability and violent impact will cause the shell to explode causing ordinary explosion damage. Damn, can you tell me what ordinary exactly means? Rain was amused by this system. Such a powerful bomb, the system actually said the power is ordinary. A thunder cannon may destroy its own firepower cabin just by firing it. How big the recoil should be. If it was fired opponent, Rain thought he would not be able to carry it. This was not the end. There was still a weapon waiting for Rain to check out. Mamma Mia, what the hell is this? Meteor Howitzer, stern gun attack power, 150 by 15. Farthest range, 3000 meters. Best range, 1000 to 2200 meters. The gun barrel has a built-in sub-barrel that allows multiple rounds to be fired at once. Up to 10 howitzers can be fired simultaneously at once and explode on contact with the target, generating shrapnel and shock waves that cause secondary range damage. The meteor howitzer can deliver range strikes to the target area with a maximum diameter of 300 meters. The system was finally not so stupid, it counted the attack power of several bullets together. 2250 attack points, that's too much and the range can reach 3,000 meters, which is farther than mortars, and it can execute range strikes on 300 meters range. Rain was so excited that he was about to cry. A bow gun and a stern gun. These two big killers are just too great. Rain sorted out his weapon system. Fragment storm cannon, attack power, 200, quantity, 60. 12,000 total attack power. Destroyer storm mortar, attack power, 100, quantity, 20. 2000 total attack power, large crossbows, attack power, 10, quantity 10, 100 total combat power 100, of course, if it counts the continuous fire, it should be 500, lurker storm shallow water bombs, attack power, 250, quantity 30, 7500 total attack power, thunder cannon, bow gun attack power 800, quantity, 1, 800 total attack power, Meteor Howitzer, Stern Gun Attack Power 2250, Quantity 1, 2250 Total Attack Power, Level 4 Reinforced Hull, Defense, 120. Range Shipboard Weapon System had a total attack power of 24,770. Together with his crew, his total combat power broke 25,000. Rain couldn't help but take a deep breath. The triple combat power boost made him get a bit carried away. Poison Stinger Dracula? HM 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 HM, friend, I'm kind of suddenly starting to look forward to this fight. 105. Play safety. Armin drove their new ship back to the base. Avril and the others came out in a hurry, and were stunned when they saw the big guy. Wow, it's a battleship. Captain, this ship is our new battleship? It's 55 meters in length, right? A big ship even in Bankra Island. Captain, let's go on board and take a look. One bear and two bear jumped on the deck. This ship is higher than the original cruiser. The open deck is almost flush with the shore. The gang all ran to the ship in a rush. Rain had already transferred his consciousness to the child of Poseidon, and he came over with a smile. Terry, one bear, two bear, showed the ropes to the newcomers about how to use the weapon. Got it, boss. Five days before the duel with Dracula, the government of Bankra Island posted a notice announcing the news of the duel with Dracula to all the residents. On the day of the duel, all non-combatant ships were forbidden to go to sea. And in addition, anyone who had any idea about Dracula could join the battle whether from the other islands or temporarily docked ships. The forces of Bankra Island were willing to give up Dracula's bounty and points. They were willing to give the reward to the ship that performs the best whether or not they cause the final blow. Rain saw the announcement and asked curiously, 
why Dracula has a so high bounty? Even if it's upgraded to G9 rank, shouldn't it be about 9,000 pearls? Avril and the others did not know either. They have the same confusion as Rain. Dracula's bounty is up to 97,000, which is 10 times the bounty of the average G9 sea monster. At this time Tick came up and explained, Captain, Dracula is not a normal sea monster. It is stronger and evolves faster. And most importantly, it has the ability to control its own kind. Rain froze for a moment. The underwater octopus emperor he met at the time scared him half to death. But when he thought about it, that guy seemed to have been always alone. Dracula was different. In the Devil Sea, so many devil fish gathered there and would take the initiative to attack the invading ships. They were obviously under Dracula's control. Captain, sea monsters like Dracula must be elite G9 rank. Human class C rarely appears elite sea monsters, so the general bounty group and the navy are reluctant to go out. It costs too much to hunt once. They would rather go hunting for higher level ordinary sea monsters. Holy shit. So that's how it is. Rain could not help but shiver, by the way. Tick, is there any stronger than the elite level? That is definitely there if we have the chance to enter the beast class C. The sea monsters there is truly terrifying existence. Rain took a deep breath. This world is really too sinister. Speaking of the beast class C, he could not help but think of a person, Shob. In that kind of environment, Rain did not know if that guy is still alive. The announcement of Bankra Island attracted a large number of onlookers. Although they are not capable of killing Dracula and the battle scene will be very intense, they were still interested in doing a steel killing. Especially since Bankra Island's army has taken the initiative to give up the bounty and points so that the chance of steel killing is even greater. If they can happen to complete the kill, that is 100,000 pearls and 100,000 points. Temporary registration of a bounty group can be directly soared to the G9 level. Rain shook his head. Hallowell tempted the crowd again. Who can stand such a big temptation? If it were himself, he would definitely go. However, Hallowell's little trick also reflects the fact that he doesn't seem to be completely sure about killing Dracula. Five days later in the early morning, Bankra Island was already lit up before dawn as if it were a pearl on the sea. Thousands of seafarers were embarking one after another, countless families were sending off their loved ones. People were flowing from all directions to the berths and exits for which the walls of Bankra Island were in a rare state of complete openness. The military fleet of Bankra Island consisted of 206 ships and now were assembled outside the fence. And after the crews had boarded, the ships were driven to a slightly more distant location to stand by. Among these 206 ships, there were three large battleships over 80 meters. There were also cruisers of more than 30 meters and medium-sized battleships of 40 to 50 meters. The mere sight of this scene was already intimidating enough. In addition to the military ships, there were a large number of other ships here. These were other people who came over to participate in the battle. There were bounty groups, merchant banks, and a small number of navies, but also merchant ships equipped with a small number of weapons. These ships were not lacking in some big guys, at least more than 30 meters or more. The tonnage of human class sea vessels is generally larger, and the ships without strength did not dare to go together. Non-military ships actually are not less than 300. Rain drove the new ship came to the front of the Bankram military fleet. It was Hallowell that stood a large battleship. Captain Rain, you're here. Hallowell greeted Rain loudly. You actually changed the ship, efficiently enough. Rain lifted his cup towards Hallowell and raised it distantly with a slight smile as a greeting. After a tidy up, the crusading army finally set off in a big way. Rain's position was rightfully placed near the Devil's Sea. But Rain was not alone. The main force of the Bankra Island military, as well as those waiting to steal killing ships were also parked in this vicinity. Once the first battlefield opens, they will have to rush into the Devil's Sea to clear the Deadwolfish army here. And after forcing out Dracula, this will be the final battlefield. On the surrounding ships, those crew members were all both nervous and excited. What they cared about most was undoubtedly the bounty. 100,000 pearls. I wonder who will be able to get it. Is it according to the final kill? But if the monster is killed by the army, who does the bounty go to? At least the one has to give Dracula a heavy blow, otherwise there are always people who are not convinced. Eh, uh, anyway, we just fire in full force when the time comes. If we are lucky enough to hit the vitals, then we will be rich. Rain's ship was not too eye-catching here. Here are several large ships of 50 or 60 meters right beside him. But compared to the other's nervousness, Rain was much more relaxed. Now he was sitting leisurely on the deck and drinking coffee. Little Booty had gone on a scouting mission, 
and now was a much better time to rest. Captain, we also have a chance to get the bounty, right? Avril asked, sitting next to Rain. Sure, we are not part of the army of Bankra. Then may we get it? So many ships are eyeing that bounty. Fancy immediately came to her senses and sat down against Rain's other side. Tick also came over, Captain, do you have any tactical arrangements? Rain unhurriedly drank a cup of coffee and said, with my experience of thousands of melee, to get a chicken dinner, cough, to last until the end, the most critical is. I know. One bear also came over, fierce. The more afraid to die the easier to die. So many ships are grabbing, the narrow way to win. We have to be more fierce than others to do. Rain took a sigh. If you want to be fierce, just do it by yourself alone. Rain gave one bear a blank look. So what is that? Fancy and Avril asked at the same time. Rain put down his teacup. The corner of his mouth showed a meaningful smile, that is. Play safety. 106. Dracula. Rain got a little impatient waiting. He looked up and saw Armin reading a book. Hey Armin, what are you reading? Armin looked up and replied, The Adventures of Captain Adan. It's fascinating. Adan. He seemed to have heard the name. Rain also came to the interest. Tell me about it. It's a story about Captain Adan treated an A-rank sea monster narwhal for cavities. Rain had question marks on his face. What? A human treating a whale for tooth decay? And do whales have cavities? Well, I want to know how this Adan convinced the sea monster not to eat him. Rain asked. According to Aiden's voyage diary, it was this sea monster who reached out to Captain Adan for help, Armin replied. What? You mean humans can communicate with those monsters? Rain asked in surprise. I suppose so. I've never seen one though. If monsters could be communicated, we wouldn't have to make such a big deal to kill Dracula but find him a moving company. Rain lost interest in this Adan, seemed it was just a braggart. After waiting for a few hours, a flock of seagulls appeared in the distant sea. Many ships had sent scouts, and one of the seagulls was very conspicuous with messy bird hair, melancholy eyes, and a slightly fat body. The scouts had come back, and it seemed that war has already started over there. At this point, everyone got nervous. The war over there meant it was time to start here too. Almost instantly, a large number of ships rushed into the Devil's Sea from all sides. The essence of play safety is to keep a low profile. Rain knew this well. Rain's ship also started to move. Most of the crew went into the firepower cabin while he, Avril, and Arson stayed in the captain's cabin. Avril, follow them. Rain finished his explanation and shifted his consciousness to the ship. Let's go. With the command, the British battleship sailed slowly toward the Devil's Sea. The warships of Bankra Island naturally rushed in the first place into the Devil's Sea. The sea was like an inkwell that had been stirred up becoming chaotic all of a sudden. An army of tens or even hundreds of thousands of devilfish launched a fierce attack on the invaders. Countless devilfish flew up from the sea and flung their poisonous spines at the crew on the ships. The number of devilfish was so large that they were everywhere. Even though many ships make baffles, it did not work well. People around them kept screaming and then fell to the deck and could not move, and then their comrades hurriedly dragged them into the cabin. At the same time, Humans also began to fight back against these devil fish. A large number of harpoons stabbed into the sea, and some people even thought of using fishing nets to net them. The Bankra Island army dropped bombs into the sea. A large number of devil fish bodies will surface with each explosion. Although the fleet was bursting with killing power, the number of devil fish was too large and hidden underwater that difficult to annihilate them quickly. They also seemed to realize that this time the human attack was very fierce and ready to begin a new round of more desperate attacks. Many advanced mutant devilfish started to attack their own initiative. Their tail spines were more destructive, and poisonous spines were more toxic and themselves more intelligent. They took advantage of the human crew's control of the harpoon nets to launch their attacks. In just a few moments, many crew members have been paralyzed by the stingers and left dead or alive. Numerous devilfish launched a suicide attack. They get involved in the ship's thrusters with no hesitation to stop the ship from sailing fast. Suddenly, a giant devilfish nearly 11 or 12 meters long flew up from the sea ahead and flicked its tail so violently that it broke the stern mast of a 30 meter ship. Many crew members were shocked and dumbfounded when they saw the scene. No way! What a big devilfish! All kinds of mutated devilfish came out one after another as the fleet went deeper into the devil sea and stayed longer and longer. At this moment, the bottom of a 40-meter patrol ship suddenly exploded. The ship began to tilt, and a large number of devilfish defiantly jumped onto the ship accelerating its sinking. 
Fuck, what happened? Why did that patrol ship explode? Someone asked in horror. T they can detonate the ship? This was naturally not a devilfish attack. Rain saw clearly that some devilfish found the ship arranged bombs in the bottom and sacrificed themselves to get the bomb up and then trigger the explosion. They are fucking intelligent, Rain said in shock. This was not the right time to place dive bombs. The surrounding area has become more and more chaotic due to the crazy counterattack of the devilfish. Even the army ships could only barely resist, let alone other ships. No one expected that these inconspicuous devilfish could actually bring so much trouble to the fleet. With the dive bombs not working, all Rain could do now was use the harpoon and the folded wood pulp to chase away the devilfish trying to get caught in the propeller, and then, follow behind the group. After more than two hours of cutthroat fighting, the human fleet finally resisted the frenzied counterattack of the devilfish. The sea was floating countless devilfish bodies, as well as the bodies of certain crew members, the remains of sunken ships. Although there was still a certain number of fish slipping through, they could no longer form a massive attack. Just when many people were thankful that they finally got through it, Rain's radar went off. Ding! An elite G9 level sea monster was spotted 114 degrees southeast and 4,600 meters. And it is rapidly moving towards us. That guy was coming. Next was the real battle. Not long after, the lookout standing on the high watchtower shouted, Southeast, there's something at the bottom moving this way. So fucking fast. Everyone got nervous. In just a few minutes, next to the seven or eight boats on the outermost side of the Devil's Sea, the sea suddenly rose up in a storm. Immediately after a huge creature opened its wings and leaped up from the water at once, and its huge body towards these boats. These boats instantly capsized and were pinned under it. Almost at the same time, the big guy's tail from nowhere flung violently and swept off the hulls of a dozen boats. Without waiting for the other ships to fire, the big guy had already leaped back into the water leaving a dozen sinking ships behind. My god, T this is Dracula? The crew of one of the ships stood bewildered on the deck, hands trembling. That guy is more than 150 meters definitely. Many of the approaching ships felt an unprecedented fear when Dracula flew up. Deadvilfish is called Deadvilfish because their bodies are flat and their abdomens have mouths and faces that resemble the expressions of babies. Dracula almost blocked the sky when he flew up, and that huge baby face was like the devil to make people frightened. Of course, the horror of Dracula is not that it looks horrible. Its huge incomparable impact can knock over any of the boat presents. Those crew members will become its meal once capsized, and even more terrifying is people were unable to capture its whereabouts. Especially under the cover of a large number of devilfish corpses, it is impossible to find its position underwater. Everyone seemed to have to wait for death. No wonder the army couldn't kill it in its lair. It was impossible to distinguish this guy's position among the countless devil fish. A hundred meters away, Dracula suddenly leaped up from the sea once again before people could react. Just as it tried to overturn the ship in front of it, the military officer Lux bellowed, What are you waiting for? Fire! Lux should be a connoisseur who has fought with Dracula many times. No wonder he would not turn dumb after seeing Dracula like others. He knew very well that he had to suppress the flying Dracula or all the ships would be overturned and sunk by it. Under the fierce cannon fire, Dracula had to give up on knocking over the ship. His huge wings vibrated as he twisted his head and dived into the sea from the side. The crew on the board breathed a long sigh of relief. Phew, scared the hell out of me. Luckily the army reacted. Before the last word quickly could be uttered, a tail as tough as an iron cable cut this man in half along with the ship. Then, the sea restored silence, terrible silence. 107. Let dad play with it. All ships scattered. Guns to the sky. Lux shouted, fire to suppress it as soon as it flies up. All boats under 35M into the reef area. Dracula can't leap up from there. What about his tail? Avril frowned when she heard Lux's command in the cabin. Dracula has a whip-like long and thin tail too fierce to kill and extremely difficult to dodge. Rain said, its tail is unbeatable unless they can fire in the first time. Lux was also not sure it can work. The key to this tactic is map accuracy. It is dangerous for a 35M boat to dock near a reef area. Here there are often big waves after all. Those ships might even touch down before firing if the map had errors. If the location of the reef area itself was wrong, the result would be even worse. A bunch of ships would gather in the wrong place just in time to be caught in Dracula's net. Rain, your map better be right, or I will sink you myself, Lux muttered. His eyes couldn't help but try to find Rain's ship and finally saw the lone battleship in the distance. This guy, 
hiding so far away. Rain didn't want to play the hero at this time. Even if his ships were upgraded, he still had to keep a low profile in the face of Dracula. He himself was not too worried about Dracula popping up. He could observe the 5,000 meter range through the radar. Unfortunately, he couldn't share the radar map with others. Now all the ships were scattered and there were only a few ships in the coverage area of his radar. And those ships were moving towards the reef area. His ship was a bit too big to go to the reef area. The best way was to hide behind the warship. In the process of the ships moving, Dracula flew out of the sea several times and sank many ships, and the others seeing this hurriedly speeded up. That monster has a thick skin. It was hit so many times but still uninjured. Arson frowned. Armin said, I've seen the sea monster illustration before. The weak point of the devil fish is usually in the mouth and gills. It is difficult to kill it without hitting these two places. Rain suddenly asked, why didn't Dracula run? It's so fast, we can't catch up if it has to run, right? Captain, I guess many of these devil fish are its children. It will not rest easy, Armin said. Well, it involved the way of coexistence between humans and creatures. Rain didn't want to make any comments. In short, Hallowell was as cunning as ever, forcing both sides to duke it out. Three hours later, the battle between the warships and Dracula was getting hot. Dracula leaped out to sea again and again, and half of the 140 warships stationed here had been destroyed by it and so far they have not managed to hit Dracula's vitals. Rain's map was exactly right. The reef area kept Dracula from going near the small boats, mooring there, and they were there to fire sniper shots from time to time and also played a part in holding back the effect. But for the irregulars, their role was limited to this. The Navy's artillery fire kept hitting Dracula, but it never managed to deal a fatal blow to it. Everyone, don't relax. It's tired, we can catch its break. Lux was still hissing at the top of his voice. His situation was actually worse than Dracula's. His body was soaked to the bone with eyes widened and strained as he gazed at the sea. His spirit has been so tight for several hours. In fact, not only he, everyone was about to reach the limit. Everyone was worried that Dracula would rush out from the sea and use the tail to tear their ships. Their spirits should be highly concentrated to fire for the first time once Dracula appears. However, surprisingly, Dracula had good patience. Lurking, raiding, and lurking again. Two hours later, only a third of the army's ships remained, less than fifty. The sea was littered with mutilations, human corpses, and dead fish bodies. Perhaps Dracula was tired, it stopped attacking for the time being. But the humans did not dare to slow down in the slightest. When the battle was at a stalemate, the reinforcements from Bankra Island finally arrived. Hallowell and the others came. Their ships were only about two dozen left but the two largest battleships were still there. As soon as they arrived, Hallowell was shocked. The place was already in shambles. Hallowell heartbreakingly looked at the mutilation of the ships on the sea. Some of the crew was saved, but more afraid had become food for Dracula to replenish his energy. So many people were sacrificed on the first battlefield, at least 3,000. What's more critical was that they still failed to achieve victory. 140 ships could not defeat Dracula. Now even if they came... Could they change the situation? Hallowell's eyes were red with rage, and he roared toward the sea, Dracula, come out if you dare, I'll kill you. I will definitely not let you destroy Bankra Island. Asshole, come out. Hughes hurriedly stepped forward and pulled Hallowell. Lord Governor, we have to stay calm. The monster. Hallowell leaned on Hughes' shoulder and cried out in pain. It killed thousands of my people. It will kill tens of thousands more. Why did it appear here? Why did no one come to help us kill it? Why? Rain looked at Hallowell in the distance. He did not expect this cunning old fox would cry bitterly in front of so many people for those soldiers and the island's inhabitants. If it was true, maybe this guy was not a bad governor. At this time, a huge black shadow suddenly rose from the bottom of the sea, appearing in front of the boat of Hallowell. Lux the whole person's sweaty hair stood up. Dracula as always shrewd chose the bow direction to leap up so that it could avoid the side of the ship's artillery attack and the governor and his ships had just arrived, their positions were not yet well positioned and there were no ships around that could cover them. In other words, they couldn't effectively suppress Dracula now. Hughes saw the enormous black shadow overhead and hurriedly pressed Hallowell. Lord Governor, be careful. Hallowell pushed Hughes away, stood up, and said to the big monster, Dracula, I'm not afraid of you, said several shots toward Dracula. However, the artillery was useless. The musket couldn't do much damage to Dracula. The grinning face under Dracula's belly was as grim and hideous as the devil who was asking for human life. 
His sturdy flesh easily resisted the scattered dozens of cannons and pressed down toward Hallowell's ship. Lord Governor, countless people around hissed vociferously. Hughes clung to Hallowell and ran toward the side of the ship. No! Once I am alive, the ship is alive. If the ship is destroyed, what's the use of me living? Hallowell viciously pushed away Hughes and continued firing towards Dracula. All ships, fire with all your might while it falls on my ship. That's an order. Dracula's body was about to press over. Come on, Dracula, die with me. At this moment, a deafeningly loud sound followed by a huge cannonball shot at an extremely fast speed hit Dracula's flank fiercely. The huge impact caused Dracula's body to fall into the sea heavily. Everyone looked in shock in the direction where the shells were fired. They only see a battleship moored alone in the distance, the bow of a huge gun still smoking. At the ship's bow, a small kid was feet on the bow shaking his head. Damn, no wonder I've been playing the game for so many years but have never been able to get a chicken dinner a few times. Rain also regretted why he had to make a move, being targeted by Dracula did not seem to be fun. Listen, all of you, you all out of the devil's sea, let dad play with it. 108. One shot. Hundreds of ships and thousands of crew members on the scene looked at Rain's ship like a monster. The shot just now. Awesome. Actually knocked Dracula away just with one shot. What in the end is that gun? Wait, that little guy said, deal with Dracula alone? Well, where's his parent? Deal with Dracula with one person, afraid not crazy. The tears on Hellwell's face had not yet dried. He had wide-eyed, looking at the distant Rain, and cried again. Rain impatiently looked at everyone the slightly childish voice sounding once again, I repeat again, all of you get out of my way. His artillery was too fierce, and many weapons have ranged damage. These people here were not useful at all only hinder him instead. Captain Yu? Tick looked at Rain with concern, that's Dracula. Rain, of course, knew it was Dracula, and he had not wanted to make a move, but it was Hallowell's words that made him fire uncontrollably. Tick, notify everyone and put them on a war footing, Rain said in a low voice. Tick took a deep breath. Since this was the captain's order, he had to obey unconditionally. Just like the prophecy said, go and be his right-hand man. He needs you. Yes, captain. Rain said to Hallowell in the distance, Lord Governor, they do not listen to me. You hurry up and order all the ships to exit here while Dracula is injured, or there will be no time. Hughes supported Hallowell and shouted to Rain, Rain, are you sure? Nope. Rain shouted with a full confidence voice. Lux came over and said to Hallowell, Lord Governor, give the order? Hallowell stopped crying and remembered Shobes and Hades' words. Shob, that ship can do miracles. Hades, damn, those on that ship are monsters. Worse than sea monsters. Now, all they need was a miracle, so leave it to that ship. All hands get out of the devil's sea. Taking advantage of the Dracula was not moving much for the time being. All the ships quickly withdrew from the battlefield. But they did not leave. They still had to fight Dracula again once Rain failed. This was essentially a battle where either you die or I die. The large sea got empty all of a sudden. In addition to the sea covered with devilfish corpses, human bodies, and ship wreckage, the sea had only one ship left. The 55 meters British battleship, on the highest mast of the super battleship, the flag with the human's back painted on it, moved against the wind. No way. Although they have a big ship and good firepower, there is no difference between 55 meters and 80 meters for Dracula. I'd like to see how they are going to defeat Dracula. Dracula is injured. I was going to see if I could get a steal but these people don't want to take the bounty all by themselves do they? Don't be afraid. It's impossible to defeat Dracula with just one ship. They are looking for death. Let's see if they can hit another shot. We may get a break when they sink. People always like this. At this time, there were still people waiting to see Rain's joke. The good thing was that such people were only part of the population. More people especially the warships of Bankra Island and the inhabitants were all incredibly nervous at this time. God bless them defeat Dracula. In any case, I admire their courage. Everyone pay attention. In case they need our help later, we must be the first to support them. For the chaotic chatter around, Rain could not hear and did not want to. Consciousness transfer. Rain turned back to the captain's cabin and sat on the seat. Come on. Dracula, dad's here to play with you. At this point, all personnel on board were in a state of battle readiness. Now Dracula would not leave the Devil's Sea area. So it has only one target, them. For the next ten minutes, there was calm wind and silent waves all around. But the more so, the more tense everyone's nerves were. Ding, 203 degrees southwest. 
4,960 meters elite G9 level sea monster found. Rain's nerves tightened. The super battleship swayed gently with the faint sea breeze. There was no sound around and no signs, but the atmosphere was oppressive to the extreme. Since the bow gun's muzzle rotation limit was only 15 degrees, he only had one chance. Ding, 203 degrees southwest, 2160 meters G9 level elite sea monster found. Dracula chose to lurk from the direction of Rain's bow. 1500 m, 1000 m, 800 m, 500 m, 200 m. Suddenly, the sea in front of Rain surged up a big bulge followed by a huge shadow out of it. In front of its huge figure, Rain's ship was like a baby. Here it comes, Dracula is coming, still coming from the front. Once that ship's bow gun falls short, they're done for. Dracula has a so fast speed and appeared so suddenly, it's hard to fire in the first time. The tense nerves of thousands of people around them broke at this moment. Dracula was coming. Dracula's movements never eluded Rain's radar. And the moment it came out of the water, thunder cannon, fire, Rain roared. The bow gun only has an adjustment range of 15 degrees angle. And at this point, the two sides were already close. He had to hit Dracula and defuse this attack in the few seconds it got out of the water. The good thing was that Dracula was flying upward. Its belly was facing the direction of the bow gun while taking off, which gave Rain the opportunity to hit its vital point. Boom! People only felt their eardrums vibrate as the bow barrel spat out an appalling tongue of fire and a huge cannonball blasted out. The huge recoil drove the Rain ship backward. One shot straight hit the devil's face and directly shoved into its mouth. Not long after, with a loud bang, the shell of the thunder cannon exploded in the belly of Dracula. Dracula's huge body having just flown out of the water tumbled and fell to the sea, and a waterfall of blood spurted out of that big frightening mouth and poured over that British battleship with a clatter. The precise and unmistakable timing calculation, the appallingly fast reaction speed, and the astonishing bang shut everyone up. Shock! The whole room was silent. Everyone had eyes wide and their jaws hit their toes. Just one shot. But surprisingly so terrifying. 109. Battleship without weaknesses. Oh my god, I can't believe my eyes. What terrible reflexes. Who is the gunner on that boat? Reaction speed, psychological quality, and accuracy are simply called the textbook of the gunner. The power of their bow gun is too terrifying. Hello well now not cry, standing there dumbfounded. H hit it? Lux frowned. I've never seen a gunner who reacted so fast. Such a short time, it should be too late to even aim. Hughes asked in a hurry, is Dracula dead? Lux shook his head, I don't know, but the G9 rank elite should not die so easily. Dracula was not dead, Rain's radar was locking onto it. But this sudden strike did cause a lot of damage. This shell was enough for it to suffer a lot. Dracula made a comeback after resting for half an hour. This time, it was smart enough to avoid Rain's bow. The cannon was a bit fierce, and it chose to sneak in from Rain's stern. Ding, 35 degrees northeast, 4130 meters. G9 level elite sea monster is approaching fast. Ding, 35 degrees northeast, 2740 meters, G9 level elite sea monster is approaching fast. 1500 m, 1000 m, 800 m, 500 m, 200 m. Suddenly, the sea behind rain surged up with a big bulge followed by a behemoth skinned out from the water bubble. The whole scene was deja vu except this time Dracula appeared at the stern of rain. No, it's at the stern. It's over. They don't have guns in the stern. Even if they did, it's useless. They seem to have missed the best chance this time. Dracula was already flying. Hey, what a shame. Where's Hallowell? Should we go to support now? Hughes was so nervous that his heart was beating out of his chest. It's over. Hallowell covered his heart. No. When Dracula's horrible doll face has completely flown out of the sea, the battleship's stern gun door opened. People found that the stern gun of this ship and the bow gun had an obvious difference. The stern gun barrel was much longer. Just at that moment, Dracula took off and the stern gun also fired. Boom 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 boom. Once again, the crowd looked stunned. With the exaggerated flame spewing out at the gun barrel, ten cannonballs hit Dracula in the sky almost simultaneously. A gun with ten shells? What is this gun again? This is fucking more ferocious than the bow gun. Hit Dracula hard again. My god! The shells were fired into Dracula's mouth, and gills on each side followed by a series of explosions in the sky. Once again, Dracula was hit and fell into the sea. Rain snorted, want to kiss my ass? The meteor howitzer tastes good, doesn't it? 
The Stern Cannon has a total of 2,250 attack power almost three times the bow cannon, and the shells all hit Dracula's vitals, which would do much more damage than the Thunder Cannon did. Hallowell's eyes widened, took a deep breath, and a hint of surprise gradually appeared in his eyes. Shob and Hades really did not lie to him. That ship is full of monsters. That is a miracle ship. Rain hit Dracula hard twice so that Hallowell finally saw a glimmer of hope. At this time, there were already ships moving quietly toward the Devil's Sea. Hughes made an immediate decision and ordered the gunner to blast in front of that ship. He stood at the bow and looked angrily at the ship that intended to get a steel killing. I only warn you once, if you dare to disrupt the battle of Dad, Cough, the bounty group, don't blame me for being rude. Hughes really hated the name Rain had come up with. Dracula was seriously injured, but not dead yet. This time was the most critical moment. He did not hesitate to threaten with force. Those ships were no match for these warships, and there was already a great deal of condemnation all around. Are you fucking get to steal the credit? Just you few guys, it's looking for death. It doesn't matter if you want to die. The crew members of those ships looked at the angry faces and the warships in the distance hurriedly turned around and retreated back into the dust. They were not qualified to set foot on this battlefield. Another half hour later, Rain's radar alerted again. Ding due east. 4,130 meters, G9 level elite sea monster is approaching fast. Dracula took a loss to both Rain's bow and stern. It finally understood that this ship's bow gun and stern gun were not ordinary artillery, so it chose to burst in from the side of the ship. It could hold up against normal artillery. As long as finish this ship off, other ships are not a problem. Seeing the direction of Dracula's attack, Rain revealed a smile. A ship would not smile though. A total of 30 gun doors on the bottom and middle decks opened quietly. 1500 meters, 1000 meters, 800 meters, 500 meters, 200 meters. The surface of the sea gushed with familiar bubbles followed by the huge figure rush out of the water. This time, Dracula was angry. Its speed became faster, and even the devil baby's face and gills under the belly became more hideous because of the blood. Dracula is too cunning. This time it chose to flank the attack. I wonder how powerful their artillery is. I hope they can hold up. Dracula is planning to resist the attack hard. As long as it sinks them, it still has hope. Hallowell's eyes were locked on Rain's firepower cabin. Success or failure was at stake. Hughes had already ordered all hands to be ready to depart for support. Once Rain and the others failed to kill Dracula and the ship turned over, they would be the first to support it. Now Dracula was seriously injured, they still had a chance. However, when Dracula just emerged from the surface, the battleship's bottom guns already started firing in unison. Boom boom boom. Fifteen rounds of fire from the storm cannon flashed up one after another from the gun doors, and all precisely hit Dracula's vital point. A 200 attack multiplied by 15 is 3000, but Dracula was determined to make or break this time. Even after taking a round of shots, it still tried to control its body to continue to fly upwards. Rain coldly grunted, very good. I like you headstrong. At this very moment, the storm cannon on the middle deck fired. Another 3,000 attack power flurry. A combined total of 6,000 before and after. This round of attacks made Dracula's body knocked back a 100 meters by continuous cannon blasts. And old wounds and new wounds erupted while it flew up at the same time. The entire abdomen was completely pierced. The captain of a certain warship, the cigarette in his mouth slipped out of his mouth and was blown far away by a sea breeze. T this ship, has no weaknesses? 110. He is worthy of our following. None part of the firepower did not surprise people whether it was the bow, the stern, or the side of the ship. Dracula had tasted and tested. Just a few attacks almost tried out all of Rain's fire systems. Dracula was so unlucky to run into Rain whose radar saw through his infiltration tactics. At this point, Dracula's abdomen had already suffered heavy damage. Rain naturally would not give up the opportunity. The bottom crew quickly finished filling. The third round of flak completely blew Dracula's body away. The three rounds of flak combined 9,000 points of attack power. The first two of these rounds hit the vitals. And with the internal damage caused by the thunder cannon and meteor howitzer together, even if strong as the G9 level elite sea monster Dracula could not resist. When Dracula's huge broken body plunged into the sea, the entire sea lifted huge waves, pushing Rain's ship high above the water. In the distance, countless people stared up at the British battleship with dumbfounded eyes. This ship, so strong. Did he come from the Beast Class C? Dad Bounty Group, 
seems to be just a registered bounty group. I froze at the time when I saw the name, but not expecting them to be so scary. Single-handedly finish off an elite G9 level C monster. I've never seen such an awesome ship. By the time the waves slowed down, the remnants of Dracula's body also surfaced, floating near rain. The system this time did not issue another warning, indicating that Dracula could no longer pose a threat to them. It died. Hallowell's ship came rushing by under the protection of Hughes. He walked across the makeshift planking to Rain's ship. Hallowell straight up hugged Rain who just transferred consciousness. Captain Rain, thank you so much. On behalf of all the residents of Bankra Island, I express indescribable gratitude and heartfelt respect to you and your brave crew. With that, Hallowell, Hughes, and Lux saluted solemnly toward Rain. Thousands of seafarers in the distance towards Rain cheered and shouted. Rain blandly shook his head. There is no need. I have always been indifferent to fame and fortune. I just want to know, there shouldn't be anyone to steal Dracula's bounty from me, right? Absolutely not. So many of us have seen with our own eyes who killed Dracula and saved Bankra Island, Lux said seriously. Rain smiled and winked back at Avril and the others. 100,000 pearls and 100,000 points get. The warships were responsible for dragging back Dracula's body. Some of them stayed behind to salvage the bodies as well as the wreckages. And all the remaining ships started to return to Bankra Island. The number of these ships was a good deal less than when they arrived. Standing on the bow deck, Rain looked at those corpses in the distant sea and stared. Captain, what's wrong? Avril noticed that Rain's expression was a little off and came over and asked softly. I am thinking if I, nothing. Rain withdrew his gaze. Let's have everyone wash the ship. It's covered in that guy's blood. The fleet dragged Dracula's body back to Bankra Island. A deafening chorus of cheers went up as the island's inhabitants watched the warships haul back the immense body. But when they realized that many ships had not returned, the scene was suddenly different. Many people frantically searched for the ships where their loved ones were. Rain did not want to see the scene more. He drove the boat back to the base. Three days later, Hallowell held a public speaker throughout the island announcing the results of the siege of Dracula and invited Rain and Avrilon. Rain saw some people with tears in their eyes who had lost loved ones, but they also knew that the heroes deserved their applause. The entire island of Bankra would be gone if it weren't for the dad bounty group. Rain took the microphone amidst thunderous applause and chants. He thought for a moment but found he didn't seem to have anything to say, so handed it back to Hallowell. He whispered a few words in Hallowell's ear and took off stage with Avril. Many people watched in disbelief as the two just left. Not saying a few words? It's really hard to imagine that ship was actually commanded by that kid. So aloof. At this moment, Hallowell suddenly spoke up. Everyone, just now Captain Rain of Dad Bounty Group told me about a decision he had made. He said that he would donate all the bounty gained from this killing of Dracula to the families of those heroes who died in this battle. As the words fell, countless shock turned back to find the figure. But alas the boy and the woman had already gone far away. Late at night, Tick stood on the shore of the base. Looking at their ship in a daze, fancy, one bear, and two bears saw the teacher standing there and came together. Mr. Tick, what are you doing here? Tick withdrew his gaze and said quietly, this really is a miracle ship. I told you long ago, our captain is very strong, fancy spoke with a sense of pride. Tick turned around, I've heard about the captain's decision today. Donate all the bounty money, a bit surprising. One bear said with some confusion, in fact, we did not expect the captain to do so. He has always been very stingy, um, no, very, frugal. Donating all the pearls seems to be a bit silly. But Mr. Tick, I hope you will not be disappointed with the captain. In fact, Captain He, although one bear did not understand, he was eager to help Rain explain. Tick smiled, no, one bear, I'm not disappointed in him. I just want to say that he's not like everyone else. He is not like any of the most powerful legendary captains in this selfish era. Even if he is still weak, or even if he is not at all the super battleship that our tribe prophesied, I am willing to follow to the death. Fancy nodded heavily. If the captain wasn't such a person, how would we be reunited here? He is worthy of our following. The next day, Rain took Avril, Fancy, Tick, and others to the governor's palace. Rain donated 100,000 pearls on impulse. Although he regretted it a little afterward, forgot it, he cannot be backtracked in front of so many people have said, good thing the pearls were gone but the points were still there. Hey, how many levels will our bounty group go up this time? Rain had a smug look on his face. Captain, with the 99,700 points, now we are a G9 class bounty group. G9. 
Rain was quite satisfied with this result. Isn't that only one step away from the F rank? They had already reached Hallowell's office as talking. As soon as they pushed the door, Hallowell also happened to look over. Gee, Rain, you're finally here. Come here. Hallowell hurriedly pulled Rain towards the room. After the vote of our entire island residents, we have decided to award you the Bankra Island Special Medal of Honor. Rain looked confused. Vote of the entire island residents. Hughes took the initiative to pour coffee for several people. Yes, we can only award the highest level of the Medal of Honor. The Special Medal of Honor must be awarded by a joint vote of the entire island's residents. This is already the highest Medal of Honor. We've never awarded such a high level before. Avril asked, so what discount do we get on purchases? 25% off. Hughes smiled politely. 25% off? Wait. Rain's brain quickly switched to the calculator. The next level upgrade required 2 million pearls. If it was the original 15% discount, he would need to pay 1.7 million pearls. While now it was a 75% discount, he only needed to pay 1.5 million pearls. Earn 200,000 pearls? Holy shit. I seem to have earned those 100,000 pearls. Just 1.5 million pearls to upgrade to the next level. The thought that the next level may produce a qualitative change. Rain suddenly wanted to go now to earn money. 111. Leave. A rare attempt to do a good deed actually made Rain another fortune, even if Rain himself could not believe it a bit. Since this is a common decision of the whole island's residents, then I only accept it. Rain made a perfunctory and polite speech, and gladly accepted the Bankra Island Special Medal of Honor. When the shiny medal was hung on his chest, Rain felt that his aura had risen significantly. In addition to awarding the medal, the resident naval officer Lieutenant Soros personally changed the bounty group information. Previously they had 8,600 points, and with the addition of these 99,700 points, Dad Bounty Group jumped to become a G9 class bounty group, and they still had 8,300 points left. They only need to get 1,700 more points to upgrade to an F class bounty group. Once they reached the F class bounty groups, they could take on F level missions. Except that there were still very few F level missions in human class waters. So they need to go to beast class waters to receive such a high ranking mission. Unfortunately, Rain was not planning to enter the beast class waters. As a play safety man, he would not leave the human class C as a last resort. Not to mention that he had a lot of things to do. One afternoon, Rain came to the mission release plaza with a few people. The scene fell into chaos once Rain arrived there. It's Dad Bounty Group. Wow, I can actually get so close to these guys. That kid is the captain, right? What a born captain. I've had a few friends sacrifice their lives and their families were given grants, and the money was donated by them. Hey, get out of their way, all of you. Let the Daddy Bounty Group pick their mission first. Rain turned around and walked away when he saw the situation. His biggest hobby was to get great deals. But now a bunch of people staring at him made him embarrassed to grab the task from others. It was better to hide for a while. As a result, they were shocked again when they returned to base. There were many people standing in front of the base gate. Sir, we're really not here to cause trouble. We just want to thank your captain and ask by the way if you still need a crew. I've been on board for 20 years. Let's meet the captain. I'm a gunner. Although I still have a gap with your gunners, I can keep learning. I have a great ability to learn. Do you need a cook on board? Don't worry guys, my craft can be ranked in the top 3 on Bankra. If these people came to reign one by one, Rain might have met with them. But now with over a hundred people blocking the door. He sneaked away in a hurry. Several people only went over the wall to enter the base. That was a close one. Rain shook his head. It's better not to go out these days. This situation finally got better on the second day. In order to keep its promise, the governor's office sent a 40-member detachment to take charge of security at the entrance of the base. In addition, Hughes personally sent a merchandise business license an official port of birth certificate, a tax exemption official document, and two sacks of good coffee. With these things, the base of Dad Bounty Group could be operated in name only. The security of the base was indeed guaranteed, but the fanatical admirers were also more and more. Take the mooring office. There were queued every day calls that the inside of the ship cannot drive out, and the outside of the ship cannot drive in two. The mooring port was always like this. The other places were even more so. In short, Rain as well as the crew felt very headache. In view of the current crisis, Rain and the 20 crew members on board except for Little Booty held an informal crew meeting at night by setting up a campfire on the rocky shore. As soon as the meeting started, 
A sighing rain held his forehead. Hey, Hallowell said to hold a formal medal awards ceremony for me the day after tomorrow. Lux said he wished us to send gunners to help train their gunners. Carlos said he wants me to give a combat lecture to the island-based bounty corps in a week. And a bunch of Watcher McCallet and nobles invited us to their party. Alas. Guys, this is a very scary situation right now. Rain looked up. I have thought about it. We must leave here. Do you all remember our old job? Terry fishing? Armin transport? Avril treasure hunting? Fancy with an excited face. Robbery? The four of them said what they thought was their old job almost simultaneously. Black lines covered Rain's forehead. This was his old crew. Why is there no tacit understanding with himself at all? Other people's answers were fine. But what the hell fancy said robbery was? The other new crew members were confused that their captain had done so many old jobs. Rain shook his head in a frenzy. You all shut up. I said the old business, of course, is the bounty mission. Last time Armin got all the bounty mission copies. So we do not have to go to the square to receive the task. Avril said, Captain, it's up to you. Anyway, I also think Bankra Island is a bit uncomfortable to stay in. Now there are a bunch of people looking at us like a monster when we go out. Yes, since the base is on track, it's time for us to go around other places. Fancy was also a person who cannot stand idle. These days she was suffocated. Rain nodded, this feeling he knew well. It was better to hurry up and get out of here. Good, tick, Terry, one bear, two bear. Tomorrow you four take men to purchase some spare materials. We still have 50,000 pearls here. Replace all with materials. Oh yes, mainly ammunition materials. Okay captain, leave this matter to us. For people replied. Armin, you and I will study the route. Our firepower has indeed become stronger now, but the consumption is also greater. We need to resupply midway. Armin nodded heavily, I captain. Rain was very satisfied to see that everyone was eager to leave this enthusiastic island. Let's sneak away in the night after ready. After some preparation, late at night two days later, Rain and the others sneaked onto the ship, goodbye to the Sea God clans, and out of the base harbor in the night. The guard at the gate was startled to see the super battleship, but Rain didn't give him a chance to report and ran off in a hurry. When Hallowell woke up, Rain and the others had left Bankra Island long since. Hallowell rushed to the balcony, looked at the ship in the distant sea, and let out a long sigh, Captain Rain. I still didn't keep you. But I still wish you all the best. Captain Rain, go conquer the Azure world. 112. Take strongest skill. According to the course set by Rain and Armin, their next stop would be a larger island north of Bankra, Solomon Island. There were three reasons why this island was chosen. Firstly, this island was also a regular island where the Black Hell merchants often sell slaves. And they could go to see if there were sea god clans. Secondly, Shob placed Awi on this island. They will take Awi back to Bankra Island if possible. Thirdly, there was a route called the Iron Road from Bankra Island to Solomon Island. There were a large number of pirates in the vicinity of the route. In terms of Rain's character, he would rather fight 5G1 class pirates rather than fight a G5 pirate. And coincidentally, most of the pirates near the line had not a high level. As long as they didn't encounter the three big G class pirates entrenched there, it was the most ideal hunting spot for Rain. Rain said full of confidence, I also did a lot of good deeds and accumulated so much virtue. So big a sea, surely we won't be so unlucky to meet them. Although Rain was very confident in himself, everyone was still skeptical of the captain's virtue and carefully analyzed the three pirates. Heavy iron pirates, G6 class, 6 G class warships, 28 frigates. The 30M sub-G class Portuguese gunboat was their lowest ranking frigate. Its strength was not to be underestimated. Of course, as G6 class pirates, they also had a number of mutant crew. The captain of the Iron Waltong, second stage and level 7 with six second stage mutants on hand. And the number of the first stage mutant was more than 50. Beheaded pirates, G6 class pirates, and strength were on par with heavy iron. They were notorious for their methods of disposing prisoners. At one point, they pushed 300 defeated crew members to the open deck, and Captain Buman gave an order. 300 pirates hand up and 300 heads were decapitated at the same time. This is the beheaded. But to say that the most horrible pirates on this route, beheaded pirates could only be ranked second. There were more frightening pirates. This pirate group was also the first of the three fleets, Holy Pirates. This name has a kind of bounty group feeling. But people who know this name would only feel fear whenever they think of the name. Their fleet has 7G class warships, and 22 more than 30 meters sub-G class frigates. 
Not only was their fleet strength slightly stronger than the other two pirate groups, but their mutants were stronger. Captain Jack the Ripper was a third stage and level 1 mutant said to have a strong mutation. There were also 15 second stage mutants and 70 first stage mutants under him. These mutants with special hobbies gather together, and after each hijacking of a ship, they brutally skin and disembowel all the crew and hang them on the mast in the fancy name of purification prayers. Their ships often hanging many bodies looks horrible. Armin recounted the information about the holy pirates, feeling creepy herself. Rain on the sidelines had a feeling of listening to horror stories, and the mind quickly emerged a frightening corpse ship. They had also defeated a large number of pirates in no man's land, but most of them were mainly robbing and looting. Almost none were the real bloodthirsty guy, but to the human class waters, pirates seemed to become increasingly bloody, not only killing but also skinning and beheading. Of course, today's Rain was not the young man who only lived in the civilized world. He had seen thousands of deaths and gradually adapted to the cruel world. Armin continued to introduce to the crowd, the three pirates led by the holy pirates divided into different areas. We will try to avoid their activity areas, looking for weak pirates on the line. Rain's tactic was specifically to pick the weak to bully. At this time there were still one and a half months from embarking on the Iron Road, and Rain could finally start his training. Tick came this time specifically to coach Rain's training. Captain Cabin Barn Roof Platform Tick had a straight face. Once the training began, he was not Rain's crew but the teacher. Captain, you have the body of the son of Poseidon. I do not know much about it. The only thing that can be sure is that even if the son of Poseidon had no mutation occurs, its physical quality will be stronger than normal people. And they almost can learn all the skills of mutants. Therefore, I will pass on to you the strongest skill I have mastered. The strongest skill? Rain's eyes glowed. Tick had been a third stage and level 8 mutant. His strongest skill should not be weak. Mr. Tick, what type and species of mutation did you have? Speaking of his former mutant species, Tick had a rare smile that filled with a sense of pride. Me? Not too good, just better than 70% of biological mutants. As soon as Rain saw this expression on Tick's face, he knew that he was going to start his pretentious performance next. But then again, stronger than 70% of biological mutants? Well, that's already pretty awesome. I am land-type ancient mutation, giant Smilodon. Rain's eyes widened. Smilodon? That is a creature from the fourth ice age. Smilodon can grow to 3 meters and weigh 200 to 400 kilograms. It has horrible forelimb strength and a pair of exaggerated giant teeth. And the most damaging thing is that it is feline, almost both strength, agility, reaction, and athletic ability. It is definitely one of the most dangerous animals in that era. Well, Mr. Tick made a good show off he had been indeed very strong. Thinking of this, Rain was even more excited about the skill Tick was about to impart. Mr. Tick, what is your skill then? Tick did not answer Rain, he slightly moved his feet, the lower plate into a bow, and the hands into a tiger claw, a front to back. The whole person maintains this shape slightly swaying, as a fierce tiger waiting for an opportunity to move. Rain narrowed his eyes and stared for a long time, suddenly turning around, Mr. Tick, I am not feeling well. Let's practice next time. What a joke. Look at other mutants. Take Shog for example. He could like smoke instantaneous transfer. Hades could jump up and down in the deep sea octopus emperor as if walking on the ground. Even Arson, the vortex strangulation was fine. But the result Tick intended to teach him tiger fist? This feels just like learning kung fu in the cultivation world. That was too low. Tick didn't stop rain. Just said to himself, tiger fang can greatly improve strength, speed, perception, and reflexes. Each attack will cause fatal damage to enemies of the same level. After learning it, no one is your match within the same level. Rain stood still, and when he turned around, Tick was still bobbing and weaving there. But Rain's gaze had changed. Tick suddenly became so tall somehow. Mr. Tick, I was wrong, teach me please. 113. Level up. Rain's speed of learning skills exceeded everyone's imagination. His skill level raised to level 5 within a month. Rain checked his attributes within the system. Speaking of which, he hadn't looked at his information for a long time. As a result, Rain was surprised by himself. Rain, Captain, Son of Poseidon Flesh, Hatchling, Stage 1 and level 5 5 out of 10, to be mutated basic attributes 5 times a normal human. Flesh combat power, 10. I'm already level 5. The last time I looked it was only level 1. Rain was a bit in disbelief. He had thought that his upgrade must be slow with such an awesome body. 
but it turned out that he was level 5 after just one month of training. The speed was like cheating. Skill, Tiger's Fang, 5 out of 10 for 5 seconds, increase 100% speed, 100% strength, 100% senses, and 50% reflexes. Cool down time, 30 minutes. It only lasts 5 seconds, and the cooldown takes 30 minutes? I can only use it once or twice a battle, and the skill cap is only 10, everyone else is 20. No more? Rain suddenly found himself fooled by Tick. Shit, Tick's a big liar. Talking about so much, it's just speed strength doubled. But Rain thought carefully, Tick actually did not lie to him. Speed and strength increased, and stance and move power naturally went up. Tick also had been able to transform in the past. If he used this skill after transforming, that was indeed a huge boost. The actual fact is that he can have a 100% boost at level 5. This boost is really useful. It is equivalent to the effect of a level 10 transformation. Of course, the Tiger's Fang is still no match for the transformation after all. The limitation of the transformation is only in the environment, but Rain's attribute enhancement limitation is time. The time is only 5 seconds. Perhaps it is the time limit that can exchange for such a substantial attribute enhancement. 5 seconds Superman. Rain thought about it and did not give up. With his years of experience in strategy games, the skill is still very powerful. It's equal to raising my strength directly to level 10 in 5 seconds. And this skill also has improved the perception and reaction of the senses. This is what no one else has. The general skills do not improve this attribute. Then even if I meet a strong person, my senses are absolutely dominant. And the skill is not limited by the land or underwater. Um, it's okay. Realizing the strength of Tiger's Fang, Rain practiced it harder and harder for the next half month. A month and a half later, his body had been raised to level 7, while his skills had also been raised to level 7. Rain checked his skills again. Skill, Tiger's Fang, 7 tenths for 7 seconds, increase 140% speed, 140% strength, 100% senses, and 50% reflexes. Cool down time, 30 minutes. Eh? Senses and reflexes are not moving? Seems like that's the limit. But the speed and strength improvement ratio is still rising. And with the skills used, my combat power is 33.6, which is close to reaching stage 2 and level 7. The most important thing is that my duration has become 7 seconds. Rain increased by 2 seconds after hard training. In order to verify his strength, Rain arm wrestled with Arson, one bear, and two bears several times and actually won all of them. Captain, are you the devil? Why did you become so powerful all of a sudden? Two bear cried and took out 10 pearls with reluctance, boss. Can I get credit? I've just saved up 10 pearls. Rain took the pearls, credit on me? Naive. Captain, you are cheating. Two bear said reluctantly, let's do it again. You use skills, then I also transformed. Captain, come down in the water with me if you dare. Arson also defied, you actually sneak to use skills. Rain was not moved. He was shameless anyway. I did not say you cannot use skills. So you guys don't have to blame me. 10 pearls per person. Avril, put it on account. Captain you've gone too far. You even pitted the crew. The crowd looked at Rain in anger. Well I have to do that. Look around besides you guys. Who else can I screw? Rain justified. Come back in a few days if you're unconvinced. 20 days later. Rain's level reached level 10. And his skills are already at full level. He was now considering practicing other skills. While Arson and most of the crew were only up one level, the rest of the low-level crew were up two levels at most. Rain had leveled up by ten. Rain had to say, the son of Poseidon's flesh seemed to be made for this era. Its upgrade speed was too fast. After upgrading, Rain couldn't wait to check his attributes. Rain, Captain, son of Poseidon flesh, hatchling, stage one and level ten ten out of ten, cannot be upgraded, can break through to stage 2 after mutation. Base attributes 10 times more than a normal human. Combat power, 20. Skill, Tiger's Fang, 10 tenths for 7 seconds, increase 200% speed, 200% strength, 100% senses, and 50% reflexes. Cool down time, 30 minutes. As the saying goes, there are gains and losses. Rain the son of Poseidon's flesh growth was indeed very fast but the note in the brackets made Rain cry out. He has to be mutated to break through, but no one else has this limitation. A Poseidon fruit is 500,000 at least, even if he buys it in Bankra Island with 25% off, it's still 375,000. 
Slightly gratifying was that Rain's attributes were not bad, his fleshly body's basic attribute combat power was 20, and after the attribute is increased by 200%, it becomes 60. Within 10 seconds of unleashing his skills, his power is equivalent to a stage 3 and level 10 mutant in. If they would not transform and use other skills, having the combat strength of a stage 3 level 10 for even just 10 seconds at stage 1 level 10 is proof enough of the power of Tiger's Fawn. Unknowingly, the Dad Bounty group had already penetrated deep into the area where the pirate group was rampantly active. At that moment, Rain's radar warning finally sounded. Ding! The due north direction found pirate group ships. Ship composition, 6 G-class warships, 26 sub-G-class frigates. As soon as he heard the news, Rain's sweaty hair stood up. They had come to bully the pushover but came 6 G-class warships. Equipped with 6 G-class warships, there were only two possibilities among the pirates in these waters, heavy iron or beheaded. Damn, why was the first pirate I encountered AG6 level? System, can you show the pirate flag? An enlarged flag appeared in Rain's mind. On that flag, the skull was in the shape of a real person's head, and below it was two cross-circular long knives, the tips of which were still dripping blood. Beheaded pirates. Attention all, all hands to battle ready. Rain suddenly shouted, the beheaded pirates are here. Avril frowned and froze behind Rain, saying blankly, the beheaded pirates? It's those perverts who like to behead people. Why can we meet them here? Captain, you're... How many unethical things have you done behind our backs to have such bad luck? Fancy said sulkily behind Rain. 114. Beheaded Pirates. The opposing side had a total of 32 ships, 6 warships lined up in an arrow to open the way, followed by a vast array of 26 frigates, sailing towards Rain. Not waiting for Rain's crew to take their respective positions, a separate planked ship suddenly and quickly sailed out from the opposite formation, which was fast, and kept closing the distance with Rain. Everyone froze. Rain fixed his eyes on the plank boat and asked, What do they want to do? I don't know. Avril and the others shook their heads. A plank ship? Rain really did not put it in mind. Is it some new tactics? Someone on the plank ship waved a flag to tell Rain not to fire. Rain saw that the distance between the two sides was quite far, so he did not rush to fire. In a short time, more than 30 prisoners with shackled feet appeared from the plank boat and they lined up and knelt down facing the direction of Rain. Everyone on Rain's boat was amazed. On the plank boat, there was a row of prisoners on their knees. Behind them was a row of crew members with large swords. The captain of the ship laughed at Rain, ha 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 ha, watch this, this is a meeting gift for you showing what will happen to you later. Behead. At the command, with the sailor's swords falling, the captives' heads fell apart. More than thirty heads fell, their bodies remained on their knees and a large amount of blood spurted out from their necks. The ship's crew picked up the heads on the deck and pulled them by the hair, and waved them toward Rain. Hey, do you like this show? Ha 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 ha. Needless to say, a part of the crew was deeply shocked at this point. They come all the way here just to show them this bloody and cruel scene. How insane is this? In the beginning, they all just heard how ferocious the beheaded pirates were, but now it's different. Everyone was witnessing the cruel scene. A little less courageous the whole person was like an electric shock with hands already trembling. When the crew of the plank ship saw the dumbfounded people, they became even more arrogant, and some people shouted while throwing their heads in their hands this way. Oh, you guys are next? Ha 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 ha, never seen it before? Don't be in a hurry, next time let you feel it for yourselves. Play with the women enough before beheading. Rain had already figured out the purpose of this gang. This gang just wanted to make their crew feel fearful. When the heart is occupied with fear, even the simplest things can't be done well. As a result, he turned around and found that along with Avril, Armin, and Fancy, including a number of crew members, the state seemed to be a bit wrong. They had pale faces with eyes flickered, and their body was trembling faintly. Rain slightly narrowed his eyes, thought about it, and entered the captain's cabin alone. Avril was really stunned. Dracula eats people but that was a bite swallowed, and it is a monster after all. And last time Chike was beheaded by Terry also was the choice in the case of death. And that was just one person. But with such a row of people beheaded together, the other side or defenseless captives, the scene was too shocking. Suddenly, a cannon shot rang out at their feet while everyone was in a daze. The gang was taken aback by a loud bang. In the distance, the plank ship slowed down and was drifting away. They had finished their mission and were ready to retreat back to the fleet. Of course, they didn't stop the taunting. Hey, don't be scared out of your wits, oh. 
Baby, I'll see you later. Wash your neck. A shell accurately smashed on the plank ship before this guy finished speaking. Then the shell exploded, and the fragmented iron instantly pierced his throat. On the six warships, a captain rushed to the bow and clutched the railing with both hands. Fuck, dare to be the first to fire? They are really tired of living. The captain of another ship also looked angry. Shit, we made the flag. They are actually more unruly than us. Avril and the others were even more shocked, and when they turned their heads to look for the captain, Rain happened to come out of the cabin. I know you're scared, scared of being held down by those perverts and beheaded in public. I'm also a man who's naturally afraid of pain. Rain stared at his crew. There's fear in everyone's heart, but brothers, they're not going to show mercy because we're afraid. Instead, they will destroy us in one fell swoop while we are occupied with our inner fears. Did you see those arrogant executioners? Were they arrogant and made you feel afraid, but now what? They have been blown to pieces by my shells. They can't be arrogant anymore. Remember, we are the dad bounty group. We are the dad of all pirates. They should be the ones to fear us. Let them piss their pants in fear when they see us. Let them fly pell-mell when they see us. Let them not even have the courage to fight when they see us. Dare to arrogance on my face. Look how can I fuck them. Avril raised her head blankly. Although the man in front of her looks only ten years old, he... He had never flinched whether facing pirates, sea monsters, or storms. With such a captain, why should they be afraid? Right. Tick also stood out at this time. This is how they want to break our psychological defenses. But we are not afraid of them. We will make them feel intimidated. We will make them kneel down and cry out, Dad. Everyone's eyes gradually brightened up. Yes, they're fierce. We'll be more fierce than they are. Fuck them. Rain nodded and shouted, All hands prepare for battle. All at once. Everyone got into their positions with full energy. Avril and Arsene accompanied Rain into the captain's cabin. Looking at this kid walking in front of him, Avril took a deep breath. This guy was getting to be a leader. The ship continued to sail, and Rain's unruly shot made the pirate crowd furious and gave chase at full speed. Rain kept his eyes on the radar and quietly slowed the ship down. Ding, enemy ship is 4,080 meters away. Ding, enemy ship is 3,300 meters away. Ding, enemy ship is 2,170 meters away. Meteor howitzer, fire. Rain gave the order and a series of cannon shots were fired from the stern of the super battleship. Bang, 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 bang. The crew quickly replenished ammunition. Here came another round of bombing. A series of intense artillery fires rang out as the enemy fleet received a carpet bombardment of howitzers. 115. In person. Meteor howitzer, stern gun attack power. 150 by 15. Farthest range, 3,000 meters. Best range, 1,000 to 2,200 meters. The gun barrel has a built-in sub-barrel that allows multiple rounds to be fired at once. Up to 10 howitzers can be fired simultaneously at once and explode on contact with the target, generating shrapnel and shock waves that cause secondary range damage. The meteor howitzer can deliver range strikes to the target area with a maximum diameter of 300 meters. Compared to Dracula, Dealing with a fleet of multiple ships like this was what the Meteor Howitzer was really good at. Rain didn't choose to attack the 6 G-Class warships, but chose those sub G-Class frigates, which were not only densely arranged, but also had much lower defenses so the Howitzers were able to inflict much more damage. Holy shit, what the fuck is this cannon? The captain of the 1st G-Class warship looked dumbfounded at the ships on fire behind him. However, the second round of attacks came before they could reflect. Bang 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 boom boom boom. The sub G-class ships that had only been partially damaged got more broken and serious leaks in the second round of bombardment. What's even worse was that they had ordered a halt from the chase. But this ship also stopped and continued to bombard them. Third round, fourth round. After a full five minutes of indiscriminate bombardment, 20 of 26 sub G-class ships were sinking. Six G-class main ships were arranged in the shape of an arrow one in the forefront and followed by four behind them in two rows according to a certain gradient, and one ship in the middle of the arrow. At this moment, the captain's cabin of this ship was violently kicked open. I lost twenty sub G-class ships and I didn't even touch them. This person had a beard, a sloppy captain's uniform, and a machete in his hand. When he saw with his own eyes that his fleet was in a miserable state behind him, he became furious and cut off the head of one of his crew members with a fierce slash. Luca, kill that ship at all costs. I will use the dullest knife to cut off their scalps. The captain of the first boat was a man named Luca. He also knew the temper of the chief. He was really angry this time. 
Buman might even kill him if he cannot finish that ship. At this time, they still had six G-class warships and six sub-G-class frigates. He mobilized all the ships that could still move. Their stern cannons are too fierce. All ships spread out and chase them with hook locks. With a command from Luca, the remaining twelve ships of the beheaded pirates even give up rescuing other ships and rush towards the rain. Learned wisely, Rain snorted coldly while ordering one bear and two bear to speed up. Rain had previously controlled the distance between the two sides by about 2,000 meters. But this time the pirates' sudden pursuit reduced the distance between the two sides to 1,500 meters. Rain had intended to use his speed advantage to pull away again, but he found he had no speed advantage at all. The other side was fast too, especially the six sub-G class ships. The ship was small, but its light hull and large sails allowed them to reach a speed of 30 knots. At this time, the pirate's bow gun could vaguely attack Rain. A gunshot came behind him. Rain hastily dodged. It was good that the pirates were scared by Rain's stern gun, and now they were all scattered. The ship could threaten Rain only one or two followed him. Tick reported that the stern gun barrel was too hot, and it seemed that the gun could not be used for the time being. But Rain still had plenty of weapons, and he did not panic at all. Captain, that is a ship so nimble. I can't hit it. Damn, change gunners. Let the best gunner go. Luca had a tense spirit. He had never encountered such a difficult enemy. At this very moment, Luca suddenly felt a violent shaking. Captain, there's a bomb underwater. The bottom has been blown open and is leaking badly. Luca's face turned green as he slapped the railing hard. What the fuck kind of ship is this? How could the speed they drop the bomb so fast? However, it was useless to say anything. Their ship was sinking at a speed that was worthy of a G-class warship. Finally, Luca's ship was abandoned in place. Buman could no longer bear it when he watched a G-class warship being sunk, full speed ahead, I'll take command myself. Before the words fell, the four sub-G-class ships that had encircled the past from both sides had been sunk by rain with storm cannons. Thirty-two ships before, now only seven. Damn, 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 my ships, why is their gun range so far? My cannons haven't even fired yet. Buman was furious. All the ships lean in. Their stern gun hasn't fired for a long time. Their barrels must have overheated. Take the chance to blast them into slag. Buman wasn't sure if he was right, as the rain stern gun was too fierce. Of course, Luca didn't dare to take such a big risk when he commanded, gathering the remaining seven ships together. In case the enemy could make a few waves of bombardment, it would be a total loss of troops. But Buman was the leader after all. Even if he made a wrong decision, no one would dare to say anything. And Buman now was also got red-eyed. Such a large loss, he would definitely go crazy if they could not sink that ship. As a result, he was right. The rain stern gun could not fire for a short time. Playing with life? I've never been afraid of anyone. Buman extinguished eyes blood red, killing intent. The seven ships of the beheaded pirates gathered again. A series of gunfire made it difficult for rain to dodge as well. Under the left, and right dodge, rain stern or shot. Although the pirate's bow gun was generally powerful and rain had a strong hull, it still caused damage to the stern compartment. Seeing that they finally got it, and the front boats were finally not so nimble, Buman quickly roared, hook, whoosh 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 whoosh. Seven hook locks were shot out, three of which pierced through rain's bottom hull and hooked it. Hum -um. A cruel gaze appeared in Buman's eyes, sneering, baby, still want to run? Immediately I will be on board. All stage two mutants get on board with me. I will wash their ship in blood. There were already six of them climbing along the ropes. With their skills, they were definitely on board before Rain's men cut the ropes. As expected, the other six stage two mutants were already standing on the boat when Tick cut the ropes. Ha 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 ha. I'm finally up here. Come on, trash. Prepare to receive my wrath. Buman raised the machete on his shoulder and roared to the sky. At this moment, Rain's voice sounded in everyone's ears, the rest of the boats will be left to you all next. Tick, you take command. Captain, you, what do you want to do? There are six of them, and Buman is a stage two level seven mutant. Arson and others are no match for them. Rain's voice was unusually calm. Tick's heart beat hard all of a sudden. Is the captain going to take the field himself? 116. That's exactly what you deserve. Tick went up to the open deck. As soon as he got on the deck, he saw six men on the opposite side staring at him. Arson, one bear, and two bear were standing across from those men, blocking them. Where was the captain? He had only been training for two months, but
But Tick hastily withdrew those thoughts when he saw that the enemy's ship was approaching. The captain had given the ship to himself. He must not let the captain distract him. Thinking of this, Tick shouted to the crew inside the door. Everyone sticks to your posts except for the crew in charge of the battle. Fire if enemy ships are approaching. After saying that, Tick covered the hidden door and walked straight to the bow from behind Arson and the others. He ignored the enemy behind him and held the rudder tightly. His duty was to control the ship, leave the back to his companions. According to the information on the wanted notice, there are six stage two mutants under Buman. Excluding Luca who was saving himself on the sinking ship, there were five others. Ghostfish, Sea Serpent Mutation, Stage 2 Level 4 Once the enemy is dragged into the water by him, it will be played to death alive. Silver Wolf Brothers As soon as hear the name just know that both are Stage 2 Silver Wolf Mutation. The two brothers work well together. Although their strength was only Stage 2, their power will increase greatly when they join forces. Blood Arrow, Long Spine Porcupine Mutation Stage 2 Level 4 the wanted notice describes explicitly this guy as very dangerous. The skill is long range shooting. Monkey mutated shun, stage 2 level 2, extremely fast. Beheaded pirates leader Buman was a chimpanzee mutation that has great strength and high level. And rain side arson, one bear, and two bear were all in stage 2 level 3. Humph. Buman snorted, tone of voice frivolous, and the heart to drive the ship? Are you guys making a death struggle? A mere three of you. You think you can hold off six of us? Unfortunately, the following is our time to kill. I will make you regret what you have done. Buman's gaze grew grim. Let them enjoy themselves. At this moment, the door of the captain's room opened. A slightly childish voice rang out. Who told you that there are only three? Buman immediately looked over there, only to see a ten-year-old child slowly walking over. But Buman couldn't help but laugh out loud. Ha 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 ha. Oops, I'm really gunning my ass off, you guys. I thought it was some big shot, but it turned out to be a certain little bastard who didn't even grow up. You captains still have a child, ah, uh, his is, you give birth to, or you? Buman with the tip of the knife pointed at Arson and others. Captain, I reckon all the men on board have a share in it. Blood Arrow with a lecherous smile, ha 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 ha, funny funny, little bastard. In fact, your father is me, it's I that foo. At this moment, a short figure flashed past in front of several people. A curved dagger instantly pierced Blood Arrow's throat. Blood Arrow stared in horror at the child standing in front of him, who was looking at himself at the time with an indifferent face. He tried to cover the bloody hole in his neck, but he failed. A large stream of blood kept spurting out. He could not say a word but could only make an ah sound. What did you say? What did you do? Why can't I hear you clearly? Rain snorted. Buman looked at this child with shock. Blood Arrow who was marked as dangerous in the wanted notice was killed in seconds. Even if it was related to him taking the enemy lightly, the kid had not even transformed. Could it be a stage 3 level 10? Rain snorted and said to Arson and others, I don't want an extra bounty this time, kill them all. Buman's heart was suddenly astonished. Live capture is undoubtedly the biggest gain for a bounty mission, but this child actually, do not even want the bounty. Can a child say such things? So blandly said these words with no ripples in the eyes. This guy's cold-blooded degree was not to lose him. Arson, one bear, and two bears shot at the same time. The other side was not to be messed with either. Ghostfish tried to pull one bear into the water, but he knocked it away. He was instead locked throat by Arson behind him. The two jumped into the sea together. Two bear had several consecutive claws forced away from the Silver Wolf brothers who tried to attack the one bear. One bear, two bear and the Silver Wolf brothers also fought. Rain only has 10 seconds of real men, and 4 seconds have passed. The next target, Rain locked the Shun who was staged to level 4. This guy was also smart to choose the transformation the first time. Transform. Long-armed ape. The stage 2 level 4 mutant combat power is 28. It is boosted by 120% after transforming. His strength reached 61.6 .6 that even higher than Rain's. Inside the captain's room. Avril's arms were stretched out flat and her eyes were locked dead on Shun, cell control, decay. Under the effect of Avril's ability, Shun suddenly found that his body function dropped drastically. At that moment, a curved dagger stabbed him in the neck at a very fast speed as if it was a dragonfly. Shun tried to dodge, but he found he could not do that. He naturally couldn't avoid Rain's blow. His attributes decayed by 20% and were now only 49.28. Avril improved Rain's attributes before. Rain was now 72 that a third higher than Shun. 
and he all crushed Shun in terms of speed, strength, perception, and reaction ability. The difference in strength between the two was so great that Shun was killed in one blow. This process was no more than one second, seeing that the battle had just begun and two people were already killed on his side. Buman roared, damn asshole, I'll peel your skin. His body became two and a half meters due to his transformation. Rain was less than half his height in front of him. Cell control, decay. Buman suddenly found his body seemed to be much heavier, all out of shape. After Avril's interference, his body's combat power from 80 down to 64, and Rain at this point launched a crazy attack. He had five seconds. Executioner, huh? Killing without blinking, huh? Rain moved agilely beside Buman, and the two daggers in his hands mercilessly pulled open wounds on Buman's body. Rain did not rush to attack his vitals as if he was venting some unknown anger. Four seconds left. Twenty stabs in one second. Buman only blocked a dozen slashes. The body that should have been strong was too strange, becoming much heavier and clumsier. Especially since this kid's reflexes were far above his own that he couldn't keep up with him at all. Plop plop plop. Three knives thrust into Buman's thigh. Three seconds left. At the same time as Buman kneeled on one leg, Rain turned around and went behind him while avoiding the knife he wielded and he cut Buman's left hamstring. With another turn, he cut his right arm with three slashes. Two seconds he cut his hamstring. One second, twenty stabs in front of the chest. In zero seconds, two daggers pierced directly through Bumian's neck one left and one right. Ah, uh, Buman kneeled on the ground with dazed eyes. His mouth was spewing blood and he could not even twist his head. Well, at this point, he saw the person he wanted to see. A child walked calmly in front of him and looked at him with a cold gaze. That's exactly what you deserve. 117. Abundant Loot. Silver Wolf Brothers vs. One Bear to Bear. It should be six of one and half a dozen of the other in theory. But it was completely impossible to have this situation in Rain's ship. Rain and the others had Avril. As one fell and the other rose, the difference in their strength was a staggering 40%. Moreover, the corpse of Buman kneeled right in front of Rain. That had even more impact on the battlefield than the attribute gap for the beheaded pirates. The main commander was dead, these people had no will to fight that could only barely resist. In such a situation, how could the Silver Wolf brothers be a match for the One Bear and Two Bear brothers? Get my hammer! One Bear had a hammer round up and directly hit one person. Two Bear also had two claws up with a swift body to complete the last hit. The remaining person wanted to run, but he failed. A hammer directly smashed the guy's head. Avril, fancy shout came from captain's cabin. Rain, one bear, and two bear rushed back to check. I am fine, just, so tired. Avril said in a weak sound. Fancy, help Avril to rest. Using the skill twice in a row, she must not be able to bear it. Rain hurriedly said. Avril's skills did not have a cooldown, but it seems that the consumption of energy was extremely huge every time she uses a skill. Two times in a row already had an energy overdraft. The good news was that there was only one last person left at this point in the battle. Arson against the ghost fish. Rain and one bear two bear rushed to the fence and looked at the sea. The sea was as calm as ever. Both of the two guys were underwater creature mutations that did not need to be out of the water at all. Just as Rain was about to return to the captain's cabin and switch consciousness, the sea suddenly fluctuated. Just a short distance away, a vortex appeared on the surface of the sea. It was not impressive at first but gradually turned faster and faster, bigger and bigger. Suddenly, a burst of red blood rose up from the sea. Arson, shouted one bear anxiously. In a short time, a head emerged from the whirlpool looked around, found Rain's boat, and dive into the water again. A few moments later, Arson had come to the boat. What are you shouting? Put the rope down. One bear hurriedly dropped the rope and pulled Arson up. Arson, are you all right? Arson rolled her eyes at one bear. Looking at the several corpses on the boat, she happily ran to Rain, Captain, you won, I won too. Rain smiled and said, great, you took out a guy who is high level than you. Arson tilted her head proudly, yeah, my attributes are not lower than him after transforming. And I also have a shark diving suit that is faster than him. Plus two skills, he is no match for me. Rain nodded with satisfaction. His own crew is very strong, ah, very good. After taking care of these leaders, the rest of the minions are not enough to fear. Everyone. Let's make a push and wipe out the enemy ships. In a flurry of artillery, the remaining ships of the beheaded pirates suffered an unprecedented barrage. Boom! With a loud bang, a shot from the bow thunder cannon completely sank the enemy's last already crippled G-class warship. 
half an hour later. The sea had been a mess, broken wood and the pirates' bodies floated everywhere. For these pirates, rain did not show the slightest mercy. There were essentially no survivors left here. Beheaded pirates? Rain snorted. In front of dad, you also have to kneel. The next time was one bear's favorite part, collecting the booty. They sank a total of 32 ships, killing countless pirates. Due to the number of ship wreckage needed to search was too much, almost all of the crew went into the water to salvage. Looking at the sea at a large number of wood, Rain had to give up all. Because it was too much, he could not bring it. And compared to other materials, the price of wood is also relatively low. He had to give up. Well, so much wood, Rain said heartbreakingly. If in the past, he would fight for his life to get them. They mainly collect metal that can be used to replenish ammunition and excess can also be used to strengthen the hull. However, the battle time was too long, and only arson could access deeper waters, so it was difficult to salvage. One bear was checking the bodies happily. Two bear also picks up a door plate, and followed his brother. One bear threw the money bag onto the board as soon as he found it. Not a moment, they actually also got a large pile. Of course, it was small money. The most important thing was naturally the treasure chest of these 32 ships. Rain and the others all seemed to have a kind of obsession with the treasure chest. They finally salvaged all 32 treasure chests until midnight. After a whole day and night, Rain salvaged all the loot they could. Looking at the money bag boxes piled up on the deck, the crowd was not sleepy at all. 13,448 pearls and this is... binoculars? One bear had just counted a gold chest and then dumped the pearls inside all together into their own large gold chest. Avril made a note in her little book and took the binoculars. Captain, do you want the binoculars? Keep it for your use. If we have a watchtower later, you can give it to the lookout soldiers. Rain had radar. It was useless for him but good for the crew. This chest has 24,166 pearls. And this? Captain, look at it. It seems to be a skill book. Armin counted the pearls in the chest in front of her and handed a small book wrapped in plastic paper to Rain. Eh? A skill book? Rain hurriedly took it. Ding. Obtained a biological mutant primary skill book. Do you want to scan it? The system will back up it up after scanning and can be added to the crew can learn skills list. Well, Rain's eyes widened. Of course, scan it. The more the merrier. Avril, this chest is so poor that only 9,343 pearls. But there is a... This is... Captain, you see if it is a treasure map. Rain had not finished marveling. Heard the treasure map hurriedly put down the skill book, and took the drawings handed over by Arson. Ding, found a low-level treasure map, do you want to scan it? Hey hey hey, hurry up and write it down. All morning, the crowd was busy tapping pearls in the captain's room. All ears were filled with the sound of clattering pearls being poured into their chest. The most exciting thing for Rain was that these pirates' treasure chests not only had pearls but also all kinds of strange and exotic things. Those insignificant bounties simply cannot be compared with the pirate's treasure. No wonder there are still people willing to do bounty missions even if the low bounty. Rain sighed. It's just too good. 118. What goes around comes around. After the inventory, this time they not only replenished ammunition, but also obtained 413,000 pearls, three primary skill books, binoculars, two copies of the low-level treasure map, a medium-level treasure map, and three VIP cards for the Solomon Island Auction House. Rain this time unprecedentedly took out some pearls to reward the entire crew. It was sent down as pocket money according to each person's position and merit. The four people who participated in the battle each got 1,000 pearls. Tick got 500 pearls. Terry commanded the crew to load the shells, so he got 500 pearls. The others got 200 pearls each. White and Little Booty naturally did not need pocket money but Rain promised to raise the level of meals for the two. This bumper crop also energized the group. The pirates were now fat meat. Since they robbed others, then Rain robbed them. After a day's rest, the dad could not wait to set off. They began to frantically search the sea's surface for signs of the pirates. Three days later, dad defeated the G2 pirates riot pirates and grabbed 44,000 pearls and a primary treasure map. Ten days later, dad defeated G1 pirates killing pirates and grabbed 27,000 pearls, a pot of coral plants, a primary skill book, and a secret history of sea voyages. Fifteen days later, the total destruction of the G1 Pirates Hurricane Pirates grabbed 24,000 pearls, a Steel Pirate Alliance membership certificate, a primary skills book, and a Solomon Island Exchange VIP card. Twenty days later, 
The total annihilation of the G4 pirates blood slaughter pirates grabbed 108,000 pearls, a Steel Pirate Alliance Director Certificate, two primary skill books, three primary treasure maps, three Solomon Island Auction House VIP cards, three Solomon Exchange VIP card. Two and a half months later, the area where the behead pirates was in command suddenly became calm and quiet. Rain was bored sitting on the roof deck of the captain's room sunbathing. Avril ran up to hang her laundry just in time to see a bored rain. Captain, so boring lately? It's been seven days since we've encountered a pirate. Yes, seven days without money coming. Rain shook his head and sighed, strange. It is said that there are at least twenty to thirty pirates in this area. We only took out eleven, how come we cannot meet it? Armin at this time also moved a chair up. She has recently been reading the seizure of a secret history of navigation before. I guess they all ran away. Armin moved her chair to Rain's side, where Avril's clothes would not block the sunlight, and she could see Tick training everyone on deck. Arson seems to be improving faster and faster, and already surpassing one bear and two bear. Rain nodded. Perhaps the frequent combat coupled with Tick's scientific training, everyone leveled up quite fast these two months. Arson had already upgraded to stage 2 level 6. One bear and two bear had only upgraded two levels to stage 2 level 5. The others progressed even faster due to their low level was relatively easier to raise. They progressed rapidly under the cruel training of Tick. Most of them raised 3 or 4 levels and even 7 or 8 people approached stage 2. Whether or not you have a teacher is a completely different matter. When Arson only leveled one up in two months, now she was upgrading several times faster than before. Even Avril who was the hardest to upgrade had been upgraded to level 6. If those new crew members could reach stage 2, then Rain could let them participate in more intense battles. That said, Arson had come to the forefront at overtaking one bear two bear. That made one bear and two bear anxious and to train harder every day. But Tick said Arson's propagation mother may be very strong and this advantage would grow. That had the one bear and two bear depressed. Hey, they're no more depressed than I am. I can't even rise to the one level now. I can only practice those low-level skills. Rain sighed. Without evolution, he was stuck at stage 1 level 10 for 2 months now. Just like his age, stuck at 10 years old. Captain, didn't you say that you had to go through a mutation to continue leveling up? Avril came over and leaned on the side of Rain's chair. We have 840,000 pearls now. We can buy a Poseidon fruit first when we return to Bankra Island. One Poseidon fruit, 375,000. Upgrade the ship. 1.5 million. It all costs money. After thinking about it, Rain suddenly stood up, his gaze looking towards the endless sea in the distance. No, we can't waste time here. Let's go. Let's go over to the heavy iron pirates. Half a month later, Rain and his party entered the infested area of heavy iron pirates. They began a new round of bounty missions. Two and a half months later, a heartache happened to Rain. His level had become the lowest of all the ship's mutants. Depression, resignation, heartache, lingering in the mind, crew could often see their captain hugging white dusk, facing the sea, and thinking about life. The captain seems to be depressed lately. One bear shook his head and looked sympathetically at the lonely despondent figure. Yeah hey, he's lost over 2,000 pearls in arm wrestling this month. Everyone's grabbing to fuck him. Two bears shook his head, I've already won more than 200 pearls this month. Now everyone has learned wisely, and won't let the captain use his skills. Arson sighed. The captain is simply no match for anyone else if he doesn't use skills. Now even the lowest level mutant crew members also have stage 2. Rain looked sadly into the distance. He lost 4,000 pearls in 2 months. The pearls he had won before had been wiped out. Hey, it's true that what goes around comes around. Rain hugged white tightly. White only you. The only one I can beat now is you. Woof woof. Hey, these guys stare at me arm wrestling every day. Rain said aggrieved, especially too bare. This kind of life is worse than death. When is the end? We have wandered around more than two months and took out a dozen pirates, but just did not meet the heavy iron pirates. Oh my god! Hurry up and let me meet them, get rid of them, and then go to the holy pirates. I now want to go back early to buy the sea god fruit. I cannot stand it. Ah, Rain's voice was tinged with sobs. At this moment, Rain's system suddenly rang. Ding, Do West found a large number of ships. 13 G-Class main ships, 53 sub-G-Class warships. Rain's eyes widened and he stood up at once. 119. Fire in full force. Rain saw the opponent's flag through the radar sweep. 
What was strange to him was that this supersized formation of warships had two flags, its two pirates, heavy iron and holy, Rain immediately understood. Looking at the stance of the two pirate groups, it was obvious that they had joined forces. They were coming towards the side that seemed to be together against themselves. Hey, scared the hell out of me. I thought it was an F-class pirate. Rain breathed a sigh of relief. Although he had never seen an F-class pirate, Rain did not even have to think that an F-class warship must have powerful mutants. That is what he was most afraid of. If just the heavy iron pirates and the holy pirates teamed up, Rain would not have had a bit of an afraid. Attention all crew members. Our prey has appeared. The heavy iron pirates and the holy pirates came together. Rain shouted, and the crew on deck practice immediately stopped. Finally, they're here. Been looking for them for over two months. Yeah, but two pirates coming together, does it really no matter? What are you afraid of? I am now also a stage two mutant. Give them a taste of what we can do. The crew had more energy than Rain. In the two major pirate groups, Jack the Ripper was stage 2 level 7, and Iron Walton was stage 2 level 6. The rest of the stage 2 powerhouse is a total of 13 people, more than 100 stage 1 mutants. Their strength indeed crushed Rain if it was two and a half months ago, but now it was uncertain. Arson was stage 2 level 6, and her mutant mother has the advantage of attribute bonuses over the average stage 7 mutant. One bear and two bear were stage 2 level 5. The other 10 newcomers are all stage 2 level 2 or more. In addition to that, his explosive power for a short period of time could also reach stage 3 level 10. And they also have an ace in the hole, Avril. With a small difference in strength, now Avril's 30% cell control ability could change 6 people's cell states at the same time. It's enough to establish a huge advantage by relying on Avril as a point. Everyone all return to your posts and prepare for battle. Rain finished speaking and also entered the captain's room accompanied by Avril and Arson. Radar showed that this time the other side did not pursue them in a straight line. A large number of ships kept a certain distance of 4,000 meters from Rain in an overall arc shape. Yo, it seems that this time the reason they have not appeared is to study the tactics. Rain secretly observed their moves. Gradually, the other side formed an encirclement around Rain through ships of different speeds. But they still did not choose to attack only surrounded Rain and kept all of them at a distance. Rain's stern gun seemed to become useless. But he wasn't panicking yet. He had more than one stern cannon in his firepower. While this was happening, a dry thin man on a G-class battleship stood on the foredeck, holding a megaphone and shouting to Rain's side. Dad. Dad Bounty Corps all listen up. You are surrounded. Their first word must be dead whether friend or foe. Rain and the others did not have a megaphone that could not answer so could only listen first. You have taken out our 24 pirates in our territory. Since you do not give us a way to live, we must fight back. I tell you, we are not afraid of you. Rain frowned, how these people talked as if they are the victims. You actually killed all the people of the beheaded pirates. Killed all of them. Not a single one left. Don't you know that you can get an extra bounty for catching them alive? We have never seen such a brutal bounty group. You've killed so many pirates here, and you haven't left yet. You've been hanging around here for almost half a year. What the hell do you want? Listen, today we're going to wipe you out in one fell swoop. We're going to fight you to the death for our survival. Avril frowned and looked at Arson. Arson, why do I feel like they're talking as if we're pirates? Uh, and I also have the feeling, they seem to be victims. I don't know why I feel as if they are also quite pitiful after listening to their speech. Arson, they do not deserve pity. Look at their ship. Avril handed the binoculars to Arson, who took a look and couldn't help but suck in a breath. At this moment their ship was still hanging hundreds of skinned and hollowed out human skin. Avril was right. They do not feel worthy of sympathy regardless of whether the pirate group may be pitiful. Especially the holy pirates. When have they ever pitted their captives? They are just afraid to die. Interesting. Wantonly plundering other human life. But themselves are a fear of death. Arson put down the binoculars and said fiercely, a bunch of trash. They were still shouting. He seemed to be doing this time before the station mobilization. Brothers, only this group of brutal murderers will be destroyed. We can live in the old comfortable days. This time we heavy iron pirates and the holy pirates must be the same enemy. Never back as long as we are all together even if the ships sink. We have so many ships, we can definitely finish them. The sea resounding waves of cheers. The pirates look steadfast, a look of death. Finish them off. I'll skin them, even if they have a more fierce fire. We have so many ships, 
we have a chance to win as long as one is close and dragging them. This is not the time to divide heavy iron and holy. Let's all charge together. Yes, charge together. There's no way they can hold up. Rain suddenly had the feeling that he seemed to become the villain of the pirate world that actually managed to make two murderous pirates so unprecedentedly united together. What in the end did he do? That said, they really just intend to charge together. Planning for almost three months. They just came up with this method? Rain did not know which retard came up with it. Also, since they want to rush together, Rain simply stops the ship. The surrounding ships rush to break and all ships face Rain as he stopped. The air was frozen at this moment. The pirates' expressions reflect the resolute and incomparable attitude of the two major pirate groups. Kill the dad. A command from the command ship. A total of 66 warships towards the encirclement of the only ship rushed over. And at that very moment, Rain stern gun cannon doors, hull triple cannon doors, and bow gun cannon doors all opened. So many people. Rain coldly snorted, honestly. I haven't tried what it's like to have full firepower. Sorry, it is not you who surrounded me. It is I that surrounded you all. By the time the ships got close enough to 2,000 meters, all the enemy ships started to accelerate. On Rain's radar, a large number of red dots were barreling toward Rain. All guns, fire! In this instant, the invincible battleship was like a beast of fire, spewing out fierce cannon fire from all sides. 120. Total extermination. Bang 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 bang. 15 consecutive shells from 20 storm mortars and meteor howitzers were shot into the sky like a salute. A G-class warship opposite the rain was instantly blown off half of its foredeck by a huge cannonball moving at high speed. They unlucky ran into the king of a single attack, the bow thunder cannon. Boom 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 boom. At that moment, mortars and howitzers fell from the sky to carpet bomb the surrounding waters. On a G-class warship that was following a large force, Jack and Waltong both freeze at the same time. Damn, what kind of ship is it? Why a ship can make an all-around three-dimensional attack on land, sea, and air? Their artillery power is huge and the range is also far. The most fucking excessive is actually hit so accurately. There should be no such unreasonable fucking artillery. All artillery hit the aims. How will we live with this? With just one round of attacks, 66 ships were already dead in the water before they could fire. Several ships were even sinking. However, this was only the beginning. The second attack was ready. The super battleship was once again transformed into a fire-breathing beast with Rain's command. High parabolic grenades and mortar shells fell from the sky. After the shell smashed through the deck, the shockwave and shell fragments continued to do more damage. Horizontal direction. Fierce cannon overbearing incomparable bombardment of the hull. The harder the pirates rushed, the worse they were bombarded. The wooden shipboard directly blasted out of the big hole, and the gunner in the fire compartment who had not yet shot had been killed and injured, and this was not the full strength of the super battleship. The crew quickly filled the shells under the command of Tick and Terry. The third round of attack came again. Two, horrible. In the sound of gunfire, a pirate looked at the broken decks and damaged masts, and a large number of wounded companions, eyes full of despair. T they are not human. My god, my god of the sea. Why are there such horrible warships? What kind of demons are they? They are more terrifying than sea monsters. Requesting support. Our ship is sinking. Come and save it. Lots of wounded on board. Our fire cabin is destroyed. The mast has collapsed, and there is a serious leak. Impossible. There can't be such a fierce warship. That's not a ship, that's the devil. They are devils. The pirates look desperate and helpless in the wailing, help, and the sound of gunfire. The previously murderous encirclement had no more than 20 ships able to keep balance after Rain's three rounds of bombardment. And Rain went on his usual style. For the pirates, he did not want to leave them alive. So the fourth round of attacks came again. Boom 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 boom. A series of intense artillery fires not only hit the ships still trying to approach but even those half-sunken ships were also bombarded. Many pirates in the sea covered their mouths in horror. No no no. This is impossible. We have so many ships. That's too cruel. They are trying to drive us to extinction. Oh, it's just, oh fuck. A strong pirate could not help but shed hot tears. They're still firing. More than 1,300 pirates. They want us all to die. Fifth round. All the pirates had completely broken down inside, and the captain of this ship was more perverted than they have ever been. He wanted to blow them all to pieces. Someone shouted when everyone was desperate. Look. 
it's the death squad. They're still alive. They saw a total of eight ships on the side and rear of the ship that brought them death was rushing towards it fast. Their ships were also damaged but not completely. They gained more speed after giving up their guns, so they could stand out. At this moment they were everyone's hope. Come on, death squad. God of the sea blesses make sure to finish them off. Don't give up, everyone. We still have hope as long as our men are on board. Their guns should be overheating too. Charge, daredevil. When the eight daredevils quickly approached 100 meters from rain, many pirates on board had already swung the locking hooks in their hands. Some carried ladders and tried to board rain. At this point, a large number of thick arrows were shot overwhelmingly. Whoosh whoosh whoosh. The eight ships hull instantly got a thousand holes and wood ships flying. The most frightening was those pirates standing on the deck swept by those thick arrows. Many people were directly pierced and shot far out. T they still have a continuous crossbow. Even the crossbow arrows are so powerful. Just then, the super battleship started to move. It sailed forward a short distance and turned around. The cannons on the hull fired as the ship turned around at the same time. Those daredevil ships that were already badly damaged were instantly blown to pieces by the intense cannon fire. The surviving pirates stared dumbfounded. They even the last hope blow up in their eyes. Rain had a turn of the head. At this time, the opposite he needed to face only left their main ship and the two G-class frigates. Rain grunted coldly, full speed ahead, let's go take them out. Waltong hurriedly lowered his binoculars and said in a panic, they are coming towards us. Jack also panicked at this point. That ship was so horrible, it was simply their nightmare. More than 60 ships were sunk, and now three ships of their absolutely can be no match for it. Turn the sail, turn around, turn around, quick. The pirates on the ship looked at each other. Was their captain trying to escape? But thinking of the terror of that ship, they couldn't care less and hurriedly controlled the ship to turn around. Rain was equipped with propellers in the fore and aft. The bottom has folding oars under his control, so he has more flexible steering. But the three big ships were not as nimble as Rain. At the same time, three big guys panic and turn their heads because now no one unified command. The more anxious the more chaos, and the result was a mess between each other. Three boats turn in different directions resulting in a collision between them. A few moments later, Rain caught up with the three ships. He first used his side gun to have a burst of wild bombardment in 1500 meters position. The pirates on the ship realized themselves become living targets. Thinking of the ruthlessness of the dad, they abandoned the ship and fled with nothing care. In a moment the three ships were like dumplings that the crew scrambled to jump overboard to escape. Seeing several hundred crew members swimming out. Rain slowly adjusted the ship's direction. Fifteen rounds of meteor howitzers rushed out into the sky. A moment later, the sea 1,500 meters away was instantly dyed red with blood. Those who survived pirates saw this scene had a chill from the bottom of their hearts, and could no longer raise the idea of resistance. That ship too, terrible. 121. Mystery Chest. Rain docked alongside the outer warship and stepped out of the captain's cabin. Go, board the ship. The usual rules, leave no one alive. There were still a few who had not jumped overboard on that side of the ship. Their faces turned green with fear when they heard Rain's words. They finally jumped overboard themselves without saying a word. Rain led 20 stage 2 crew members to prepare for a complete clearing of the three ships. After being bombed indiscriminately, the three ships were slowly sinking. Most pirates on board had died or fled. The 10 stage 2 mutants left were no match for Rain's gang. In less than an hour, all the stage 2 pirates on board had died in battle. Captain, no sign of Jack and Waltong. One bear and two bears searched around. The ship was about to sink, but they still could not find these two chiefs. Shit, the bounty is going to be discounted. Rain was also anxious and continued searched again. Unfortunately, these two guys slipped away from somewhere. In short, no trace of the two could be found. It's really no fun. They are at least stage 2 level 6 and level 7, just ran away? Rain shook his head. If the fleet is defeated, the mutant will have no choice but to run away no matter how strong they are. Tick said, Captain, let's hurry up and salvage the supplies. So many ships we have to salvage for ages, and they are sinking fast. Rain nodded. When things came to this point, they could only give up chasing those two captains first. Well everyone, don't freeze, move quickly. The most important reason why Buman could hook Rain's ship earlier was that all his ships were behind Rain and the only firepower Rain could use was the stern gun. Jack and the others obviously did not realize Rain's real strength. They planned to rely on 66 ships to adopt encirclement tactics against Rain, 
but it played right into Rain's hands. It could be said that this battle had the firepower of the Rain to the extreme. Sixty-six ships all sunk, but the pirates did not even touch Rain. In Rain's powerful firepower as well as the pirates' cold to gut-wrenching means, Jack and Walton knew that the momentum was gone, and the two chose to sneak away. Everyone hurry up. This is a heavier salvage task. Rain stood on the boat to direct the salvage. One bear, two bear, don't just check the bodies. How many pearls can they have on them? Find the treasure chest first. Rain suddenly realized that the number of his crew was still a little less. Next go to the front waters to get rid of a few more pirate groups, and go to Solomon Island to see if I can buy more Sea King clans. The gang salvaged for five days. The treasure chests resurfaced one by one under the efforts of the crowd. Unfortunately, they still missed a few treasure chests. They only got 56 treasure chests this time. Next, it was time to count the loot. After the count, their harvest this time hit a huge 1.46 million just the pearls alone. A total harvest of 870,000 pearls from 32 ships of Holy Pirate. The main ship Holy alone has 170,000. A total harvest of 590,000 pearls from 34 ships of the Heavy Iron Pirates. The Heavy Iron Pirates and the Beheaded Pirates were both G6 class pirates, but the former seemed to be quite a bit richer than the latter. 1.46 million, ha ha, Rain laughed, we're rich. Within the precincts of the Beheaded Pirates, they accumulated 840,000 pearls and defeated a dozen more pirate groups in the nearby waters that harvested 320,000 pearls. With this 1.46 million, Rain's money was now 2.62 million. In addition, they also seized 28 low-level treasure maps, 3 intermediate treasure maps, 1 quarter fragment of a high-level treasure map, 27 beginner skill books, 1 intermediate skill book, and various useful-looking props, such as binoculars, speakers, and guns. The gun could be used by Armin, Terry, Avril, and Fancy to defend themselves. It was useful. Some low-level mutants can be killed by ordinary people under unexpected circumstances. As for the materials, Rain currently no longer wanted to stockpile more materials. As long as enough to fill his ammunition arsenal on the line. I'm really getting carried away. I know it's not good, but just can't help it, Rain said blaming himself. In the treasure chest of the holy pirates, Armin found a black box in the chest. But this box was difficult to open. One bear even with a meteor hammer but still could not open it. In this case, Rain's system also could not identify the items in it. So the group could only gather around the case and fret. Could it be the sea god fruit again? This scene could not help but remind people of the time they did the treasure map quest. The sea god fruit shouldn't be so common. Tick had a pessimistic attitude. It's better to think of a way to open it. Rain lifted the chest and turned it over and over to check it out. This box was not big. The side length was 40 centimeters, 4 squares, and the weight was very heavy. The system suggested that it is made of pure copper. Armin suddenly said while Rain was looking at the box, Captain, don't move. There seems to be something behind here. Rain kept this angle as Armin came over and identified it carefully. It's like a machine lock. Rain turned the box upside down, and indeed saw a square plate on this side, which had many metal strips of equal width but of different lengths long and short set in it. At least 40 or 50 pieces. This square grid had only a few minimum units of square spaces. Other squares can use these spaces to move in the square disk. There was a red metal block at the bottom of the squares. Holy shit, it's actually this thing. I'm the worst at this kind of puzzle and other games like this. Rain could only throw up his hands and surrender when he saw this kind of thing. I used to see only a dozen pieces but this one has 40 or 50 pieces inside, it's too hard. Captain, is this the switch for the box? One bear asked curiously. Armin frowned and said I think it should be. If you move that long red piece out, you might be able to open the chest. Two bear tried fiddling with it twice and found that it was hard to make a way for the red metal bar by the few vacant little squares, either blocked here or there. How to get this out? It's too hard. After trying for a while, two bear also gave up. This is a trick, let me try. Armin said, but I don't know how long it will take to drop. There are too many long strips here, and there are few empty spaces. Rain did not really care. He could not open it anyway. It would be an unexpected harvest if they open it. It's okay, Armin, take your time to get it. We go to the Holy Pirates territory, and then see if there are other pirates. That is all money, no one should be spared. Late at night, Armin was sitting in the captain's cabin, trying over and over again. Ah, uh, it's so hard. 
This is too much. Armin shook her head. What kind of treasure is put here that requires such a complicated lock? But she did not give up. I'm pretty much the most useless person on the ship. I must solve this puzzle. Thinking of this, Armin put her full attention on this machine lock again. 122. Astonishing secret. Outside Solomon Island, a figure in the night emerged from the seawater. He raised his hand to hide his face, leaving only a pair of eyes to look around vigilantly. Seeing no one around, he swam to the shore. The shark fins growing out of his back were visible on the surface of the water as he swam.